PKA 691, our guest Hutch. Taylor, anything? Yes, this episode is brought to you by FaroDistro.com. And of course, as always, lock and load. Talk more mm. about them later. Hutch, looking great. Thank you for joining us. What's up, guys? Good to be here. We were talking about gaming, which is a natural foray into mm. all of our interests. <laughs> this new Helldivers game. Kyle's obsessed with it. Have you played it all, Hutch? I played it just one time with Bruce and Nanners and uh, Gassy, and I had a good time with it. I've, I've been is spending Bruce more time. Bruce Cal? No. Well, he's Bruce, but I'm talking oh. about Bruce Green. He's a uh, okay. oh. oh, Bruce. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Has he been on the show? Yeah. He's awesome. Bruce mm-hmm. is a good guy. A couple times. But no, yeah, just I think I've only played for like three and a half hours. Um, but you guys are, Kyle, you're super into it? I've been playing, I, I started late because I was still obsessed with Tarkov, but I've been playing for maybe a week now, and I really like it. I like uh, I like the Starship Trooper uh, references or, or influence or whatever you want to call it. I saw that Casper Van Dien, the main actor from Starship Troopers, is interacting with the CEO on Twitter, uh, going back and forth, and the CEO's like, maybe we need to add some roughnecks to the game. What do you guys think? And Casper Van Dien's like, I work for money. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they should for sure put him in a commercial. That's like such an easy layup. That's what they're asking yeah. for. Him and um, who's the gay one who was the, like, that he had Doogie, the, Doogie uh, Hauser, what I don't Doogie know. Hauser, um, yeah, like a, that Neil, actor. Neil Patrick Harris. Harris. Yeah, 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 they want. Yeah, he, he would be good too. They were great in that movie. Um, so I like that a lot. That brings me into it right away. And and one of the enemy types is just copy pasted from those movies. Uh, the arachnids from that movie are the terminids from this game. They even do this thing when they see you, where they're like, Aah! they like open their mouths and just kind of scream at you and sort of flutter some like thrills. Mm-hmm. And it's like that's from the fucking movie. And so, yeah. like, I, I enjoy that part. Is Helldivers the game where there's flying insects, but the company's denying the existence of flying insects? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I but saw yeah, that. Propa- yeah, the CEO is, is sort of acting as the minister of propaganda, and he's like, any reports you may have heard of flying enemies, complete dissident nonsense, okay? Report anyone telling you that sort of thing to your local liberty, pol- liberty police right away. They'll be sent to a freedom camp. Dude, that's such a that's such like a fun way to handle a game. Like I love that. That's so playing into the flavor, building the lore, having fun. They so should more, more games. There is that. no. It's interesting because there is no campaign per se. There's no storyline. There's no single player missions. It's just the co op sort of Halo S ODST drop in four man squads. Or you can play solo if you want, but four man squads and and smash and kill and do objectives and then get the fuck out. Extract. And reportedly, but, there were Halo devs that pitched a very similar game, and Bungie turned it down. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah. Can you explain the thing that you did on PKN about how expendable you are in the tutorial? Because <laughs> I loved it so fucking much every time. Oh, yeah. For Jackie. Like, like I don't know. Like, like, it's got a great tutorial. You start, and it, they teach you, like, this is how you shoot. And you go, and everything just dies in front of you, these paper fucking targets or whatever. And it's like, this is how you jump. I was like, all right. This is how you crawl. Like, all right, got it. All right, this is going to be a... And then, congratulations, soldier. You graduate and confetti goes off and you stand there. You get your cape. They put a cape on you. Like you, and I'm like, all I know how to do is shoot and run and, and crawl. And that's all you need, soldier. Here's your very own flight dis- uh, star destroyer. It's yours. Fly it wherever you'd like. It tells you to go to a kiosk and there's just a pool of blood next to the kiosk. <laughs> and you're just like, what the fuck are we doing here? Yeah. It's so are you supposed to just be like a conscript? Who You're was pulled in to fight? Expendable. You have no you, value, you basically. So they train you for forty-five seconds. They send you off, and you die. It, it, You're you incredibly. It's expendable. my kind of campaign for a shooter. You, you you just constantly dying. They don't. You don't need to live to complete the missions. That's interesting. I, I didn't realize that. Like we would complete a mission and then we'd fail to extract and it'd be like mission accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> like they don't care that you're dead because they don't care. About it. That that's funny. I like the flavor of that. What's different though is they've got that like sort of dungeon master guy who's running the overall galactic war and deciding what's happening and it, keeping with the satire and uh, of, of the whole thing they're like all right there are these four planets this is like a mission they gave the whole big update they're like there's four planets right on the border of us and the the bug systems we need you to go to these planets and release term termicide but it's a we're gonna gas the whole planet and so everybody's working to gas those planets but and it's already been leaked, like a little spoiler if you care about that game storyline. But what's gonna happen is the terminicide's gonna just mutate them and make them worse, of course. So it's it's yeah. always little so stuff they gotta like make that. It harder. 
Uh, I think um, that's on the right side of the galaxy. And if you're on the left side of the galaxy, you fight the Terminators, which I don't really enjoy fighting too much because they're mean. Um, Dude, they're rough. Those guys are tough. <laughs> so those are they, insects. Uh, they have guns. They're way they're harder. Terminators. <laughs> um, so so there's like the standard Terminator, like like just metal endoskeleton with a with a la- with like a laser uh, rifle. But then there'll be like giant men with two chainsaw arms chasing you and big armored things and like 8080s or the walkers rather from star yeah. wars they just rip those right off <laughs> that <laughs> thing's crawling at you um and then they'll just drop a giant tank in sometimes like a literal tank tank that like nothing hurts it unless you shoot it in this little square in the back right that's how all the enemies are they've got this tiny little weak point that you've got to you've got to target so yeah that, that game's Dude. been fun and i was saying earlier like if anybody's got it like buy yourself a, a, a stream deck because you can put all your stratagems on this little fucking keypad and be a real star commander, and you just you know one, one button. Are those down. all the stratagems, or are those no. just like your fifteen favorite or twenty favorite? Those, I don't know yeah, which those button are, to hit. What do you mean? Color the picture. There's, there's like icon. there's twenty icon. buttons on there. Yeah, it, that one yeah. shows like two bombs on a plane or rockets or yeah. It'll okay. be like, those it'll be icons like, mean something to you. It's, it's calling in. Like well, a, yeah, because I play the game. It's oh, I don't think we like default that came with. Oh no! Deck. Oh, so okay with Stream Deck, I can make these anything. Like I could make this one YouTube, and it would be would be the YouTube icon. Like there's a, there's a I downloaded this whole pack that's all the things, and in my software over there, I can just drag and drop different ones. They automatically update with the correct codes on them, and it's uh it's seamless. It's super. It's easy. It's like the kill streak uh, icons in COD. So yeah. like you know you yeah, just get yeah. used to whatever that, that yeah. You start to know. How many strategies? I think we're in a. I think we're in a dozen age of of gaming right now. Like, there's a lot of like crap live service stuff, but I don't understand the people that are that try to make the case that you know games in 2009 were way better. Like, I just don't agree with that at all. There's so well, many options now. 2009 was a big year though because you, you sort of had this bloom of games. It was Modern Warfare that, that all too, happened, right? and Halo Three, yeah. and and like like a number of the greats that we think of. Um, maybe Borderlands back then too. There's yeah, probably like 2009 is when stuff. online gaming was really born. Somewhere around there, that's when like Left 4 Dead was popular. COD 4 was mainstream. popular. Yeah. Well, and, console, console online gaming. That's when it because I mean, PC had been doing online stuff for a while, but sure. when it really oh, broke into right. the mainstream was was yeah was 2009 was like definitely the birth. I would say. Yeah, yeah. I should have mentioned something about mainstream, but yeah, that's that's when shucks headsets and microphones were just sort of hitting the deck in the mm-hmm. console world yeah. for the consoles yeah, yeah no i agree with you i think right that, now some of the best games i've ever played have been the last couple of years baldur's gate 3 was such a like home run like i've never played an rpg i i had always thought of the El- um what is it, the elder scrolls games um mm-hmm. as, as like the pinnacle of rpgs but this blows that shit out of the water it really does it's yeah, like it was a, it's it a the genre best things- game it took it took the best from multiple games and then it wrote its own shit. Like I like that you can get fucked by a bear in that game. It's hilarious. You're talking um, about Hell Divers right now? Baldur's no, Gate 3. Baldur's Gate. Oh, okay. and, and just how we are, I think, in like a real golden age of gaming. I, I think some of the games I, I don't like Elden Ring, but it's clearly a masterpiece. I don't like those um didn't they uh, a Zelda game or something like that come out that was like crazy good? Yeah. I never got it's into it. It's tough because on on Switch. Like you can you can download an emulator and play it in 4K 60 frames, but on Switch it's they really stretch the tech as far as I could go for that handheld. Mm. Um, it's a really cool game, but I'm such a snob. It's just really hard for me to play a game that dips down to 15 frames, and I just I just can't do it. I just really can't do it. But yeah. it, I mean, it's really cool the stuff that they did. With they really like did stuff that no other. I've, you build. It's hard to explain, but like you you can put gadgets together you can build like tanks you can build flying mm-hmm. devices to get places and the way that you build them is really unique i've just never seen another game do that i'm curious about Elden ring though how much time did you actually give that game before you gave up on it 25 minutes i got i, I got just butt fucked by the night in the beginning and i was like this is this is too much for me <clears throat> like I'll, I'll i probably I'll i probably did about 10 hours um and then yeah, also you gave it all your old college try. Yeah. I, and I, I did some research too on uh, just watching people play and listening to people talk about the issues that I had with it, which I don't remember quite well. I know I had some issues with the difficulty, um, but that's just those games. That's just Dark Souls like yeah. games. And and if you're not into that, you're not into that. And I don't think I am. I tried also, to cheese that first boss the way you could cheese the giant in Skyrim and it did not play. Mm-mm. There was something about <laughs> no. the NPCs and how the NPCs worked um, that I didn't care for. Um, 
it's I, like I do really, like that traditional. Did you hug. like it, Hutch? I loved Elden really? Ring, but but it took a minute because the game is the the like some of the systems come across as like really rudimentary, and so they don't. They that's a game that does not hold your hand at all. So you 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 open the doors and you and you see Limgrave. And uh, the game centers the sort of like cinematography on your ultimate goal, which is this giant Erd tree. But it doesn't it doesn't tell you like where to go. It doesn't like doesn't tell you any of that. There's no quest tracker or anything. And this is culturally a big part of from software games is they just it's just part of the deal is like you just got to figure it out. And mm. for me, I was used to I'm used to like dummy ubisoft games which tells you exactly like what to do and exactly what order and it gives you these mm -hmm. giant quest markers and so initially that was frustrating but me playing it on a 32 by 9 screen like i have the super ultra wide screen and visually the game is just so um impressive and immersive that it makes you want to like discover more things in the world and so it, it i had never played a front i had never played like dark souls before playing the game so like it was rough for the first 20 hours, playing <laughs> 20 against, like, hours. Uh, dude it was for rough God. dude but the then, skill you know, you required get it. is what scared me off of that game so i'm currently bad at games i'm not gaming a lot a little mortal combat with my son but but that's it and i'm so i'm currently bad taylor plays games kyle's good at games and both of them said it's too hard we have uh, like Patreon hangouts and stuff with our fans, and some of them are great at games. You know, those top 0.1% in Call of Duty, for example, like they're great at games, Rust, and they said it was too hard. And it's like, God darn, if they think it's too hard, what hope do I have? It's, yeah. Scum is loving it. Scum's playing it right now. He just now got into it, mm. like coincidentally, they were talking about it. And he's been like, come on, Kyle, download that, download this game. And I'm like, Dude, I downloaded it when it fucking came out. I bought it like an hour after it was possible. I pre-ordered that shit. I don't like it. It's not for me. I'll tell you what else I did. Like in my 10 hours or whatever of playing it, like I never had any fun. Like like when I win, <laughs> when, when when I would win fights, I didn't care. Like like the 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 and and that's a problem sometimes when people try to get me into games. I'm like, yeah, but guys, like like okay, okay, we'll get all the credits, we'll get all the gold, and then what will we do? Oh, we'll buy a grenade launcher for our guns. Okay, well, that completely changed what this game is about. Well, no, you'll just be able to kill the crabs more faster. I don't like killing the crabs, guys. Oh. Well, you yeah. don't like the game, then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This and, is crab and, killer. <laughs> and the, upgrade, the upgrade system that they have is, like, really... It, it's kind of complicated. Like, you have to get a specific kind of stone to upgrade specific weapons, and then you need another one, and you can only get these stones in... Um, like caves uh, that are I'm okay with that. that you know but like it, it's just a lot it's just a there's a mm. lot to what learn. was the other game um, what was the other game that was like a remake of an older game that we just played a ton a shit ton of um like 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 la last year um it's like the third or fourth sequel of something was it that top down one that I saw yeah you play? yeah 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 it's the oh top total down war one. no warhammer it's, three no it's the XCOM? one where you've got one ca character and you're running around and you're Damn. Vermintide? Google, uh, Google Games that came out last year. Google, like, yeah, that's gonna take so long, man. What <laughs> <is> so long? <laughs> did you guys I play? Can't. Did you guys play, for example, um, Jedi Survivor or the uh, the first one, Fallen Order? No, I've never, never played, played a Star Wars game. No, it's just, I played it, Battlefront back in the day. That was so much fun. Battlefront's dope, isn't it? but St Jedi Survivor is a very different kind of game. It's like very. They call it Souls like now. It's like Dark Souls game inspired a whole genre where it's basically really difficult, and when you die, you drop. You know your points or whatever you want to call them and you have to go back to that spot to get your points and if you die mm -hmm. a second time you don't get them but um it's just a different kind of gaming experience so you have to you have to enjoy the satisfaction of dying like 30 times and then when you finally beat that boss and that dopamine rush that you get that that's the thing that makes you want to keep going yeah i, um, I totally get that with games like I, yeah. i've played nothing in the past year other than age of empires 2 the definitive edition one and it's so like a real time strategy real time game? top down strategy so you yeah. like play as the mayans or persians or fucking incas or something and it's war and economy and it's so satisfying to go online and beat someone in that because it's like chess where it's like oh you know i i scouted i predicted what they were doing and despite them trying their best to fuck up my eco and everything i defended i got over them i i won and then conversely it's that other side 
where like you're just watching as your own base gets wrecked by someone way yeah. better than you and you're like oh i'm having no fun but i'm really motivated to figure out exactly what i did wrong and how this guy got over on me it's yeah it's you, so fun. You, you have to want to know how to win the fight like yeah, and, if you, exactly. and if, if you just don't care you're gonna you're gonna put it down after 30 minutes or an hour it's just not your it was Diablo 4 I was thinking of. Taylor, here's my oh, question, yeah. though, about, about a that. game like that. Yeah, Diablo 4 was fun. Um, it was very flawed. It got way too think. easy at the end, and then I, we, I think that's why we both lost interest. I hit that 80-hour mark. Once I got, I, I had a moment when I was playing the game at 80 hours in where I was like, why am I still doing this? Yeah, I, yep. I, I, didn't, I yep. didn't have a good answer, and so I was like, I think I'm good. I, like, I yeah. got 80 hours. No, I got like my value. So. All right, I got to the point that I can hold down X, and my production of corpses is far out, ex, like you exceeding the amount you need. I yeah, I was yeah. a necromancer, and it you was like every all these corpses are floating. <laughs> it's just like the easiest thing ever. Yeah, yeah. I would see like all my friends in my party, like they're microing and doing their skills, and it's like you guys are crazy. Just hold X, like just, yeah. just hold X, and it blows yeah. up. Every corpse you blow up makes three somehow. It's like someone it, wasn't doing the math in the late game here. It did play really well with a controller, which was nice. Like uh, if I give it, give me the option between a controller and a mouse and keyboard, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick a controller most of the time, unless it's like a competitive shooter like COD now. Yeah, Taylor, have you invested yet. in WASD yet and like gotten good at with it. in AOE? Yeah, well, Age of Empires Two is one of the most hotkey intensive games out there, and so I'm I'm pretty good on that. Uh, I would say I'm probably not that good at it in shooters because I just I prefer RTS as a genre. Like the only sharp. reason I like AOE two so much is because I like that medieval flavor, the bows and arrows, the swords, the siege towers and trebuchets. If I was like a space sci fi guy, I would be playing StarCraft. Did you guys play um, Baldur's Gate with a controller or did you use a mouse and keyboard? Um, I didn't play much of Baldur's Gate. I use mouse and keyboard. I use mouse and keyboard for everything, even when people are like, no, you got to use a controller. Trust me. No, fuck you. Although I went back and forth on Elden Ring because they were like, Kyle, you've been using mouse and keyboard. You're crazy. That's why it's so hard. And, and so then I played like a shit ton more with a controller and hated it. So Dude, much. Diablo was like why made you... for controller. Like I Kyle's played the like... whole first half of my Diablo experience on mouse and, uh, mouse and keyboard. And then my buddy, who's a way better PC gamer than me, was like, why are you not using a controller? This is so honed for controller. Switched to a controller. It was immediately easier. Way better. So sometimes yeah, I, I ended up picking up Baldur's Gate because you guys, because you, Kyle, were pushing it so hard the last time I was on. And so I was like, all right, fuck it. I literally downloaded it that night and I put, I think, like 70 or 80 hours into that game. I had never played uh, Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons before. I never had any kind of, never had any interest in it. And so the first 10 hours, I'm like getting used to stuff. I'm like, I don't know if I want to keep playing. But then something happened and I turned a corner and I was like, dude, everything you do. You got to like level uh, three so, or five, like somewhere in there. And, yeah. and, and, and suddenly you get like a little, it's one of those things where you get like your third weapon or your third perk or something. It's like, oh, it's clicking now. Yeah. Now it's. Well, wonderful. everything felt so consequential. Like every decision I made, ha like you could tell, I'm like, oh, this would have been drastically different had I gone in that direction. And uh, dude, that game was like a genre defining game. It's, like it was easily going my to be a game of last year. Un unless they're the greatest dev of all time and they make like a Baldur's Gate 4, you know, like in two years, I bet that's going to be a classic game a decade yeah. from now. Oh, for it'll sure. Be, it'll be the remastered version. People will be playing that shit on their refrigerators. The, the and, like and hour that we years. played together, Kyle, and you were walking me through a bit of it and we met that one kind of smug elf guy or whatever early on i was like let's kill this guy I, I don't care for him one bit he's being rude to me and my compatriots and so we killed him and, you and then afterward that. yeah, yeah after, just... killed him and afterward kyle's like so taylor this guy is wildly important to what you need to be doing and i'm like yeah. oh so we probably shouldn't have done that and you're like no no we really shouldn't have done that i killed, <laughs> I killed he was the village leader <laughs> <laughs> now they're gonna be oh, who's, the, who's the bear guy's name is it halcine is that his name um oh it's not halcim it's something like that Halcine. yeah, yeah. I, I killed him i i killed him i had no idea that was like an important druid and I, <laughs> yeah. told my chat, I was telling my chat the next day i was like yeah i killed a bear yesterday and they were like wait what <laughs> where did you kill the bear i was like i was in some prison they were like you fucking idiot <laughs> like this guy's like really important for act two and three from what and like my my fiance is playing it and so I'm kind of, I get to see a little bit about like how it played out. I'm like, yeah. fuck, I should not have killed that guy. 
And in, in my first playthrough, I I didn't realize that I needed Halston, and so like I completed the second act successfully, and the the whole second act is like this land is poisoned by a curse. Halston is the guy who removes the curse. Yeah, <laughs> I or left you, without you removing like the a curse. Pixie. You can you can free like a little pixie, and then she'll like give you light or whatever. But yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, it sounds like all of us moved on from first person shoot. I mean, Woody, you said you're not playing games anymore? Just a little. I'm playing with my son. We play Mortal Kombat. Dude, yep. I, I talked about it on PKN a little bit. Colin has the good controller, and I have just a stock normal Xbox controller. We're playing Mortal Kombat on Xbox. Cool. And uh, I'm whooping him. I'm not that good at this. Is not a Clash of the Titans. He's bad, and I'm I was slightly better. And uh, but I, I can throw the fireballs on command and stuff, and do the fancy kicks a little bit. And uh, I'm beating, I'm beating, I'm beating him because he doesn't block. He never heckin' blocks. He just doesn't do it. And sometimes if he gets ahead, I just punish him by getting close and hitting him with sh like light punches. And he can't walk away. He can't do anything unless you block. You just will, I will pixel by pixel take your health bar down to zero. And he's like, stop kicking me. I'm like, you didn't stop kicking me. You know, like, learn to block, kid. <laughs> anyway, it turns out the scuff controller he had, block his right trigger, it didn't go down all the way. And that's why he evolved this no block oh, style. No. Well, I figured that out and it wasn't really fair. And I got him a regular controller and he is fucking me up now. I haven't won <laughs> since. Like, I've won, when you play two out of three, I've, I've had a single win. He's going, but... dad, block. Block. <laughs> yeah. block. Oh, you can't the, block that, can it's you? The equivalent of dad. Why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Oh, yeah. and he's just fucking me up now. I can't win. I'm trying. Like I'm bringing out my A game, and he's got an A plus game. Dude, you turned Colin into like a version of that Croatian discus thrower in like 1907 who practiced <laughs> with like a lead discus and then got to the Olympics and was like. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dominate! <laughs> like, I, I can't believe this is what they're letting me throw. Y'all don't throw. If I'm lead trying distances? to win, Kyle. Raiden and Omni Man are the characters I seem to do well Ooh, with. Okay, I forgot Omni Man was in there. Yeah, he's new. I would, I would be, I would have to go with one of my like fan favorites. I might do Rambo or something like that, or RoboCop. Probably. More I think they're in the previous Mortal Kombat, and not the current one. I've okay. never given that whole game genre like a a, a fair shake. Just no, never. Well, there's it. no need. Like, like that's just getting into. Like we're we, we're talking about basketball over here, and that's baseball. That's a, that's a whole different fucking kind of game. <laughs> yeah, but I'm telling you, like it, if you got a projector screen and you're sitting on the couch with a buddy, fighting games are about as good as it gets. If you mm. both Ooh. suck, but like I could program uh, the stream deck with yeah. the combos, or if you you're need, both good, uh, if, if it's a fair <laughs> fight, the Hutch makes a good point. Like you both suck, yeah. but there's like the skill gap is wild with fighting games. They they're doing mm. like frame specific block timings and stuff. Yes. And mm -hmm. I've always been really impressed with the fighting game people, like the old school um, Street Fighter like fights with what's his name. Like there was one, there was one. They were playing Street Fighter three. I can't remember his name. But there was a thing in Street Fighter 3 where you could do like a flurry of attacks and he was parrying each, like every single attack. And every time he parried the attack, the crowd that was watching him gets louder and louder and louder. It's like <laughs> a, a really classic clip for fighting games. Oh, God, what yeah. is his name? Da Daigo. Daigo is his name. But, I think I've seen yeah. that clip. Yeah. You got to be so, your reaction time just has to be so... Yeah. Not, not if your opponent's not that good. <laughs> not, I've been, not if your opponent's not very good. You yeah, well, if you both together. suck, then it's fun. Yeah. yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Dude, playing yeah, AoE 2 online has made me realize how much you need RTS skill-based matchmaking. They have it. And, <laughs> I man, turned you into a believer. Nice. <laughs> you, you, you try and play an RTS against someone who's even like 10% better than you at it, and it's like, oh, I'm just being played with. This I just guy have to say, is walling in my gold. I just have to say... I don't know if you guys are aware, but the, the COD devs came out with a statement on SPMM. Did you guys talk about this yet? No. No, we we're, we're so far from the COD world. I think I heard it, if it, but I thought it was like a month or two ago. I just want to say, and I'm not like, you know, normally like a pat myself on the back kind of guy, but I was 1000% vindicated because they, in their little blog post, like the thing is, like I had developers, I had multiple AAA developer developers like in my DM saying, like, this is how the systems like kind of generally work, and this is what we observe in mm -hmm. like player behavior. And so once I understood the reason why I was in the game, which was player retention, mm -hmm. it didn't that's when I was like, Oh, okay. It doesn't really make any sense that like they're never gonna get rid of it. Uh yeah. And they came out and they said the same thing. They said the exact same thing that the Fall Guys people said. They said the exact same thing that um uh, 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 destiny people said they they said 
when people that first pick up the game get stomped out like two games in a row or whatever, we're observing that a lot of these people are quitting the game and they're never picking it back up again. Mm -hmm. Um, And Mm -hmm. and they said, like, we understand that it frustrates a lot of like the seasoned pros or whatever. um, But this is just something we can't really like bargain on because it's just going to impact things too, too much. But Mm -hmm. I'm in a yeah, unique they, position in that, like, if I pick up a game, I have tour guides who are very good, and skill based matchmaking ruins it for me. You know, and it's suddenly I, it's me and this guy who's got pro level aim, and uh, now my opponents have pro level aim, and I'm fucked. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, but, it's an imperfect yeah, solution. Yeah. I mean, when I, when I read that, I had the same reaction podcast. as you, though. Yeah. Well, when I read that, I had the same reaction. I, I was like, oh, well, there's no point even discussing skill based match uh, matchmaking because they're never going to change it because it is about player retention. That's all it's about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's not about you having fun. It's about the most people having fun. The the only <laughs> frustrating part, especially in like a one v one RTS style, is like you. It's so rare that you get to like really bully someone. Like it's trying yeah. to make you at like fifty percent win rate always with the elo and whatnot. And so yeah. like it's, it's why it's I like Tarkov. Frustrating. To, to, to talk about they don't give a fuck they're just like throw the lions in with the with the with the sheep <laughs> yep. that's fair, that's, but you know what it works for them because that's they're targeting a really hardcore audience like you mm-hmm. kind of have to like punishment a little bit if you're into tarkov like i played yeah. a little bit like the last like month i get it i understand like i'm not good so i ended up stopping i was like i just don't want to invest too much into yeah. this because it's going to take a lot to get good at the game you have a hard time learning but, the map huh did you have a hard time learning the maps? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I even had like maps open over here, and mm-hmm. I, even you then, I'm like, I don't, I can't. Even then, it was hard for me to orient you're myself. You're really vulnerable, um, vulnerable when you're like standing in the woods, right? There could be people coming from <laughs> anywhere yeah. trying to figure out what woods you're in compared to the woods on the map, and I don't know what the fuck it is. Does this rock look like a T to you on the map? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, that looks like I'm, a T. And that- <laughs> This looks like a little and, creek, and I think I think this oh, no, is where that's I'm not at. A, and then, that's a tree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, finding the extra, <laughs> you know. But that's but that's like it's kind of like Elden Ring. You're kind of you're kind of you're kind of uh, appealing to like a similar kind of. Those are the people that buy that game and get good at it are the ones that are going to be willing to like spend thirty hours just getting demolished yeah. before they start getting their bearings. Oh, um, it's got it in Tarkov. But it's fun to like, find a game like that that you don't I mind. Know if you get demolished you like so in Tarkov for like the first year. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like, like um, your first year of playing Tarkov is hard. Maybe at least your second first wipe. Like, yeah, your yeah. Fir- your whole first six months for sure. It's just a shit storm because, you know, you start off so bad and you make bad habits or whatever. Um, I yeah. just finished. I-, I played this most recent wipe and thought it was their best wipe ever. There were so many good updates. Everybody um, was saying that. I, I just get all, all the people that, that that play Tarkov on my feed were talking about how good this wipe was. What what makes a good wipe? Like, I don't understand what you're. So um, they completely so they lowered the recoil across the board, um, and what Didn't that they roll did, that back? No, and what that did was it made it so that all of the it normally it requires you to get to like level four mid forties, like level forty two. So you've got all your traders so that you can affordably get the attachments that will make uh, an assault rifle, whatever, uh, low recoil while still having enough ergonomics that you can sight it quickly and run around quickly that's the that's sort of the the game but they lowered the recoil so much that now right away you can make it okay and at at like level two traders this is good like the level two trader m4 suddenly was as good as the old meta m4 and so it was much more accessible to everybody right away and then they they did the snow thing and the snow thing meant that no one hidden bushes anymore and that you could spot players very easily. Yeah, that's when I was playing. I was playing during this wipe with the snow, and then they took the snow away, and I was like, "Wait, what happened?" Um, spring came. <laughs> but spring came. Yeah, it's a, it's yeah. it's definitely like the audio is a little weird in that game. That's like one thing that like, especially when you have the headset on, it's like very cracky Touch. and uh, what. Do oh. other games have vertical audio figured out better? Because like you've got a speaker in each ear. Well, how does up and down sound different? I in real life I can hear if it's from above me or below me, but I don't know how. I don't know. In, I don't know. Tarkov, it feels like it feels like games have gotten worse at that. Like I feel like old COD games with the with the Triton headsets, you know, and, yeah, and, yeah. and more in dead silence, you could hear Triton, Astro, very specific. Baby. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was one of the two. And then there's <laughs> Turtle Turtle Beach as well. But like in new CODs, it's it's actually kind of tricky. And like there's this cheese thing with COD now where if you're playing on PC. 
you go into your equalizer settings and you check a box that's um, I think it's loudness equalization it and it makes it so you can hear footsteps like way easier, mm. but every sound is kind of, a, so it's like, remember when you got sit rep pro and yeah. modern warfare two, um, it's like that. So like, it's the sound is like overwhelming. We do that um, with this podcast. Just what, what, you, what'll what happen is like one guy is sort of naturally soft spoken and another guy's a screamer. And then we just normalize the loudness <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. so that just, people can hear. Dude, you can automate so much stuff now with content creation, stuff like Adobe Premiere. I don't know if you guys use that very much, but you can do like auto captions now, which is really cool. Mm, um, that's handy. So, yeah, because like th generally those videos and the short form stuff, they're going to do way better if you have captions. And with yeah. with Adobe, it's like a th maybe like a three minute process and it just automates. Everything. You may have to go in and change things. It may get some words wrong, but it's a really easy process now. Kyle and now and with AI, been, it's like, yeah. Kyle and I've been watching this YouTube videos and basically they tell sci-fi stories and oftentimes they're written on Reddit. So what the content creator, if you call him that, does is he copy pastes this big Reddit story into something and then has AI read it to you. But AI reading isn't like it was 10 years ago. It's pretty compelling. Pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. 99%. 99%. Every so often they'll pronounce like, you know, finish just to like finish it. But most of the time it's good. And um, so now AI is reading you the story pretty well. The captions are there, which helps too. And they're right 98% of the time also. And then they use AI to generate a picture that's like kind of sort of related, like, I don't know, human Close enough. with blue eyes. So you're just watching this thing and it's like, man, I bet this video took the creator a minute and a half of like human time yeah. to like kick off these processes, have an AI generated image, AI generated voice, AI generated captions, upload it to YouTube. And the videos are getting a few thousand views, you know, enough to make like $30. And I'm like, shit, you build a little library of this stuff and you've got a business. Yeah. There's whole content farms of AI creators mm -hmm. now that are getting, especially with YouTube shorts, they're getting tons of traction. I don't know if you guys have seen, have you guys seen the genre of, uh, the subgenre of YouTube videos where it's um, Batman helping young men with their porn addiction. No, no I was really I'm hoping he was like. Sure. I was hoping he was gonna try on girls too, but but continue about <laughs> Batman. I watch girls try on their panties. Uh, just look YouTube. up. Just look up. Batman gives you advice quitting porn, and oh. it, there's a whole genre where it's it's like a, it's like a um, Gotham City, and it's nighttime, and Batman's kind of perched on top of like a gargoyle, and mm -hmm. uh, there's rain, and his voice will just be like, "You are strong, you know, you can, <laughs> you can do this. You have value." And it's like thirty minutes of Batman encouraging men to like give up. This porn. is a Lame. terrible genre. I, I want oh. I want somebody else to come in, maybe the Joker, and help me. One find million better, views. Find better it's porn. Huge. It's a huge, huge like like. A lot of incels kind of do oh this kind God. of stuff. Is this it's like, like nofap? Is it is that what this is? Is yeah. this so you can keep your nofap going? Yeah, but Taylor, there's no, um, so go to Taylor, go to YouTube and search Batman gives you um advice to stop porn. Just type something like that. And it's Batman standing in his like costume in the rain and the darkness, and then AI Batman voice going, You are strong. Four four million views. Batman your talks to you about no fap. You are an individual, not influenced by what is around you. You are the rock the river flows around. It does not shape you. You shape it. I'm making Honestly, I could see a world where if you're That's so addicted to masturbating, you river fall into rock. watching Batman videos telling you not to. It probably is good to take a break. Like you, you probably should, you know, if you're far that far. If you had to bring Batman in, yeah. If you have to bring, can you imagine, like, like Kyle, if you had a problem with eating too many burgers and you were watching Peter Griffin motivate you with an AI voice, oh, not no, to, I'm I'd sure be like, that's insane, Kyle. But you're on the right path Taylor, and way. <laughs> no, dude, I'm sure really there's, I'm sure there's Batman AI. People to jerk off. That'd be I'm, I'm, hilarious. <laughs> that, that, that's amazing. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm you sure like there's the Batman AI to help. This. I'm sure there's Batman <laughs> AI to help with overeating. Like there, it's, it's, a, it's a whole. You yourself. That would be funny. <laughs> the movie Her was uh, quite prescient. Like that was like uh, you know it was science fiction at the time, but it was you yeah. know it's really not too far off from where we're currently at. Did you guys yeah, see that movie I, Her? Spike yeah. Jones. Uh, it has Joaquin oh, no. Phoenix in it, right? Yeah, yeah I, real good. I think I think we're really close to getting like some sort of weird personal like relationship bot. That's like no, they exist. 
they exist. Where they marry the real Bad girl news. with like the best AI. Um, that what what is it? What is that? What's the best AI called? I, I saw they gave them all an IQ test. They should give them all an EQ test. Is it Chat GPT? No, it it's it's like fourth or something like that or fifth. Um, there was something. It's like a man's name and then the, a, a numeral. There was like oh. Carlos two and now well, it's Carlos three or some shit. There was the recent debacle with like black Nazis. Did you guys see that? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I saw that was with oh, Google's man. right. Google's AI. Yeah. Oh man, they yanked it. Like they're like, okay, mm -hmm. we're gonna put this on the shelf for a little. Bit. <laughs> yeah, there was. So I forget whose AI was before that. It might have been Chat GPT, but they sort of didn't do woke quite well enough. Where if you were to say like describe or make a picture of a burglar like they'd all be black and make a picture of an uh it wasn't efficient it was like uh i don't know a productive person and they're all like white guys in business suits and uh they're like oh this is, a, this is coming off kind of race if, if burglars are back and black and productive people are white guys in business suits and then of course google went too far the other way where they're yeah. like show me a founding father and it's like a black guy or something <laughs> well all the ai yeah. is like woke as fuck they can't they can't they? like grok too like uh, there was a there was a period That's the where, elon musk one right grok. yeah there, but there was a period where like right right wing um like uh media pundits were mm -hmm asking grok uh are are am i racist or like it, you know like let's say it was tim pool so tim pool would go like is tim pool racist and then grok would be like wow that's a good question and like the the uh mm -hmm. elon's ai was like calling all of these people <laughs> racist and so they were getting pissed at him mm -hmm. um yeah i don't know we'll see how i mean i think grok only only um takes data from twitter i could be wrong um hmm. so really? i th i don't where, know where are most of them that. scrubbing from like i think it's like, everything i think yeah, it's, I think I think it's the anything, whole internet like i think Google anything is. public dude yeah. did you guys see congress voted to ban tiktok let's go they so voted right. which part of congress how much they, of congress they, they, i it think the house. the house and i think they so, got 80 percent of the votes yeah so they, now which is in it which there, is there bananas was, let me talk about that a little bit because yeah, yeah. like dude that the republican-led house can't approve like a basically a republican border immigration bill i yeah. can't recall in my life i'm sure it happens but like the last time any notable legislation got 80 percent of the vote 9 11 shit okay yeah. okay but usually they get anytime like, it's giving money to israel the three first defectors to come over something like that and uh you know if, if it's you know bipartisan it's 49 Democrats and four Republicans or something like that. That's what they call bipartisan. 80% of people agreed to get rid of TikTok. And yeah, that's ridiculous. And Biden said he'd sign it like last week. Biden said he would sign it. it. Yeah. So it's not technically like a strict ban. It's they True. want to divest. They want TikTok to divest themselves of their of their Chinese uh, ownership. Which, yeah, to be fair, that's exactly right. And what's, yeah, what that means you. is that the owners of TikTok will have two options. One, allow their product to be now be worth billions of dollars less or B, sell their product to, to someone else. Let the servers be somewhere else. And that's what they're going to do. So they're going to sell. Knowing mm -hmm. that they're probably going to sell, how do you invest, Woody? Do you invest in their competitors or, or do you bet against them in the future? Shit, I feel like with almost every social platform, the move is not to invest. Like, like, ah, really? Fuck. What are you going to invest in? MySpace? The president's about to take a bite Facebook out of their fucking the milk. It's already like the boomerville of, of you know, it, Facebook is what now? Marketplace? Some jackass boomers talking about Trump and meta? You know, a little, uh, like, I, I think Facebook is still, it's replaced every forum. So if you're into fish tanks, motorcycles, this, that, the other thing, you find yourself on Facebook to find people with oh. common interests. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, and motors. Um, but Facebook is like moving into the rearview mirror, right? Someday, so where do we Instagram watch our shorts will. spin the future if tick if TikTok doesn't 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 do it anymore? Exactly, I guess. Well, threads? Steve Mnuchin, Steve Mnuchin is uh, trying to put some funding together to buy TikTok. Um, That's that was really... Trump's that was Trump's uh, Treasury Secretary, and he also like. He was a movie producer. He produced like Batman v Superman and shit. So Trump um, was against this. Trump says leave TikTok alone because he met with this billionaire investor of TikTok and reversed his position. He's for sale. Yeah. And uh, now Trump is trying to protect TikTok, which is a reversal. Yeah, I'd rather see TikTok not get banned. 
Like it's better. It won't to get have banned. More out there. I, it could be though. It's, no, it dude, it's want no, I, in direction. I just told you what's going. I. But if the topic is what would we want, I think I'm with Taylor. I don't understand mm-hmm. the danger. Okay, what, well, well, what, well, China's gonna figure out that I think. Okay. Fucking shorts are funny. Yeah, a bunch of people know. can say stuff. That so I don't like. So actually, it's no. I think a lot of the pundits on the on the other side of this would say that China intentionally runs different algorithms here than at home because they're trying to brain rot America. Meanwhile, it, if you look at TikTok in their country, you might learn how to do your geometry homework better. Here, you'll watch, uh, you'll watch divisive things. You'll watch like race baiting things. You'll watch all sorts of politically charged stuff that that really make the country less cohesive. When it's the most popular app on everybody's fucking phone. I'm not going to well, watch your geometry app, Kyle. You can't make me. I'll yeah. find a way to brain rot somewhere else. Listen to this. Okay. Kyle wants you to be when doing it, fucking math. You'll, people. He wants you to do math on your phone. My TikTok would be the best of both worlds. You figure out the circumference of titties. All right. <laughs> Why would you how to measure cup sizes with geometry? Okay, but, you're you winning me over. In. Okay, but do everybody here would, I make assume everybody one here one. would agree okay, that. Yeah. I assume everybody here would agree that Chinese, uh, China is an adversarial country, right? Yeah, there yeah. are. Yeah, is there is there no concern amongst any of you guys that an adversarial country can send two hundred million Americans a push notification anytime they want on an app that they ban in their country? Like you can't go on TikTok in China. You need the Chinese. Okay. Version of I hear your of, point, of, but I have a counterpoint. Restricting what if American I were to say speed? that having open trade deals is critically important with your adversarial countries? The thing that prevents people from going to war is it ruins business. And if you have like, I don't know, trade going back and forth like U.S. and China does, that will stop wars. Mm. Well, Powerful we people trading. will make sure not, it doesn't happen. I'm going to keep buying the fucking TVs uh, and the tables and the lumber and their bad steel, but they don't get to run their propaganda arm anymore. That's what I'm. Well, that's that's the point. That. Like, like, it's just what do you prioritize more? Are you more afraid of China sending a push notification to people, or do well, you prioritize higher, which I would like, the ability of Americans to use an app that they want and have speech on it? The problem is that it's asymmetrical. So, without this ban, you have America allowing this company with a substantial Chinese Communist Party um, interest to operate freely in the United States to tune their algorithm. Now I'm not alleging like that they're deliberately tuning their algorithm, but I'm just saying like, it's not unfathomable. We do it to them. And, and it was, well, no, but we don't though, because they don't allow, you can't go on Twitter in China. You can't go on Facebook. Trump ran, in China. Oh, I'm not talking about that specific Trump and the uh, Trump allowed a CIA operation uh, starting the second year of his term. That was this mm-hmm. vast um, propaganda uh, net, um, influencing campaign on their internet to destabilize them and make their government look bad in their people's eyes. If you don't think they're doing the exact same thing, but they don't need to with TikTok. I, I mean, why wouldn't they? It wouldn't, sh- I guess it wouldn't shock me. What, where I, are I, you getting this? Trump CIA? I think it's Reuters. Um, is it Reuters? Reuters. Reuters. Trump CIA. It's Reuters. It's Reuters. <laughs> it's Reuters. China, China. I was China. on Reuters. China. Yeah. But, but, I, mean, I would rather see them not ban a, oh. app that a lot of Americans speak on. Oh, this just came out today, actually. Uh, yeah. Trump launched CIA covert influence operation against China. That's interesting. I'm going to look into that later. But I mean, like, do you guys understand just kind of broadly why there would be serious concerns? Like, I'd if you were looking to, say, destabilize Western nations by undermining faith in institutions and democracy broadly, um, you can see how having a substantial interest in a major social media platform, the number one social media platform for young people in this country. You could see mm-hmm. how that could be like, that could be I mean, easily prob- problematic. And I huge freely ways. acknowledge your concerns and, and, and agree that they're valid. I still have a hard time getting past this foundational idea that trade between nations prevents war. How, what percentage of trade is TikTok, though, Woody? I, I don't yeah. think it's any. Well, but piece by yeah. piece, right? First, we ban TikTok, then they stop the sale of iPhones, and then we retaliate by doing something else, and then suddenly they're not letting Fords be sold in China because we're going to track their movements. And oh, before pl- yes, long- please. That's the best <laughs> trade ever. Uh, both of them? We don't get to sell either of those F-150s? <laughs> how, what, how many Fords do they import? It cannot be many. But, I, well, I get that it's not a big it's thing. I'm just trying just to come up with examples example. where, you know, bit by bit, 
tree gets eroded away. I bet if you looked at away. that example, you would find tariffs on our stuff, and yet peace remains. You know what I mean? Like, like, like I feel like you can't. Tariffs are different than bans. I, I feel like it's a tough um, economic policy, a trade policy, and 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 this is no different. We're not telling them we're confis we're not confiscating TikTok, which is what we probably should do. We should fucking just take it from them because why not that's what we do we're Wait, saying china, hey you got to divest that's not is, cool is china Sell involved stuff. in bricks is china is china the yeah, sea in bricks? they're the sea uh, yeah so i mean yeah. i don't know like i i can i can understand if you're like a young person and tiktok's your main thing and and i do understand kind of like being wary of giving government too much control over social media platforms it is a bit different because it's not like it's not like the United States government has the same level of influence over like Twitter and Facebook than China has over TikTok or China has over their own social media platforms. Like the Twitter files, what did they reveal ultimately? I think they that, definitely do. They, they lean on social media companies all the time. Not, it's not, I don't think it's fair to say that's comparable to communist China. Like in communist China, you cannot be a TikTok influencer. And like here in the United States, Half of TikTok is people criticizing the United States. You, you can't do yeah, that yeah. in China. You can't. You can't like make That's a video true. criticizing Xi Jinping or you know Chinese mm. policy when it comes to like That's the most point. Half of Twitter is people criticizing the United States. Yeah, yeah you half can. Of, you can be like Hassan Piker and make millions of dollars selling America bad to like 18 year olds and 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 yeah. you can do that you, and you cannot, can be promoted to the front of twitch and stuff every like day, that every we're day. doing and, it yeah and you and but you you cannot do that in russia you cannot do that in china so i do think like when when we look at like the twitter files what did we see we saw like government request requ uh were they requests or they were like government requests to like hey we think this we think this uh post is problematic or whatever and what we found out was like 75 percent of the time twitter was saying no 25 percent of the time they were doing it and it, it had to do with like covid policy and election disinformation like the trump administration for example asked twitter to t take down a christy tweeting tweet that called him a pussy ass bitch like that it's pretty and, mean and, and the, <laughs> that is pretty mean did they but do it's it funny. <laughs> they said, they said they no leave that one up in china, I'd leave in china it up too. they don't do requests they just they just yeah. take that shit down. So there's a huge, I think, difference. Wait, who uh, was called a pussy ass bitch? Trump. Trump. Oh. Chrissy, Chrissy Teigen called him a pussy ass bitch, and the, <laughs> and the administration reached out to. There's like an email where the administration reached out to Twitter I mean, and they asked. I still don't know who Some that of the is. stuff that they actress? took down in the last election cycle violated sure. Twitter's policies, like against porn and stuff like that. Do they have policies against porn? They have policies no. against revenge. Revenge, revenge, revenge porn. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, that's not porn then. That's just that's something else. They shouldn't don't call judge it. my porn habits. With the with the TikTok thing though, like don't you like you want Americans to be able to maybe they can't share certain beliefs on Facebook that they're allowed to on TikTok. Well, dissent is really important, I think, for any, especially for liberal democracy. It's like the it's like the bedrock. It's like the First Amendment, like the constitutional right to redress grievance against your government. That's a obviously like you don't want to stifle that. I don't I don't know if TikTok like I wouldn't consider TikTok in the same category as like Twitter or Facebook. You can do and even that if it on were. Twitter. You can you can do that on Twitter. You can you can criticize the government. You can do whatever the fuck you want essentially. Yeah. What they're um, asking TikTok to do will not stifle TikTok's free speech. It will ensure that that maybe the CCP isn't writing the algorithm there though. It, th mm. that that's that's all they're going for. TikTok's these are not, not reliable. Anywhere. These are not reliable partners for for the for like western interests like Ch the chinese communist party have a 50 year 100 year plan in terms of global it's not going well for them lately though I, it's, it's it's been fun well, the real estate yeah, fucked them up they had like a big old real estate bubble over there and it's pretty mm -hmm. bad right now but i don't um, think they're over covid are they I not know. i think i know it bounced back COVID. And I just I think, assumed it had settled. I'm sorry and i think economically as well and, and, and also i know this stuff that's going on with the houthis um apparently that that really doesn't bother the Israelis. What it bothers is maybe a few Israeli oligarchs who own shipping companies. It's a they're like, oh no. But if well, you, they're not if just going is, after Israeli ships. They're going after anybody who shows up in their exactly. And that's and why it's, it's a problem for Europe and China because Israeli that's oligarchs. where the tra that's the trade between where trade between Europe and China goes through. Not that's a hugely important shipping lane. Yeah, for China. I and, think the Likud Europe, party has who, been pretty. I like seeing Europe do poorly. I've spoken well, about though. the Houthis, right? Like it's not uh, just a well, yeah. I mean, like Israeli I, bureaucrats. Like it's the main it, party in power. Well, Netanyahu's yeah. Party. Well, a problem with it. Well, the Houthis are. China yeah, spoke out against the Houthis. Uh, Nobody likes the Houthis. 
Wow. <laughs> I mean, Iran, it's like the Houthis Houthi. in Iran, they're like, you know, like this. By the well, I'm Hamas, sure. like, Hamas, North they, Korea they, loves them. I feel like Hamas very openly at this point acknowledged that they, in part, did what they did on October 7th because they were trying to draw in outside forces and turn it into a region, a larger regional Hezbollah and more Iranian proxies. Hezbollah um, is it, whoever runs Hezbollah. That's a smart cookie, as Trump would say, because yeah. he's he didn't do shit. <laughs> he would run it. It's but, you know, you know, all his like sec. I, well, OK, I'm sure they finance them and they and they influence them. But whoever the the guy who who flies a, um, that Hezbollah flag, not an Iranian flag, that guy who's in charge of mm. it decided not to get involved after there was, some, there was some fighting in the north like southern lebanon and northern israel but like yeah. they didn't it, so they, they certainly didn't the, the hamas was not successful ultimately in in turning it into something much bigger i guess like i guess the idea is that the for the abrahamic accords and the and the normalization of between saudi arabia and, and israel hamas felt like okay we need to we need to pop the fuck off because it's kind of now or never yep. um but it fucking sucks because now they're just so much further away from a Palestinian state. And it's not like the Palestinian people in Gaza have a say in terms of like military operations. Yeah. I was uh, just getting d destroyed every single dude, day. Somebody yeah. challenged me the other day to solve that thing. It took me 15 minutes to solve the whole fucking thing. Really? You gotta have, you Fill have me to have in. A so a two state solution is going to be non non negotiable. But here's the thing. Here's what will make everybody happy. You know that it, maybe it's off the coast of the UK. They call it Sealand or something. It's like the world's smallest country. They just got a little platform sure. out there. Sure, sure. That's where the Palestinians go. And <laughs> and look, here's the thing. We just, we, the United States, just sent a boat out of Virginia. And they're heading to, you would guess it, uh, Israeli waters. They're going to build them a pier so that we can more readily give them things. <laughs> I, I think we should. I think it should be left Instead, up to chance. Entirely. Build a couple of oil rig platforms out there. Yeah, well, set them up with some tents. When you say leave it up to chance, if like so the Fishing current gear, the current like <laughs> pressure that the Biden administration and other international forces are putting on Israel is to not permanently occupy Gaza. So like if if Trump wins in twenty twenty four, for example, yeah, it's pretty obvious that he's going to give Netanyahu like the full green light just to annex annex gaza and then it's like i don't know maybe egypt is just forced to take in refugees like i don't know how that's gonna they won't no, it would be they europe won't. that would be forced to take them or us probably well, right because oh, egypt has already stated they're europe. not going to take any. no send them to fight in ukraine that's how i was gonna say for like everyone coin flip then all the the head jews and the head palestinians have to be like whatever the result of this is we will abide mm -hmm. loser of the coin flip their whole group goes to madagascar it, Look. It has to be a two-state solution, but Netanyahu has to be ousted democratically, and Hamas, they can't, they can't remain in power. There's just that's just not tenable, I don't think. Um, do you guys think like I don't know where you got? Do you guys think it's obviously a really complicated issue? But like, do you think that some level of force is justified in the pursuit of like disarming Hamas? Oh, I mean, I, I think that it's. I think the amount of force that Israel is showing is absurd and that they are waging a destructive campaign against the palestinian people right now and, and that's clear by the video evidence Nazi. and it's 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 absurd so Bigot. yeah <laughs> bigot Nazi. hate monger yeah. hate oh, monger i really I, I don't want over there. i don't think that we're gonna solve an issue an ethnic white nationalist a thousand years old and so i don't want to be involved with israel whatsoever or with Palestine. It's not our business. It doesn't help us to be involved. It makes us global foes the world over. It's negative. It costs a it's billion zillion dollars. And it's, it's why 9-11 happened. Taylor's pretty consistently isolationist, whereas yeah. I prefer the hypocrite route and choose <laughs> battle by battle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, thought, I said the same thing about Ukraine and, I, and, and Russia. I, I don't care. Yeah. I like the Ukrainians and Russians. Because, Russia. I'm the, because I'm the guy that likes the United States to have its fingers in all the pies. I look, <laughs> When I see those Pacific fleets start, start sailing out, spreading out, taking control of entire regions, when I watch those YouTube videos about how much firepower like this, this boat or that boat has, I like that shit. I like well, that we that, so, that the world runs on dollars and and uh, and people can pretend like they're going to switch to something else all they want want they won't they won't well, a lot a lot of people call that like American imperialism like I don't know yes. if you guys have, if you guys have ever seen like that That's bullshit yeah have you guys seen the bullshit <laughs> map we should take of, Mexico 
I haven't seen the bullshit map. There's a bullshit map that goes around online where it's like an, an American flag where like every American um, military base is in the world, mm -hmm. except mm -hmm. it's like clearly bullshit because they have like bases in Iran and stuff. It's like, wait, <laughs> what the fuck? But um, those are a lot, really like, and I, and I they don't to, know about those. <laughs> I used to look at it, I used to look at it uh, the same way for a really long time, but the only country I think that doesn't want American bases in their country is is Cuba. I think, and then everybody else, like we work yeah. closely with the Somalian government to like help them deal with their problem with terrorism, and and like there's no country that like is pissed that America has a military base like in their backyard. Does Haiti have um, any? They could use a few. Uh, I mean, Russia doesn't like it. They keep they, asking, they kind of but we keep saying Ukraine no. <laughs> You're not blaming NATO for the Russian invasion, are you? No, I was saying that that's why Russia justified it. Uh, Is they're saying that we they said Putin said we don't want military bases in our border at Ukraine in Ukraine, and then we're like we're gonna do it. And well, they also Putin was say like, well, fuck they're you. They're liberating Ukraine from the Nazis that run them. Yeah, I'm not they defending Russia. Yeah. I'm saying like that's their rationalization for it. Like Putin did say years ago, like I'm gonna do something if you try I, and do this. My goal I was like, to discredit Russia because I think the reality is nothing. Re what the reality is and what they say are completely unrelated. The real reason they took Ukraine mm. is they wanted the land, they wanted the bread basket, they wanted the warm water course. He was surprisingly was transparent in his in his mm. interview with Tucker Carlson. Like he was very surprisingly transparent where he just pretty much came out and said like, yeah, that we have a historical right to this land. Dude, um, that guy is obsessed with Russian history. Don't oh get into a debate with him about 800s leaders why of that, Russia. I don't know. I, I, would, I, I don't understand. I don't know why that's surprising to anybody. It's it would be surprising to me if Biden couldn't. Well, if younger Biden couldn't regale you about the founding fathers in great length. You know what, what I mean? If we I guess our it's surprising candidates because I list can't. our existing presidents. That would be so funny. It's you can't because it's not like your wheelhouse. It's not the world mm -hmm. that you've existed in for 45 years. For him, for, it'd be like you not knowing about chlorination and versus saltwater pools or some shit. Right, right. Like, 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 like <laughs> you know. Yeah. You pr well, the founding father of the saltwater pool, Ergen Meyer, <laughs> <laughs> born from humble beginnings in East Pennsylvania. Like, like you probably know that kind of shit. Like, well, Putin, he, Putin had a very, um, very interesting take on history at a couple take. points where he where he was talking about Poland like he basically was like well Poland basically forced the Nazis and the and the Russians to come in and carve up the the country and so he's um he's very like openly said that the biggest political catastrophe of the 20th century was the mm. disillusionment of the Soviet, Soviet Union. Union. So like it's pretty mm. clear like what his goals are um I don't know I'm well, he about... lived through their try at democracy and like I didn't. So that's when that's like when I was born. I was like two when that shit was going down or something like that. So it, it it's not something I knew a lot about, but I've been trying to learn more about it. And I saw an interesting thing last night, and they were they were showing the 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 parallels. They're like, this is what was happening in Russia in like I don't know ninety two or ninety three or something. Like it was poverty, and you know Russia always looks kind of shitty to be in because it's all cold, and they don't dress well for it. You would think they'd have like. We all, we all like white people here wear ski gear and it's like, man, I bet that's $800 for this shit he's wearing. But there, they just put on a lot of layers. They got those babushka, babushka looks. Yeah. And, and then they, they're like, they're like, meanwhile, they weren't watching that old Soviet TV anymore because Western media was here now. This, this is what was on their TV. And it's like Pam Anderson, Baywatch, like mm -hmm. every American TV show back then, it was like a slick dude and like a Lamborghini. Yeah. It, the Lamborghini might be able to talk and like some big titty broad. And, yeah, you had, yeah on, a, you had, on, a, on a tropical beach. You had like, Gorbachev in fucking McDonald's commercials. You know, it was just like nothing could have more perfectly signified yeah, the end of uh, the end of com the communist it project was, than Gorbachev in a fucking <laughs> McDonald's commercial. These eggs aren't all of, rotten. Media showing what America is. It was <laughs> eye opening to me to learn that. All the homes and apartments that we show on our television are ginormous. Friends is a great example, right? Yeah, it would have been like a five thousand dollar a month apartment. Yeah, more now. I back guess. then, yeah. yeah, yeah, back then, sure. But but all even like normal shows that aren't meant like a middle class family, Harry and the Hendersons, right? That uh, big Bigfoot t movie. Yeah. If, if you guys saw that, <laughs> yeah, that Love house it. was dope. Um, Home Alone. Home Alone. Right? Kevin Those guys were just flush. Well, it turns out there's a reason for that, and it's that it takes space to film. You want the cameras like 18 feet away from the actors, yeah. So you can't film in a normal sized room in a normal sized kitchen. You have to have a really big one, and it makes America look super wealthy. Yeah, 
Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. You well, don't want to alone, film someone that's also, in a depressing hovel. You know, you obviously wanted to have a big, nice house for home alone, you know, because you're putting the traps and it's the central thing. He never leaves really except for that grocery store trip. And they were supposed to be rich. Like it was clear watching that in the 90s. Like these people he was flying are his family, loaded. including cousins and uncles and aunts to France. Yeah. Like on yeah. a lark. So many people he lost his son. Yeah, that's I was young enough that I didn't pick up on the wealth. One percent is what they were. Yeah, they yeah. were the one percent. It's extreme wealth. I mean, I think the house was eight hundred twenty-five thousand dollars then. You know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah no wonder but, Harry and Marv were scoping it out. Yeah, like that's, yeah. <laughs> that's the place to fucking be. That's yeah. the yeah. Yeah. Want to be in that's, the North Shore of Chicago. I think it was like the Bling was, Ring, but two old dudes instead. Yeah, that was in my top top three movies all time until I was like ten. Like, I watched that movie. shit over and over and over. I wanted my house to get broken into so bad. <laughs> I wanted it so bad. I wanted to be Kevin McAllister. I wanted to be in his position because, you know, we had guns in our house and I knew how to use them. Would you have bitched <laughs> out and called the police? Because no. Kevin could have called no. the police at any time, but he's a warrior. He's no narc. He's no narc. <laughs> yeah. He's no, no. narc. He's like, I I'm going to solve this myself. I'm an American. He's like, hey, grab cab, my... motherfuckers. This yeah. house doesn't call 911. There's a nine-year-old no. in there. There's a nine-year-old <laughs> with marbles and a fucking pet spider. <laughs> that's, all, that's all you need to, to foil their, their sinister a plot. You should, watch, you should watch Fargo season five if you're into Home Alone, because they do kind of like a little... Oh, shit. Uh, I didn't know Fargo's season still making... kept going. Fargo, yeah, Fargo's great. Right, so, yeah, yeah. Dude, There's Fargo... A, the Chris Rock season was good, I thought, too. I loved Real Fargo, good. and then it just fell off my radar. It, they must no, have taken it, a break. Dude, like, the they new go... season. No, no, no. The new season is like arguably the best. It's like it's John Hamm plays this like libertarian sheriff with nipple rings and um. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying it's uh... bad. I'm saying it's infrequent. I feel like I loved Fargo seven years ago, and you're telling me you're on season five now. It's still I like going. Season three, it's, seven years ago. It's still going, and it's still incredible. It's Very genuinely, good. I believe, one of the best shows. Are you guys watching Shogun? By the way, yeah, that's right, cool. started. Bro, uh, so Shogun Hawk is the best show I've watched since Chernobyl. I stand by that. You're right about that. I well, I'd have to think harder on that one because that's been quite a lot of time and some. I haven't watched many shows. Out. Yeah. But um, Shogun is a, a top one percent show. It, it it gets up to there. It's a triple A title if you want to put it that way. It's one of the 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 few um, products that it, it's like, oh man, this is so good. Uh, and I keep saying it, but. I don't see a lot of CGI. I see a lot I have of a real question. They're practical in the woods. Effects. They're they're in they're using practical effects. They're on real boats. It looks like those look like real boats they're on to me. And if they weren't, then they the boats look that, CGI to me. A little bit. Yeah. 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 That's that's good, I don't think the boats are real. Dude, no I, I, know. I thought the boats were real, man. They look no. all right. Not when they're in the like the waves and the storm, but when they're on the boat just sailing around, that ain't real. Maybe the little boats. The, I don't know about the, the big costumes ones. are very good. The footwear, are you telling me that pirate ship is? I'm gonna look this up. It was real in your mind, dude. I think it's that real pirate ship is fucking real. What was your dude, question? Does Shogun on? stay in Japanese the whole time? Because I am reading a book on my television. I've just watched the first episode, and ninety percent of the dialogue it, is it Japanese. oscillates. Like it, it goes back and forth. It, but like it's it, mostly it, Japanese. I, it's I a show about a guy Japanese. who doesn't speak. It's the native a real language. boat, you assholes. No, oh, not the oh, big one. I just Googled it. The, the pirate ship, ship yes. is real. Here, I'll read it. Uh, the Shogun ship is not a real pirate ship, but an authentic replica of an Oriental sailing ship. The ship was originally wow. built for an Arab sheik and is used for whale watching and sightseeing cruises. Okay. That's pretty All cool, right. then. All right. Real boat. You I, guys are think real. You're I bet man. those swords are real. Like when he... He he pulled a sword out. I'm not I'm gonna spoil anything for Woody because he's he's behind, but a guy pulls a sword out and you could see that it, they've used the clay to harden the edge and everything. And I'm like, I bet that's a real fucking sword. Obviously, not when they're waving them around and shit. Those cannons looked right, like the right period. They had those the 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 twisted yeah, like um cannon body. Whatever. To answer Woody's question, there are a lot of subtitles, but there are fewer than there should be because technically, whenever we hear English, which becomes more and more as the English character sort of coalesces with the main group of Japanese characters. Mm. Um, he's speaking Portuguese. He's not speaking English, right. but they make us hear English. Mm. So I, how God. awful would that be if they like, if he then switched to Portuguese and, and put, and put English subtitles there, I'd still watch it. It'd still yeah. be a great show. It's like the movie I'm, Valkyrie when uh, they're supposed to be speaking German the whole time. And uh, th- they kind of did an interesting way of like, um, so like 
the movie opens with Tom Cruise narrating in German and then it kind of slowly like switches to English. So like that was yeah. their way of communicating that. But yeah, I, I really don't mind in subtitles Japanese. in shows. I don't mind them. And here's what it does. It forces you to stay locked in with a show. I, I Phone can't be out. You know, I, I'm paying attention to it 100%. And, and I want to, though, because it is such a high quality show. I won't watch subtitles on garbage. I won't watch some Scandinavian show that's that's that shit. And I've found a lot of them because I like Scandinavian TV. <laughs> but <laughs> but I can't suffer through it if it's a shit product. But this is so good. All these actors are excellent. All those women are beautiful. A lot of them are. There's some nudity. There's some sex. There's some intrigue. Um, I find the the main white guy to be very interesting. The main Japanese guy I'm in love with. I love how like sneaky he is. Um, Lord Toronaga. Lord Toronaga. Yeah. Fucking great. The actor, the actor said he the only way he would agree to come onto the project is if it was like very authentic to Japanese culture. So I'm just yeah. I'm just I'm just trusting that everything I see is uh yeah. But yeah, no, good. like you mentioned like the footwear, just like little kind of details right. where it's like this. You see like, how very... the ladies walk with those little tiny steps? Yeah. <laughs> Everything's very formal, a lot of yeah. uh, pomp and circumstance to everything, but it's also a bit muted, just showing the yep. difference in their culture. I it's shocking the the sort of feudalism the feudalist sort of like honor-based culture and society that they're in how intense it is where the one character uh speaks out of turn they're having a big meeting all the big wigs are talking mm -hmm. but we got our underlings behind us both as an audience but also as a security force like you know and we're all armed and somebody insults one of one of the head guys and that one head guy insults another head guy and you know you can do that we're both the same level but then the guy's underling speaks up. Oh, you have insulted my master. Why? But then he realizes he's yelled like in this very formal setting at someone who's like his boss, his boss, his boss. <laughs> and he's hmm. and and he's like, oh, I am so sorry for my dishonorable honorable conduct. I offer my own life and to end my bloodline. And they're like, I guess that'll do. And then you it moves along. And I was like, wait, he, he's going to kill himself and his kid. Ah, they won't do that. They won't do that. Like I, I thought for sure that the war would yeah, start. Or let whatever. that blow over. Let that blow over. Oh, oh next Thursday, right? That's what we're doing. The, oh, you meant this Thursday? Oh, shit, it's a leap. When did day. Japan <laughs> like stop with the practice of like mainstream seppuku? Like when did I don't? I, I have I, no I mean, idea. World War Two. I think it was a I thing. Think we bombed that out of them. <laughs> <laughs> got, <laughs> got. Wait, I would you know. have been against? U.S. involvement in World War II, uh, uh, Taylor? Oh, yeah. Uh, probably. It, it, it being consistent, like, I probably would have been like, you know, Europe has their own thing. They just had a giant war 20 would, years ago. We're going to get dragged into another one. You wouldn't have liked sending the money to the Brits, probably, because we, we you know, we're sending so, so much money and, 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 and the Soviets as well. We, we, the Soviets would have starved out and died if we hadn't sent them enormous amount yeah. amounts of stockpiles of not uh, not just food but like arms it was a great video i saw the other day if you're a gun guy you'd like cream at this it was <laughs> fucking russians about to go fight the ukrainians and they were in some old salt mine in russia and they cracked open cases of thompson machine guns from world war ii that we had sent them to fight the nazis and they're just like brand new in the case from the 30s manufacturing or 40s maybe and it's like Blah, 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 blah. We will fight the Ukrainians with this, and I was like, "Holy shit, that's so cool!" That's See, so those cool. guns, those guns are so sick. They're I the also coolest looking. Gun out. expert, but none of us are really military experts. I wonder how important the quality of your rifle is in battle. Like it, I, I guess the reliability of it matters. But if I'm at, at, Kyle, you've seen that trench warfare where the guy got like, I'm gonna make it up, nine kills going through the trenches. Yes. Any gun could have done that, right? AK-47, M4 wouldn't have made a difference. He Not a bolt a action. But no, I, I, I liked his sure. rig. So he had a suppressor. That's one mm -hmm. of the reasons they weren't noticing him right away. Uh, mm -hmm. He had a good optic, and he had um, he, he knew how to use that fucking gun. Yeah, you do. Like, like, like. I think he uh, touched his. When that gun starts recoiling, all of a sudden. Chest. I, I mean, there was one guy. The optic. Am I, oh. I might be wrong. I don't know. We're, you know, there's so many videos. It's a war. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I saw this is one the guy where... who was through the trenches, and I think one of the guys he killed was a Russian blogger or vlogger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember yeah. that. Okay, yeah, yeah. That special force is going into a tunnel and like clearing it out at CQB. Um, I don't know. But, uh, look, I've never fought anybody with a fucking right. gun, but but just operating lots of guns, lots of guns malfunction, and that and they malfunction mm. when you're standing very still, holding them tightly, 
if you don't hold a gun tightly, then it can't operate quite the way it should. Okay, like like it, it uh, the, a certain amount of gas is pushing a thing back against a spring that's then coming back forward with the correct amount, and everything's tuned very well. But if the gun's moving backwards when that happens, or if it's go fully auto and jiggling, like they fail all the mm -hmm. time. All, and there's like there's names for all different failures. If you play Tarkov, you know what I'm talking about. That's mm -hmm. kind of close to reality. But so those Thompson guns gun, might hold them back from the 30s. Oh, you wouldn't want to use a Thompson machine gun anyway for like dozens of reasons. That thing's heavy as fuck. It uses 45 ACP. That's heavy as fuck. It uses stick mags that are like 20 or 30 rounds or, or a big drum mag that takes you a year to load. Were they like, good at the time in the 30s? At, at, at what they were using them for, like fighting in the Pacific. I know they did really well with um, just chopping around in the jungle. They, you know, it's close quarters weapon. It's not something you're like seeing the guy on the hilltop with and pecking it. It's when you bump into a guy like what he's talking about. Sure, it'd be good, but you don't want to take it to the battlefield, right? Like yeah. everything has to fit together. And you don't want to be the only guy out there with that 45 caliber World War II machine gun. But don't you want your soldiers? You want to yell them? mag and that guy throw you something that goes in your fucking gun. You know what I mean? They're the best looking gun aesthetically of all time. They're so cool. What is it? Uh, say it so Zach can show us a picture. The Tommy, Tommy gun. gun. Yeah. Tommy gun was just like I shot one at that gun event and it was awesome. It was way heavier than I thought it would be. Like after How shooting it? the uh it was the regular like wooden stock one. I, I don't know the the length of the gun, but it was about um, two feet. Probably about that. Uh it was that, but I was shooting it with a stick mag. And thank you, Zach. Shooting this, I was like, I feel so awesome. This is so cool. <laughs> but then shooting the MP40, I was like, oh. Like this makes so much more sense for actually running around and shooting. Like it, it still looks cool. It, do, it doesn't look as cool, but like the MP40 felt like a half-empty can of soda compared to this thing. When I see this gun, I don't even think war. I think Al Capone, Bonnie Clyde, yeah. stuff yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. And the Highwaymen. Yeah, yeah. I, I watched that. I I was on this motorcycle trip, and um, there's a hotel in Vegas that I was staying at that had Bonnie and Clyde shot up car, and suddenly I became like the deep diving into bonnie and clyde lore i'm looking at all the bullet holes and like what happened to the car dude it's a heck of a story it's pretty cool they uh after they murdered those murdered killed whatever caught them and shot them or whatever uh they like everyone dragged their bodies around they didn't clean that car for ages and you could sit in it people would sit in it and get like brains on their shirt it, like that's the history of that car it was pretty cool Ugh. What Pretty did you guys gruesome. think of, uh, just to switch gears a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. Oppenheimer? I have not yeah. seen it. How much Barbie? You want to talk about that? <laughs> Kyle's seen Oppenheimer. Um, so I have not seen Oppenheimer. I, wow. I mean to see it. I keep meaning to see it. I'm, You're the movie I'm, guy, man. Yeah, Kyle. Yeah. We're all disappointed. Um, no one, you, no one expects me to see it. <laughs> yeah. Did you see Dune? Did you see Dune? I saw the I first one. Yeah, I'm gonna see the second one. The first one was really cool. I saw okay. it years ago, and then I rewatched it on Hulu, and I was like, "All right, this is pretty sweet. I'm, I'm gonna okay. go see the second one." The second one is, oh, I don't, I don't even know how to even it's better. Like, it, to me, Did they get their like, shit together because the first me, one sucked dick like a whore, <laughs> bro. Uh, to me, it's like good. it's like Empire Strikes Back, Two Towers, Dune Two. It's like for me, it's like that level that's it's it's a grand epic um I'm very it's like excited about it yeah. i loved the first one i like the original i'm one of those people the i'm Patrick one of the I I've never seen it. It um sucked. so, so it, it follows good. it follows the okay so so here's when i say something's good what, what i need to specify is like there's different kinds of good right like it's like saying like hey is that food good yeah it's good what did you mean by that you know like cheese pizza is good but so is filet mignon um, and this, uh, the old one is cheese pizza, you know, it's cheese pizza and it's a good laugh and it follows the exact same plot line. Cause they're both based mm -hmm. on the same book and watching, wa watching them back to back. You'd want to watch the good one first, the new one, but it's hilarious to see their versions of these characters. The main bad guy though is, is way more evil, way more evil. Unless in the second Dune, the, the new one, they're going to reveal some more stuff. Cause in the original, he's got yeah. this bim boy sex slave. Yeah. First of all, he's <laughs> disgusting. He's floating around using a hover pack with his nipples and titties out. And he's like yeah, pustules all over. Very and, disrespectful. and he has slaves all around him, like med slaves who are using syringes to pull the pus out of his pustules that are in his face. They're like drawing it out and like keeping it. And he has all these wires and hoses and they're in like an ooze factory or some shit anyway. It's disgusting everywhere. But then in walks his like femboy sex slave. 
and he walks over to him and he's like greasy. He looks like he took, he looks like he ate fried chicken and then rubbed his hands all over his face. Mm. And he's sort of like licking his lips while he like feels this femboy up and the femboy is not into it. And yeah. then at some point he reaches to his chest and he pulls out a plug that's kind of like a butt plug, but it's in his heart. It was all that keeps him alive. Like it's surgically implanted so that at, a, at will he can just kill him by pulling this thing out. And the guy just yeah. dies. Well, the Harkonnens in the book, uh, in the books are comically evil. So yeah, they, he had like sex slaves in the books and like- and Even it's, better is the cat. Do you know about the cat milk? He's and drinking cat milk. He poisons this guy. He, they it, poison this guy. And they're like, the poison that we've given you, you'll, you'll die a horrific death um, within in the, you know, in so the many book hours. In the or in the movie? In the movie. Okay. And they're, they're, they're like, we, we poisoned you. You're going to die. There's only one cure, and then they 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 gotta they bring in this disgusting hairless cat with titties, and they're like, you gotta milk this cat every day, <laughs> and, and drink the milk, and that will keep you alive. But if you wow. ever take a day off from milking this fucking cat and drinking its titty milk, you yeah. die. <laughs> and what, what happens die. when you need another cat? What's really wild is uh, <laughs> there are, get one cat. The there's <laughs> like a lot of um, with the egg at school. <laughs> There's a lot of discourse right now where like like a lot of times when when a big movie comes out there's all, like a lot of like really stupid discourse online about it mm. and a stupid discourse about Dune right now is there are people that are they they think that the fremen are meant to represent Palestinians and so they're <laughs> like well, but if you know where the story of Dune is going that is not that is not that Do it they does know not, it's a book it's just, written in the 50s it does not reflect well on, uh, well, pal I mean, you know, Palestinians were, were a thing in the fifties, but like he was, Frank Herbert was, wrote this book to warn against like charismatic leaders. He said like, for example, Frank Herbert was like, he was like a libertarian. He, he was like a libertarian, like climate advocate. So you could be that in the seventies. It was kind of like a hippie thing. Um, no. but he said one time that he thought the most dangerous politician of the 20th century was Jack Kennedy was John F. Kennedy. As everybody was just like so impressed by him, and they just kind of like went along, and then yeah. and then that led to Vietnam. But he wrote the, so. yeah. the he wrote the Dune st stuff specifically, like he had Mao and Stalin in mind when it came to Paul. And uh, but yeah, so like yeah, there's just a bunch of stupid discourse about that movie right now. They're not just they can't just enjoy the movie. Is that what you're saying? They got to try and launder their own like pet projects through the movie. They can't just be like, this is cool. Well, is, well, you know, the, the same thing with, now with Star Wars, that's the U.S. and Vietnam. That, that, that's, that, the U.S. is the evil empire and, the, you know, Luke Skywalker and the boys, they're, they're the Vietnamese. And maybe the fucking Buddhist monk burned himself alive as the Jedi, I don't know. But, but, but that's what was going on that, then. Well, the, he the, actually the didn't, he didn't, he didn't self-immolate in protest of the war. Did you know that? Uh, he was protesting actually something else at he the time. He was protesting that he got caught releasing documents and he, uh, he was like, uh, while I burn myself to avoid Wait. these document charges, I think really? I'll yell free Palestine. Oh, yeah. that yeah. guy. Wait, he was. No, he's talking Wait, about the guy who just immolated about the other guy, the, the guy from six. Well, I was no, no, originally talking about Buddhist monks in Vietnam, but, but yeah. there was that guy, that Air Force guy who self immolated like Dude. a week or two ago. And they were celebrating him. Like there were like this like bunch of like going back to TikTok or TikTok, a bunch of like TikTok zoomers were like lionizing this guy. And there yeah. was this whole thing where H3H3 H3 was uh he was saying like um I don't think it's good to glamorize suicide, which I think is the correct take. Um and yeah. uh I didn't uh, think of it from the suicide thing because it's a different kind of suicide. And like, like I think suicide when you're looking for a way out or whatever, you really need to like explore some other fucking options. It's an it's an awful thing. However, suicide for an ideal is a different thing, dude. Though when you look through no, his old Reddit, know. when you look through his old Reddit post, this dude was fully radicalized, like full. <laughs> no radicalized. shit. Um, yeah, he burned himself alive. <laughs> there's a hot take. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, was, well, he was radical. I would say well, I'm gonna go so far as to say too. I got my hot take joke. All right, man. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's a, maybe it's a bit it's redundant. To tonight. That. But yeah. he was no, like, I, he was just full on. Like, I guess it's just there's a lot of people where the whole their whole political philosophy is centered on America bad, and then everything springs from that. And so you just become mm -hmm. fully oh, indoctrinated. The was a hoax, Hutch. What's up? The Reddit thing, the Reddit thing is. 
Did you read it? Shortly following there was, okay, no, no, no. So there was one specific post that that was doctored, but you can't hit you, like you can go okay. to like archived. Um, uh, they they sure. deleted his account, so you can't go to Reddit itself to see it. But there's an ar archived version of his logs, and you can just read everything that he was typing. And it was just um, it was apparent that he was just fully um, okay. I th like I think he sell I think he tacitly endorsed October seventh, for example. Oh, yeah, a lot of people did, say, I yeah. did see that. Yeah, a right. lot of people like at, just straight up outwardly did it on Twitter. It was funny to see like random rappers get in trouble. <laughs> rappers, yeah. are, rappers, politics is one of my new favorite things because it's a lot more right wing and radical than you'd ever think. Like uh -huh. I, I feel it's right lady wing. Rap, lady rappers are mm -hmm. super radical. Um, they, they're 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 Bushnell celebrating October seventh and stuff like that. Um, the 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 male rappers. A lot of those dudes are right wing. A lot of those guys are Trump guys. That's true. That's mm -hmm. true. Yeah. But but the, but there's a lot of like um, there's a, there's obviously a lot of like free free Palestine stuff with like younger artists right now. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah I think, I think, like it's so it's so tough because it's like obviously I think most people I would assume all of you guys believe that the Palestinians deserve their own state and and autonomy and dignity and all that, but. Sure. I I don't you know when I get up to the line of like Hamas good that's where I I'm like mm. no I'm not I'm not with you on that one. Well, that's um, yeah. I yeah. mean we've got so much land in the Midwest. I was thinking Taylor that we could get all them Palestinians and just give them like Wyoming. Like well, no. we're not doing shit up there. North Dakota. Get to the flyover states. It is we, not. We even our use those. Problem. We'll flip a coin. We'll give them one of the Dakotas. Dude, problem. Do you know what a resource the Palestinian people could be? Look, now, now you don't realize this, Taylor, but first world nations are clamoring to get first pick at the Palestinian <laughs> people. Mm -hmm. I, 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 there's a lottery system right now, yeah. and it a lucky few first nations are going to get, you know, they're, they're <laughs> a lucky few. Taylor, yeah, it's I been know. said that if you take all the Hamas and put them in St. Louis, that the murder rate will go down. I don't know. Uh, I am. We can try it. <laughs> did, you guys that, uh, did you guys see that? Did you guys see that this this conflict and the discourse around it, um, like ended the H three Hassan? Uh, I I really uh, don't know should... anything about those guys. You're not plugged into them at all. Not not trying to stay away did, from that sort back, of thing. What it, happened? They, were they friends and now they're not, or is the well? They did or... a they did a podcast together for I want to say like two years. Uh, mm -hmm. It's called the Leftovers, and um, it was a really interesting cultural kind of like online cultural moment to watch that friendship sort of disintegrate over time because it started mm -hmm. to fray during like a conversation about um, like capitalism versus communism stuff. Mm -hmm. And what had happened was like H3 had, whether intentionally or unintentionally cultivated through his partnership with Hassan, cultivated like a really left-wing audience, like a hammer and sickle, mm -hmm. like we need to d like destroy capital kind of like yeah. audience. And uh, like they it. started to like have this like disagreement where Ethan was like willing to say, you know, there's plenty of flaws with capitalism. There's a lot of gaps. There's a lot of poverty, you know, but I'm, but I just have, I'm just not with you with the whole like Chinese kind of stuff, like, or, or like full on hammer and sickle stuff. And then like mm -hmm. a few months later, it culminated this, this fracture of their uh, friendship with the Palestinian uh, Israeli uh, conflict. Cause Ethan is a dual citizen. Like he has, he has citizenship in Israel. He has family in Israel. His, his and so girl he was, is Israeli, right? Or, yeah, or is yeah, also yeah. as dual yeah, yeah 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 and so a lot a lot of ethan's audience were i mean some of them were just full-on like like actually celebrating like october 7th you know like uh mm. and so uh like ethan was was uh he was like saying like look i'm willing to tell you like what the israelis have been doing to palestinians for decades is wrong and fuck netanyahu and fuck the Likud party and fuck you know the israeli palestinian uh, the treatment of palestinians but Hamas, like what they did is fucking not good. And then like a bunch of the audience were calling him like a racist, genocidal, apartheid supporter. <laughs> and uh dude, yeah, oh, they call was... us that all the time. That they uh -huh. like that's they don't mean yeah. it. That just means yeah. hello in online talk. Yeah, yeah. that's just that's howdy. How they, that's how they <laughs> think. It, 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 wasn't, it, it was an interesting kind of like it was an interesting moment because it's just yeah, like, for him to realize that that's the yeah, that, that that's that's pretty awkward. So There's a big schism in their, both of their audiences. They don't, they don't do the they don't do the podcast anymore, and it was just it was just too much. Like there oh, was damn. like a, an open yeah. discussion had a limit for them. Yeah, and that was a pretty you know pretty pretty big podcast, you know. So to like walk away from that was like pretty significant. You but think the was, audience divided them mostly? Yeah. Well, 
I mean, it was the conflict and the audience. There's this thing called audience yeah. capture. Are you guys familiar with the concept of audience capture? It's like, no. so if you're, if you're like a, a, an influencer person and you cover politics or you cover cultural stuff mm -hmm. and you end up cultivating an audience over mm -hmm. time, like you guys have cultivated kind of like a slightly more right wing audience, I would say. Right. And, uh, but, yeah. and like, um, but like what happens with a lot of creators is they start to notice like, oh, well, I'll get, you know, you either consciously or unconsciously know, like I'm going to get more engagement if I frame certain things this way or that way. And so it, there ends up being this sort of like extremism pipeline that happens. And then it gets to a point where the creator, they're not really, they're not really being authentic with their thoughts. They're just, they're relaying what they think their audience is going to want to hear. So, yeah. yeah. You know, Zach like, phrased it yeah. really well. I, I, you probably, let me read it because it's interesting. Audience capture is a self-reinforcing feedback loop that involves telling one's audience what they want to hear and getting rewarded for it. Like, yeah, oh, and then they have to go it. further and further. So they're like, oh, when I'm talking about how awesome Stalin was, I get lots of likes and comments. We'll see and people easy calling to get around me that, comrade. We just, we just always, one of us has to disagree so that, so that we're always on both sides. We literally mm -hmm. are. It's very rarely that Typically. all three of us are yeah. like, well, it, and if it, we all agree, be, someone will jump on the other side. Yeah, and then there'll be, all, <laughs> if we all agree, those. there is at least a dissenting opinion from somebody. They're like, "Look, all right, I'll co-sign that." Yeah, but but here's the thing about that. You need you know, have a little. Here's what, a little bit, you need not, Yeah, it's not, not interesting, so much interesting politics, to listen. But here's where I think our show does it a lot in like the meanness, right? So this is a show where we laugh at people fighting cars and think it's hilarious at that mismatch, and. Then the audience turns that same spirit on us, and it's like, well, don't be surprised, fucknard. Yeah, if we got hit in a parking lot, they, they they would have no sympathy. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but that's because they're dumb. Because I don't think it's funny when people get hit by cars. I think it's funny when fat black women get mad at each other. One of them gets behind the wheel of her intrepid, and the other one still <laughs> continues to show the same amount of gusto in the physical altercation, despite yeah. the fact that said intrepid is 4,200 pounds of killing machines. Those women are, are like 0 and 31 against the intrepid in all the videos. Oh, and 31. Kyle's me. <laughs> losing streak. I don't think they're going to turn the franchise around. The intrepid is, I have intrepid seen is Brady. so many ladies get ran down by Chrysler 300s that, and it still tickles me to death. I love it because not, but, but I don't want to see just some poor pedestrian get, get hit. Like that thing in Nice, France, when that terrorist attack and people got ran over, that's not yeah. funny. That's horrific. Hmm. But, if you're like, you're not going to talk to me that way, what you going to do? Run me. And they're like, <laughs> right, right. Oh, <laughs> did you get in your car? Well, I took off my high heel shoe. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> That's an actual video. I'm familiar with this <laughs> Oh, but you haven't what? seen this? Oh, they, no. Basically, two people are in a conflict. Someone gets in a car, and the other person, rather than like running or taking cover behind a light pole, so is like, I'm not afraid of your car. And, yeah. and I, I have a theory, like Kyle mentioned the race thing, but I think it's the sex thing. I think that sometimes women feel like uh, they're not going to get hit because it doesn't happen to them very much. You know, the, the punch mm -hmm. in the mouth is a very extreme, uncommon route to take for girls. Yeah. So they I don't get hit in the mouth in 10 minutes. I go out there and say the wrong shit. I promise it, you. I go to Circle I K. So. It'll go down. <laughs> it could happen with your friend. Like if you mouth off the Scott enough, then, you know, it might go that way. Can't I don't say know. the wrong thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, man, your dog's a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> how but, you uh, guys? Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead. You're gonna take over. Yeah, go for it. Well, no, I was just gonna ask you guys, like, how? Because you guys don't seem to have gone down the audience capture route. Like, you seem to have, like, I feel like I'm talking to the same person I talked to like eight years ago. Like, how have you guys avoided the trappings of that? Do you just not? Um, I'm gonna guess that you don't look at like the comments Anything. or your replies very often. Very no, rarely like, do like, I look at any our comments. Main, yeah. The only way I interact with fans is if they um and, and it's <laughs> is if they join our di our uh, our Patreon and they give us fifty dollars a month and then they get they join our Discord and then I literally game with them all night and like <laughs> shoot the shit with them and the group of guys in there are awesome like like mm -hmm. I so mm -hmm. um they'll I'll, I'll sort of lean on them for like if they thought a show was good or not um and sycophants that they are they love everyone they love everyone <laughs> they've never had a complaint and they better not because i'll say <laughs> <'Cause Kyle, laughs> they know i will uh, yeah. i'm liberal with the band hammer no yeah, like, but, but I, I really... it's the opposite though like like i feel like they'll be like what happened there and i'm like look we didn't 
we didn't book that guy. I don't know who booked that guy. We he didn't know he was going to have a fried brain from the mushrooms. We didn't know. We just yeah. had him on. Yeah, I like that guy. Did Someone you have somebody come on that, that was yeah. tripping balls? Yeah, he wasn't at the yeah. time, but he had some some. We had a guest. Or he probably was. I'm so nice. So this guy <laughs> touted himself as some sort of a shaman per se, and and basically his story was that he had had this awful experience where his wife, who was pregnant with his unborn child, died in a car accident that he caused. And it ruined him to the extent where he so he sought out psychedelics, um, more and more potent doses of them to sort of get over that trauma. And my take is that while doing that, he fried his brain. And so then he's got this new wife and he's told us, he told us that he's like, so at this point in my life, my wife was saying, I'm going to murder the children. I'm going to take the gun. I have the gun and I'm going to murder the children. So... Then I went on one of my retreats to the Dominican Republic and did mushrooms with some guys. And when we got back, I talked to her and I had a whole new frame of mind. <laughs> I'm I'm paraphrasing, but this it was basically it. that. <laughs> and so and and so I'm like I'm doing this when he's telling. I'm like, <laughs> whoa, your wife said she was going to murder the children, and she had the means, which means she's thought about this a good bit, mm -hmm. went and gotten the gun. She has the gun yeah. and you went to another country to do drugs. I love drugs <laughs> and travel's <laughs> fun, but, and I hate kids, but my take is that you're a piece of shit, dude. How do you leave your kids behind with a murderer? Per, who, mm -hmm. Who's telling like, 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 are you insane? I didn't go you that just, hard, hard. You just went I there. Went, yeah. I went a little bit softer than that. And it devolved quickly. Um, mm -hmm. I, I may have been rude to him. You know, I, I smoke every show and I don't it really remember fun. these things. Too I well, enjoyed it, but I think I was pretty, pretty mean to him. And he yeah. one in every 30, 50 guests, Kyle will decide I have had enough of this guy. I'm not interested in his return. So I'm going to lay it down. And this <laughs> yeah. is Sometimes they'll just be fucking liars. Like there's one guy. And look, I hate a fake badass. I'm not a badass. Mm. I don't want to get in a fight. I, I'm not good at it. I wouldn't be good at it if I tried. I'm not going to pretend like I like I like I will be or, or, or want to be. rip as fuck or did that go? Yeah, I beat the shit out of you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'd smoke you. See, now you see like a... up. you can't I'll just keep you back. I got the long arms. So he's got reach. Uh, I yeah. snap yeah. those in half yeah. with my jujitsu training. Yeah. Yeah. You know how much I'm UFC I watch? Me. I'm a real tough guy. I watch the UFC. I mean, yeah. <laughs> there are guys who are like what I'm like pretending to be right there. There's douchebags. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but we had a guy on who was like tout. I can't remember what kind of badass or he was claiming he'd done, but he was he was like, Yeah, my my stepdad stabbed me. And and I was like, Oh, you stabbed me. And I ran away off into the woods, sewed it up myself. And I, I think I just went, No, you didn't. It was like that, <laughs> it was like in uh um Billy Madison when uh when he's like, Me and her got it on, and Adam said he's like, No, you <laughs> yeah, didn't. Yeah. yeah, but this guy I knew, him and her did the thing. He's like, No, they didn't. Yeah, but you can imagine what it'd be like if they did. Huh? <laughs> yeah. uh, that, That's a solid guy, thirty year reference right there. Yeah. Or what twenty five year it. reference? Yeah. Eight like, percent of our audience, according to my made up statistics, got that one. I've seen that um, movie. Yeah, it's a great movie. He's, so so he's claiming that he got stabbed and that he stitched himself. And I'm like, No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Show me the scar. Show me. Show me, bro. Show me where you got stabbed with a kitchen knife and pulled it out of your body and sewed it up yourself because you fucking didn't. You fucking didn't. Yeah. <laughs> And that was that was absurd, but yeah, the the mushroom one that's happened. Kyle will do that from time to time. But as far as like the audience uh, retainer or whatever that was called, audience training, audience capture, like, capture, audience capture. Yeah, like it was probably five six years ago now, and it was actually a a Sam Hyde clip that I saw that like changed my perspective on it because I used to like read comments a lot more forums all that, and I saw a video from him that was like him talking about that and obviously he's a big figure a lot of people talking about him and he was like a lot of everyone knows how negative it is and bad for your psyche to like read bad things about yourself online if you're a content guy like that's negative but he also made the point of like it's also almost as sinister and bad to read positive things about yourself like the whole idea of like sitting there reading about yourself is going to breed in you like a sort of unintended narcissism in one yep. way or the other that is going to change you yeah. as a person. And by the same rationale, by the same rationale, by the same rationale that you would say, don't read that negative stuff. They don't know you. Don't read that positive stuff. They don't know exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah. Dude. 
they don't know how full of shit you were when you said that thing or or that you were being charitable just because you felt like you had to or like they don't know the pressures that you're under or like or, or any of that stuff well, so like it's like it, a, none it's of it's like a good. it's like a house of cards so like I heavily identify with with that like early on in in the in my like online career dude I was showered with fucking attention and praise nonstop mm -hmm. and I fucking love you. I fucking bought into it you know and I'm like reading every comment and um and it didn't really it really didn't take long for me to realize like this is not like a foundation like yeah. your fa your foundation needs to be like the relationships that you have with people in your life you like, could have done live how, event shows like like chats with hutch show up and yeah. pay ten dollars to uh, at this club in la yeah. and people would have yeah. shown up like yeah uh, and, and it was like super intoxicating in the beginning but it really it really was like a year two years where it was like it just kind of just fell apart like i need more than that and so i i started you know that's wait, why i kind of disappeared turn negative on you hutch? Mm -hmm. like is that how you remember it it just it just wasn't the thing like i i remember getting like really depressed towards the end of machinima and it just wasn't it was no longer work it was like a drug to stop working it was like mm, okay. I, and i and i was in a position where i was like okay well you know i have this hosting gig and i still have this like good job and now they're paying me a lot better and, but i'm just like miserable and yeah. and it, it just and and that became like an inception idea where it just it just kind of went down from there and so i kind of had to disconnect for like six months and you know and and it's That's like good. ebb and it's like an ebb and flow like so like i came back and then i did some crazy shit like got engaged after like a week of <laughs> reconnecting with someone how'd that go so uh, not great not great i would not i would not recommend it personally what, good um, friend of the show just broke up with his fiance everybody give him a little let's go let's go bobbity let's go <laughs> let's go, <laughs> let's go. He he broke up with his dude, I don't, when a dude I don't. all of us please continue i'm sorry oh no 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 you, you go ahead when a dude starts talking about his fiance, and you can tell it's his first time saying that word, and it's sickening. I, I fucking get grossed out hearing that shit. And I start plotting. I start plotting. I'm like, all right, we got to get this guy into a game. Yeah. So I got him to Tarkov. Now he's away from her, all right? A little, little rift has been created. By, oh. All right, yep. so now I got him in Tarkov. He's addicted to it. He's playing like eight, ten hours a day. Who's he not talking to? The fiance. All of a sudden, it's the girlfriend. All of a sudden, it's the girlfriend. And uh, then, oh, we got to play some more Tarkov, man. Can you get on tonight? Yeah, I guess I can. Oh, now it's the ex girlfriend. Now he's moving back across the country yeah. to the Eastern Seaboard. Let's and go. Now it's the Florida plaintiff. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're, not, you're not playing nine hours nine hours of tarkov a day if your relationship is is going well so right. i'm sure you know i'm sure you maybe yeah. you were the catalyst but there was probably some fuck oh, anyways i've been with my right. fiance for nine years now so like we're good nice. yeah That's great. yeah but i've never heard you say that word before so i know that it is good we've been engaged for like three years we're not really like <laughs> we're not really no, like, you're not the day. Day. yeah you're not doing the um, speed run thing here no, no, no. Uh, the opposite. So, like, my relationship is super grounded now. Like, my life is pretty peaceful. But for a while there, I I was like subconsciously seeking out chaos. Like, I would just go through these cycles where I would get bored, I would get restless, and then there was just something about that cycle of dysfunction and chaos that I was attracted to. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, it wasn't until I got a I don't know if I told you guys this, but I got a bi bipolar diagnosis last year. And all mm -hmm. of a sudden, everything made sense. I was like, oh. So what's bipolar? <laughs> it's like, like, can you explain that to me in the audience? I've heard it before, but I don't feel like I really know. Well, there's a, so there's like a pop media sort of like idea of what bipolar is, which is just rapidly cycling mm -hmm. between euphoria and mania and depression, uh, which that is a thing. It's just very rare. That's, they call that rapid cycling bipolar or maybe type three, I think. Um, but type type two is what I have, and it's mostly on the low side. So you spend most of the time in the depression, but then you have these periods of what they call hypomania instead of mania. So full on mania is like you stay up for three, four, five days at a time. You start hallucinating. Like lots of times, there's delusions of grandeur. They literally think they're Jesus Christ, and mm -hmm. um, so I, it wasn't it that for me. I, um, I've uh, I I only date women who have uh, bipolar. <laughs> and, are you sure uh, it's not uh, uh, borderline? Yeah, no BPD, Kyle. Come on, they're the um, ones who worship. Well, it. there's an. I, I'm not. I'm not allowed to talk to her doctors anymore. They're <laughs> court order. But so I'm not quite sure. Um, yeah. But but my experience has always been that, ah, man, it was almost like split personalities. Like there are two versions of those people when it's extreme, and and, and one of them is 
happy go lucky and the other is like the world's tumbling down at the slightest thing um or it could be angry like one could be very disagreeable and hard sometimes it could be very disagreeable and hard to get along with other times just the opposite and, and it'd be like man are you i think norm a lot of people would just be like yeah he's having a he's having a bad day that's 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 just how he is. It's like, no, he's not having a bad day. He's having a fucking episode. He's unmedicated. <laughs> he's yeah. unmedicated. Yeah. And he has shifted all the way to the right. And he's being very disagreeable because he's a different person with different chemistry in his brain right now than he normally is. Yeah. You take anything forward, Hutch? I do. Yeah. I, well, I stopped. Well, I got clean. So I stopped drinking and smoking weed. Um, and then I, I got on medication. And dude, I, I, I'm not, I'm not a, this is psychiatrist, so I can't give anybody like medication um, advice. This is my little disclaimer there, but I got on a I got on a medication and basically it started working for me like right away. The number one thing that it helped me do is get eight hours of sleep every night. So like I was really struggling with sleep. So like sometimes I would only get like four or five hours of sleep a night, and you do that for months and it's you really unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I take what the medication that I take. It's like an hour, hour and a half later. I'm fighting to keep my eyes open so I can manually regulate my sleep. And it sort of, it just keeps me at a baseline and it's just been, it's been huge for me. Like they used to, they used to prescribe me antidepressants, SSRIs, um, before they had a diagnosis, but that's not, that's not typically what you do with bipolar. Cause you can actually induce mania with mm -hmm. SSRIs with the way that serotonin works in our brains. Um, so I had really negative experiences with like Paxil and Prozac and, um, yeah. But this this medication that I'm on now, I pretty much experienced significant relief like right away. Um, the name of the drug is uh fuck, what's it called? Seroquel. Can, it's a, I think first it's a, letter in S. Uh, Seroquel. Seroquel, yeah. It's S E R O Q E uh, U E L. Um, but obviously, it's not going to work for everybody. I'm not. If you're listening to this and you're going through a rough time, I'm not saying like, "Hey, you should go." Obviously, seek ask out. your doctor about it. Don't just get. Yeah, it makes birth control less it. effective. Be careful. Uh, uh, there, uh, I'm not on birth control. So. <laughs> Were there any any negative effects you dealt with, like initially or at you, all, or pretty? It, it makes you a little groggy in the morning. So sometimes, like, I get up really early sometimes because I'll cover like congressional hearings, and it's like DC time, so I got to wake up at like five. Mm. Um, and so sometimes those mornings are a little rough because it's like hard to. Yeah, you're still but, so that's like the big one. So like it'll, you know, yeah, it'll make you groggy in the morning, but it stimulates your appetite. So I was like really slender for a really long time. I had a problem with appetite and this makes me eat like tons of calories. And so I'm at a pretty healthy weight and it, dude, it totally changed my whole life. And like I, now I'm, I'm, I'm much more careful about how, tying, tying it back to what we were talking about before. I'm just much more careful about like how I do online stuff. Like some days mm -hmm. I have bad days and I'm on Twitter just way too long. But mm. like I keep my phone in this room now. So like when I lay down to go to bed at night, it's like not the first thing I do when I wake up is grab my phone and start scrolling. And yeah, um, so it's like a combination of things. It's like lifestyle changes and then and then uh, diet and then uh, medication. Is, gotta and keep my, my phone close. What I gotta hear those um, amber alerts. Gotta know if they're on, <laughs> if they're on, if they're on your tail. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That, Has anyone ever gotten one of those and like ran outside and like looked around and? Oh, you know, like, I, first thing I do is I, I like Toyota Corolla. Where? Yeah, <laughs> I sprint to my neighbor's house and be like, "Did you guys see? Have this? you seen? Yeah, this fucking yeah, one Civic. time, Hutch. One time, <laughs> they they were looking for like a burgundy Corolla or something, and uh, they said there was like a car seat in the back. And I'm driving. By the way, I'm towing another car in a Toyota Tacoma. It's barely capable of towing this like <laughs> off-road vehicle in the back. It's for like <laughs> overrated for it. Anyway, and this burgundy Corolla comes zipping by me at like oh, 80 shit. miles an hour. Can't and I'm this. like, well, lock and load, Batman. Here we go. So, so <laughs> I start towing at like 90 <laughs> miles an hour. I am flooring this car in like fourth, third gear for as long as I until I finally catch up to it. And it, well, of course, it wasn't it. But yeah, that, that was that's my He's one like, who the Amber fuck is that's the biggest gear. feeding ticket of my life. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand. I wonder, so I wonder if you would have gotten off. Of <laughs> I wonder if you would have gotten off. Like if you got pulled over, you were like, bro, there's an Amber Alert. It was fucking right. Right, there's a burgundy thing, and yeah, yeah. I was oh, trying to help. I'm thought, trying to be like a smart just version a of me would screenshot Dude, it. And like, I saw a video happen. the other it's Go similar ahead. thing, you know, when you've got an emergency, but you're running from the cops. Um, I saw a guy, he's running from the cops for blocks and blocks and blocks, pulls into the vet's office, <laughs> jumps out with like a carrier, and runs to the front door where they tase him. 
the vets come out, grab his cat out of the carrier and take it inside and save it. <laughs> <laughs> it was like he gave it all for that little fucking cat. The cat was having convulsions or something, having seizures, and, oh. uh, and he wouldn't stop for the and cops. That cat's not even going to appreciate it. Not at all. They're awful. It, <laughs> it, eat so his lips cat. right off if that guy uh, died in his sleep or something like that. I don't, I don't, I don't like that about animals. Any animal that would eat you right away, I, I just think less of. It's like something about. Well, then you're that pretty much particular. siloed into dogs because that's yeah. about the only one that yeah. wouldn't eat you pretty quickly afterward. Reptile, get cat, real. I think my cat would wait a few days. I think they would hold out. If I died in my living room, there's no fucking way my fish would get get me. No, yeah, they die really. on their own. Looking, yes, they would. <laughs> they, it, only licking the failure lips, of size. Licking, yeah. licking their lips, thinking about the <laughs> yeah. meal that they can't have. Mm-hmm. Like, um, like if a cat were the size, if a house cat were the size of a tiger, like no one would be comfortable being around them. That, that they have enormous that, cats. They, they have, have that. that. They're called they tigers. <laughs> yeah, then you, you would want you want to be on a tiger. It'll fuck you up. <laughs> no, have you seen that video of like the Sri Lankan guy who jumps in the enclosure and is like, uh, uh, and then the the tiger just boom, like pats at him a little bit to like d- kind of identify what's going on. And I've then never touched a person one, before. One oh, quick you're bite. Weak as shit. Yeah, one quick bite on the back of the neck, and then he carries him away like he's a just a bag of oranges. Nothing, no weight to him. It's yeah. crazy. It was a lion or a tiger? A tiger. tiger. Yeah, oh. he, this guy apparently jumped into the enclosure, which is a horrifying suicide, way to, to end your life. I was in my 20s when I realized tigers were bigger than lions. That's they're they're pretty big. Late. Ligers are the biggest, right? When they I, mix I, them together? Unless well, you've seen some right. of... I think it's true. It, they absolutely are. Ligers are the yeah, largest. Ligers right. are bigger than tigers and lions. It takes yeah, the power they're, of they're, both. They're, combines them. Captain yeah, Planet it, it, it has the bigger frame <laughs> and longer body of a of a of a tiger, but it has that the heavy setness of the lion. It, they're very. They can get really fat. If you remember the doc, the thing we watched with the that Doc Ellis guy or whatever, the one who had the um in Tiger King, yeah. he had he had the bitches uh, and the elephant mm-hmm. and everything. I think he had a liger maybe. Um, hmm. But yeah, the liger's the biggest animal. What's your favorite yeah. animal? Mine's the liger. Did Tiger King ever get his pardon? I know he was trying to get a pardon from Trump. Nah, Trump's <laughs> not giving those out. He's not no. giving. Them he out. gives them out. I don't think not anybody to, is not has to him as a murderers though. <laughs> I think yeah. he ran. I think he is he running again this year. I think he's running from prison to be president. Tiger yeah, King is started the trend. He's got my vote. I'm down. Let's see what happens. Add a little bit of fun, a little injection of mirth. Into, you know, you know I think his know. idea of border security might be fucking cool. Tigers. <laughs> yeah. It might not be too dissimilar from Trump's because Trump allegedly gonna... proposed a, a moat with um, alligators. Or, or, or He's on the, the right like. track. If they yeah, put it yeah. on the ballot, who here would not vote yes on Proposition A, alligator moat for the southern border? <laughs> I'm in. I'm mailing in. I'm mailing in hundreds of fake ballots. <laughs> with, with, yes. <laughs> with, yes, policy policy wise, I don't. Yeah, I would. I would I, be opposed. Unfortunately, I, 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 think. I would be for it just to see the spectacle. And look, if you're stupid <laughs> enough to to try to cross the Rio Grande after we stock that bitch with gators, then we don't want you here. You can't contribute to this economy. You're just, think the, you, just think of the maintenance. Oh, yeah. Just think of the maintenance the for this. Strongest and bravest, Kyle. You're, you're exactly. getting the cream of the crop. It's if we really, see one big cholo out Paradox there culture. with a with a gator in a headlock, like mm-hmm. plucking its eyes out, and then he turns to the other one and like stabs it with one of those little Mexican knives they have, then mm-hmm. the, yeah, get him over here. We we, we can we, we can, can have two him. routes into the country, right? You either fight the alligators or you pass some sort of academic test. But either way, border security. There's also Actually, Kyle, this is a terrible idea. It's going to only let in the most capable, dangerous people on Earth who can you make got, it. You got to say military the age. But, but you got to like say military age. Military age is a fucking code word I hear so often. <laughs> uh, you don't it's, like that it's, one? It's military mm-hmm. age, and then and now they're talking about cannibals because I guess there's a, like an actual cannibal named Barbecue. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. we're talking about, about, about cannibalism week. because there are people eating each other in Haiti. Yeah, is it Haiti? That's who yeah. Barbecue yeah. is. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's why we need a strong southern border. Keep those Haitian barbecues out. Yeah, what, you know, are you, what are you doing? Walking to America, dude. Somehow? If you search Haitian barbecue on the wrong website, you do not find food. Well, you do, but mm. but it'll make you sick. It'll give you that do brainworm we, disease. Do we, we have any? Uh, do we have any election predictions here? What do you guys think? Oh, we've got Texas bet. is going blue. I think they both have a bet. Uh, Texas got, is going blue. Yeah, listen to me. Hear it out. Hold on. Let me look Corn at the polls. Yeah. Been banned in Texas now. 
The Republicans, the Republicans have banned Pornhub out of Texas and my own state of North Carolina, and I don't know how many more. I think this is the true third rail of politics, that when Republicans start fucking with the sperm bank, they're going to start losing votes. I don't think th- I got know what that's going to do. Taylor's falling Texas right into it. People that. in public will say, nah, it's At okay to ban will. porn. It might be good for America. But in private, they pull that lever for the Democrats. I've, no, I've got Texas, some bad Texas news. birth rate skyrocketing. No abortion, no porn. The, po- the polls right now, Trump is, looking, Trump, Trump is looking good in Texas. I'm just saying. Oh, well, How much got it, banned today? Plus, 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 nine, at, plus eight. How does it look in a real purple state like Georgia? Georgia, Actually, all, the swing right. states, all the swing states right now are like slightly in favor of Trump. I think so in, the aggregate, we, in the aggregate. I, I don't remember the date when we I, I made my Trump bets. Yeah, too uh, early but, to tell now. But it's like a year at least ago. Like like before, like long before anything got started. Um, I, I just, it's a few things. It has nothing to do with what happens in the day in and day out. I just think Biden, Biden is too old and he's not beloved. He doesn't have that Clinton magic or that George W. magic. He's not beloved, and you definitely not the Obama magic. Doesn't have that either. He he, he does, he's not True. running a scam. <laughs> but <laughs> Trump, on the other hand, there are people who there there's going to be the anti-Trump vote that goes to Biden. But that's I just don't think hate gets you out if you're on the left. I don't think you can bank on hating Trump or being afraid of Trump to get your guy elected. And that's why I bet on Trump. Because he, he probably Trump, should not be antagonizing Nikki Haley voters, though. I don't, I don't think that's very smart. Nobody should be antagonizing um, Trump because he's about to be the president of the United States. I think that all of these lawsuits, I'd be backing off. I'd be leaving him the fuck alone until I knew for sure that he wasn't about to be the commander in chief. I'd want a postponement on everything. I'd want to wait until we know who we're prosecuting slash persecuting in some cases. Some of that shit is yeah. very valid. I think some the charges of helped him in the primaries, but I don't know if it'll help him in the general and it's not even clear at this point if any of these well the manhattan trial is probably going to start next month um but it's no. not are you not up to date on that the manhattan trial got delayed uh mm-hmm. today uh mm-hmm. bragg said he'd be willing to wait 30 days what did you hear maybe something similar but i think in, they're going to reschedule it in 30 i'm not sure it'll start in 30 days and i think i might have heard 90 i think i did i did hear 90 days but who knows i'm only as good oh, as I, saw, I saw 30 and then, and then then it would be um jury it's only like 240 days before the election something close to that mm-hmm. yeah so doc 90 off that now we're 150 days from the election and they don't like to do these trials in the last two or three months it, it's just easy to see how it gets pushed on the other side of November. It's, it's tactically so i don't get why they did it at this time if they were trying to like really hurt trump because it it galvanizes support around him much more than it like gets more people against him. Well, like it galvan- it's a bad, it just politically, for- it's a bad tactic to do this leading up to an election. Well, galvanize support for his supporters, a galvanize support during the primaries. I don't know how many, I mean, you could be right, but I don't know how many independents are looking at, at like legal peril as though it m- makes him like a martyr. But you're also, you're also framing this like it is necessarily a political thing. Um, like there was this tactical thing, like democratic leadership got together and it was like, okay, let's coordinate these indictments. I think it's, you have, well, that's, that's what it seems to be. Like, do you think he would be uh, into this stuff if he announced I'm not running? Even if it's not, not you'll have a hard time convincing uh, most people. That's that true. The timing is not suspect, and, and appearances is all that matters. That's true. I think you're right about that. I think I think most people view that view it through a partisan lens, but I don't think mm-hmm. like Nancy Pelosi and Schumer and Biden gotten you know invited like Jack Smith and Fonnie Willis and Bragg to the White House and like secretly coordinated this. It was just. I think they had been investigating in Georgia since like immediately after the January or not necessarily the January 6th stuff, but the, like the, the call to Raffensperger and all that. So she started investigating like right away. And um, you know, you, you like, you have to start it at some point and, and if yeah. you wait too long and then he's president and then the statute of limitations runs out. So the timing makes Ooh. sense. Even if you, uh, the timing makes sense if you remove the partisan sort of like interpretation of things. Um, My, but I think uh, like a lot of people, they have like a, a, a sense of power and like power hier- hierarchies in this country as there being like a cabal of people at the top that are like pulling the strings. I think like a lot of people view power through that lens. And I think the real world is just much more complicated and disconnected and, and uh, 
interconnected and it's yeah. fun. I think people see the other side like that. And I, I guess I'm kind of projecting here because that's how I see Trump. Trump just took over the RNC. This is the Republican National Committee, like the not the government, but the party that's responsible for getting people elected. And Trump put his daughter in law in there. She's in like the second in command and the She's first in command. She's the is like a yeah. figurehead that's also a Trump sycophant. And they're just doing Trump shit. They got completely they completely got rid of their mail in voting people. Uh, any kind of mail-in voting drive or early voting drive, they got rid of that, saying that early voting and mail-in voting is bad. I think it's a huge tactical error, but it's a thing Trump is doing. All this RNC money is going to go to Trump. It's not going to go down ballot. No more senators, no more uh, House of Representatives or local school boards or whatever. Trump has taken all that money, and he's going to pay his attorneys, and he's going to pay himself. And I think it's going to wreck yeah. the party. I, you guys are confident Trump is going to win. I think Trump is going to get absolutely butt-fucked come come november I and not just trump that. i think it's gonna hurt other people down the line too and i, I know it, it's not easy to be this confident i get it but he got butt fucked in, in 2022 in 2020 and in 2016 like these guys haven't had a good run in a long time it's been um it's been a minute but like the other thing to point at point at too is that po polling underestimated trump and, and the Republicans broadly in 2016 and 2020, when we're talking about state level polls, the national polls were actually kind of close to the margin of error in the aggregate for like RCP and 538. It was state level polls where it was like, you know, you had the poll saying like Ohio Clinton plus two. And then the final product is like tech Trump plus one. Like what the fuck happened to the polls there? Um, but one thing that has been going on now consistently since the Dobbs decision is Democrats have been overperforming in contest mm -hmm. and after contest after contest. We've seen like gubernatorial seats that have been flipped, state legislatures, state Supreme Courts. Um, there's no question that the Dobbs decision energized voters. And what's happening right now is, is the uh, Democrats are doing better with specifically energized voters, with the type of voters that will show up and vote in a special election or a midterm election. They have an advantage there. The, mm. the thing that's unpredictable is that Trump actually brings a lot of people to the polls. He's energizing. So it's going to be this energizing force of Dobbs and because it's not Biden. You guys are right about that. Like he's not like a cares. He's not like a beloved character mm -hmm. or, or a president. So it's, it's going to be the Dobbs decision and like recent stuff like IVF, you know, stuff like that. Um, that does energize a lot of a lot of voters. I, and so I, I want to get your Trump. I, I can your think thought of, on I can, like Gavin Newsom. I think he is like a good option if the Democrat like I feel like he makes the most sense in my view for them the to worst. like switch someone out. He but he's the most. The he's worst. the most. Uh, who's better than him? Like uh, even here's the everyone. Thing, like, if he pulls so, the worst. So here, here's the thing: like people say, Oprah. like well. The generic Democrat polls better than Biden. So, oh, you know, they need to bring do. somebody else in. But then when you get specific polling, like, okay, well, how does Pete poll against Trump? How does Kamala poll against Trump? How does Newsom poll? Against, how does Whitmer? Biden polls the best against Trump against uh, 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 versus all these. And it makes sense. Like uh, incumbents yeah. you have an advantage. Sure. They have name recognition and all that. But Gavin Newsom, I think, is a sharp politician. If you watch his like interviews with... Um, even if you don't like his politics, if you, if you watch his interviews, like with Hannity, he's really good at holding things in his head. So Hannity will mm -hmm. say like five things and then he'll tackle each thing like in order. He's really good at keeping. So rhetorically, yeah. he's very skilled. I don't know if he has a lot of appeal outside of California. I do, I I do not like Gavin Newsom DeSantis at all, but he's clearly, he, he seems like he would, he's the most like traditionally good looking. He's not overweight. He's not fat. Normal looking dude. Like optics is paramount when you're in politics. And when it gets slimmed down to R versus D, like I just don't like I don't imagine Biden doing a good job. Gavin Newsom. I don't know. Maybe I'm totally wrong. I think, I think Biden. I, think I don't think Biden's my if you ask me to pick my uh, my my second pick for who's going to be president, like most likely Trump, who's second most likely. It's still not Biden. Who Interesting. Is, who wins? I, Look, it's people have been saying like Rogan says second it a lot. Most likely thing is that Biden dies, and Ro that Rogan Rogan's been is... he's been saying this a lot. Where it's like, well, he can't. They can't run Biden. They can't run. The, the, here's the reality: it, it was always going to be Trump versus Biden after 2020, but it's not going to not be Biden. It's going to be Biden. 100 percent is going to be Biden. People just assume that he was going to be this one-term president. If mm -hmm. you look at interviews really early on, he was saying, "My intention is to run again," but I'm not going to. I'll tell you when the time comes. But he was saying the whole time his intention is to run two terms. His age is obviously a liability. Like, and and voters seem to have hardened in that 
position. Yeah. And that's that's a really tricky thing to disentangle, like uh, decouple yourself from. Like, um, mm-hmm. so that's going to be the big challenge for him. And un- you know, unfortunately, the only way to do that is to be aggressive and get him get him out there more. Get people like show the public, like, yes, he stammers, yes, he stutters, but if you put him in a long form interview, he can get into like deep detail about like complicated geopolitical stuff and uh he again he might stammer but he's not dumb uh and he's not demented but i think he definitely is not entirely with it what makes you say that out of curiosity seeing the way that he kind of hoovers around the stage needs constant assistance and people walking up to guide him makes gaffes not understanding who he's discuss- who he's discussing where he's discussing about he's just not with it like if if it were anyone else but trump i feel like they would replace this guy and go with someone who's way more capable and that they were comfortable <clears throat> putting in front of the country more can, can because I like how many little... times have we, how many times have you seen him like about to answer a question and his like wife scurries over real quick and ushers him off I don't know. Or, I that, but yeah, I haven't seen I mean, that. I mean, I see. What you, I see. What, I understand what you're saying. Optically, there's no question that he he has never been a skilled orator. But ten years ago, he was way better in, in a microphone than he is now. There's no question that he's yeah, like he's lost an old step. man. He's like how, eighty-two. How do you reconcile out of curiosity? And you don't. We, we don't need to get into like whether you like the policies, but how do you reconcile the fact that legislatively, his record is really fucking impressive? Like the amount of bills that he was able to sign into law eclipsed obama eclipsed uh, uh certainly eclipsed trump trump got the tax cuts that was yeah, like his trump didn't get anything done i would say i don't, I don't like this like for the businesses and the wealthy and that's that's he, it what else he, did he do biden got, Jerusalem fucking embassy I biden got chips he got the pact act he got the gun bill he got the infrastructure bill he got the inflation reduction act he got the uh, you know these and a lot of these were bipartisan so he was able to do what trump said he was going to do trump said he was going to get in there and be like a deal maker and he's just very abrasive and just not you know yeah. like it's he just, was stymied you know, a lot by his own party and whatnot with i don't i still don't think by even himself. they offered well, him an infrastructure deal and he wouldn't take it yeah he wanted. I mean, more they also like wouldn't border, give him like border wall. He wanted stuff. concessions. Like, Five billion dollars for a border wall is too crazy. Here's he wouldn't a, pass a nationwide infrastructure bill unless they stopped the impeachment investigation. He made it about himself, and that's Trump. That's why I don't like him. Well, how do you reconcile that? Just like so, is Me? he? Well, no, I, Taylor. I, I, Taylor, I, Taylor when you I say, don't. I don't like the the legislative moves he's making. And I don't like the changes in the country since he took over. No, yeah, Not of course. So all the, the blame on him. Like it's like the COVID shit really sent us down a spiral of printing infinite money and the the normal people, the middle class of the country ending up footing the bill for this. And meanwhile, we're funding foreign wars again, seemingly multiple constantly. Like well, I would, I dislike what he's two doing. Two and a half. No, no, no. Two setting aside, setting, setting aside because you're, you're a libertarian type. You're like a uh, conservative. So obviously the policies are not going to be a fan of, but that's not the question though. The question is how do you reconcile him being a demented old man with him having uh, by modern standards, a wildly successful legislative slate that he got passed. I don't think that Biden himself is that impactful in his administration. I don't think he's waking up in the morning and beating the pavement, taking care of things. I think it's largely his cabinet and the fact that he has a majority of Democrats so he can really kind of get this done. Well, for example, there was a political article um, and McCarthy reportedly he was like publicly saying, oh, Trump is this demented old guy or whatever. In private, he was reportedly saying when he had meetings with Biden, he was uh, surprisingly sharp and he was very active during this negotiations process. The, the know, immigration, I, the border wall bill, reportedly, he was very active in no, him personally. You say, very, yeah, hmm. I mean, it is all hearsay. <laughs> like you're going to hear what you, what I've that seen. Person wants you to I hear. can only judge his confidence based on what I see with my own eyes. I don't believe in Look, if you listen to Trump propaganda, he's it's like Kim Jong Un type shit. Yeah, he weighs right? two thirty and he's six five. Oh my god! Okay, mm-hmm. like calm down. We get it. You got an ego, and you're a liar. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you're fat. Ooh. You can't run away from that. You're fat. <laughs> <laughs> my tie is long. <laughs> yeah. My tie is long. I can't be fat. <laughs> Biden is not fat. I'll give him that over Trump. Biden is a spelt guy. You know why, Taylor? Because. Because he you got to fall off bikes sometimes. And what do you do when you fall off a bike? You it, get right back on it. <laughs> sometimes it, if I don't read my speech, it's good. They don't bring me my soup. <laughs> yeah, for, I mean, just for me, like my priorities as a voter, obviously I favor different policies than you. But like yeah. uh, the, the question that I ask is like, 
if I, you know, when I'm evalu evaluating, if I want to support a candidate uh, is like, how effective were they in pursuing their agenda? And when I look at his agenda, I'm like, yeah, like truly he got a remarkable amount. Of, and even if you want to say like, okay, well, that's because of his cabinet. I mean, I disagree. I think he what? was reportedly very directly involved with a lot of these negotiations. I so don't I, see the guy. It doesn't that matter to me TV. why he's successful, only that he's successful, right? That's kind different of, yeah, presidents have had it, yeah. different management styles. Like I've heard Clinton, for example, forget the policies and the man, but just the style. Uh, Clinton was very hands on. He was trying to negotiate peace between the Palestinians and the Israelis. And just yeah. block by block, he's in there saying, you know, well, what do you think of the street? And, you know, should this go here? And whatever. That's who Clinton was. He was in the dirt. He had his hands dirty. Reagan, on the other hand, he was much more of a, you know, he managed the other managers who put their you know, policies forward and didn't, you know, day by day talk about which streets should do what or the details of mm -hmm. stuff. He just put people in place to make it all happen. I don't know which one's better. They can both be successful. Yeah. If and I, if there's a I don't, wildly competent politician who does a good job of like enforcing legislation that I don't like, like, I don't, I don't want that guy in. Well, sure. Like the same uh, yeah. way, like it's kind of like the discussion we're having is like, like mm. we're fans of different sports teams almost to make it try Hitler and be like, well, well, why do you not know, appreciate I... how good the Blackhawks are at this? And it's like, well, well no. because I don't like what the Blackhawks when, when they win, like when the Blues. Well, no, win. I'm, I'm, I'm just challenging. I'm pushing back against the idea that he's not competent because it's like yeah. it's hard to reconcile. Well, I mean, his, you might argue that Trump. You might argue that Trump was standing there doing nothing because that's. It's conservative. We're, we're happy with the way things are. We, we, we I saw him tearing down lots of EPA regu regulations. We like that shit. When I hear well, drill, no, drill, he, when he, he said drill, baby he drill, I like that. A, he had yeah. a legislative agenda. Like and the he first achieved semester. basically none of it. He, well, he got the was infrastructure week every paid week for that it, wall. Infrastructure he, week was a running joke. Yeah, the, when yeah, Trump and, was president. Well, and the first thing he tried to do was repeal and replace Obamacare, and that was and and ultimately, he, you know, yeah, failed. And and. uh so I don't know, like, do you guys feel like the Republican Party is better off now than they were before 2016? When I look at 2014, you know, you got McConnell's got that iron grip in the Senate and mm -hmm. Paul Ryan's got that iron grip in the House. They had their shit together. They Paul were Ryan would blocking. only take that job if every single Republican in the House voted for him unanimously. And they did. Right. <laughs> Compare that to today. You, yeah, the the yeah. Republicans are fucking losers because they we, don't do anything that their constituents dude, want. They're like, what do you want? A secure cards. border? More money to Israel, my friends. Like, it's, mm. it's, they're, they're just losers. Like, what do you think about Marjorie Taylor Green? They suck. Marjorie Taylor Green represents the, uh, an area right above me. I live in Atlanta. And, uh, man, when I saw her at the State of the Union wearing that hat with the shirt and shit on, I was mm. thinking to myself later on, I was telling somebody while Biden was speaking, I think we were doing the show. I was like, yeah, Marjorie Taylor Greene had the hat on. I'm sure she's not wearing it now. The president is speaking. <laughs> <laughs> and like, like that's, I've got at least that much respect. I'd lose my hat if the president's speaking. I don't care who it is. And, you know, well, maybe I care. May, if, they, if, it's, if it's only using me Blade, I've got some questions and that about what happened to this universe, how he became president. But it's not. It's Biden. She, and then I look and she's got it on. And then she yells. She yells again because she yelled last year. She was the one, um, her and um, Bobert. Bobert. Bobert yeah from from colorado um she is a powerhouse when it comes to fundraising i don't know if you knew this but marjorie taylor green is one of the one of the best fundraisers in the republican party can you pull that she back looks, up please she looks so much like ron perlman i can't get over it that's her uh <laughs> that's her servant there next to her that black lady but you know who else was a incredible fundraiser for the party mccarthy and the Trump wing pushed him out. So like mm -hmm. when I look at the Republican Party right now, I try to be as unbiased as I can in my evaluation. But if, if, if Bernie Sanders had won in 2016 and then we, the Democratic Party had a run that was similar to what the Republican trajectory is currently, I would be pissed. I would be like, this guy's fucked the party. Like, um, well stated. Yeah. Trump I has think there's ruined a lot of people it. And I now his, his takeover of the RNC disagree. is going to hurt them. They're losing donors. Like billionaire donors are like, I'm not here to fund Trump's lifestyle. I'm not donating to the party until this changes. Hard well, they're agree. not holding it to fund his lifestyle. They're like holding donations to get legislation so, they want. So look, well, you're no, right. they're, no, they're going to spend that money on his 
legal bills. Legal bills. Like his legal liability in you know posting bond in New York. It's like best case scenario. Sure if you will. think Trump will only use it to pay his legal expenses, then you're giving him a lot of credit. Baron I, needs I, new pants. Come on. <laughs> Baron probably, probably does. Need, every three days. Shoes all the time. I have a motherfucker, yeah. bro. He's like Ben <laughs> Simmons. He's what if huge. what if what if Trump like gave him some sort of super soldier serum? Because if you remember. <laughs> I remember the night they won. I watched it recently, you know, 2016 or whatever it was. He was tiny. A, he's a normal skinny fucking kid. He looks yeah. a lot, suspiciously, in fact, a lot like Steve Rogers in Captain America, <laughs> the number one, right? When he's all skinny and he's in the alley yeah. getting his ass beat before Bucky comes and saves him. I, I submit that Donald Trump gave his son the super soldier soldier. There's serum. a non-zero chance you're right. Yeah, um, and he created a, a superhuman, the first of his kind, uh, and, and a program to mirror, in fact, Xi, Xi Jinping's program to create super Chinaman. Yep, he used I, Jackie I Chan's that. DNA and he mixed it with uh, 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 a nephilim, a nephilim DNA sample that they Jesus, collected he's almost in as Mongolia. Tall as Trump in this, I, yeah. I assume this is twenty. Either that or he's jumping. Nephilim <laughs> DNA mixed with that of a man. It's possible that Trump wins in 2024. Republic, it's the the Senate is going to be really hard for the Democrats to defend. So mm. it's possible that Trump wins. Republicans likely take back the Senate, but Democrats take back the House, and then you have this split government. And then typically with the way that pendulums work, um, I mean, obviously, like uh, Republicans bucked the trend in the 2022 midterms, but then 2026 midterms, in third term. Yeah. yeah, well, no, he doesn't. There will be no third term. The second just doesn't stop. That, right. I think it's a lot of people that are like, I think some of the hand wringing. I think some of the hand wringing about term. like and the end book. of democracy is a little yeah, cringe. That's really me. embarrassing. I'm, like, okay, it made sense. Like the threat was a lot bigger when he was when he was like exiting in 2021 because he actually had power. If he serves out his second term, there will be a campaign and an election, and you know. If he doesn't want to leave in yeah. 2028 or 2029, rather, he will be escorted out well, of the White House. What if he, what what if he argues who want that job? What, what if he makes the same argument that FDR made that his hair is fucking sick and that he should keep being president? You for try a while to pass longer. the constitutional amendment, you could try to do that. It's really fucking hard to do that, but um, it would be tough. Well, Here's I agree I with you, Hutch, that that hand wringing is frustrating to see because it's like, all right, now we're just in La La Land. Now we're just in in pretend world, like come on, fretting over it. stuff that not even the people being worried about it actually are. I mean, I think he's, I think he's bad for a lot of reasons, but I don't think it's, I I don't think it's at all possible that he's going to stay for a third term. Like, no. just I just and, he'll be like, oh, it's possible. If if he wins, won't he be like eighty three by the time it's over? Uh, how old was the Queen when she passed away last year? Like 104, but she didn't wait. Was she, she just hanging out? I think she's actually no. 99. No, right? like 90, uh -huh. I, I, like, low 90s, I thought. I thought no, like no, 90s. Betty White was 99. She was so close to 100, and then she yeah. didn't make it, which sucks. Was, I'd rather die yeah. at like 87 than go to 99, not even make it. She was 96. She died. 96. Still a good run. Good. I, don't, good run. I don't think I'd like. Or maybe I would. I bet. I bet like ninety-two year old me would be like, "Man, I'm glad I'm still alive." But the, when you see someone who's like ninety-six years old, it's like, my goodness, what quality of life do you have? Everything there aren't has many spry. I saw a picture of Jackie Chan today. He looked like shit. That's why oh. I used him as uh, my CCP uh, super soldier DNA. Jackie. Chan I would have bet the place. house that he was going to age brilliantly. Fit. Why? He spent his whole life getting the shit beaten out of him. Asian. In Hong Kong. What do you guys think of the idea that? Um, every basically every president moving forward for like the next like twenty to thirty years are gonna have an initial bump when they first get inaugurated because that's what always happens. But then it's gonna just hover around forty percent. No, that's sad. no, I disagree. Who, oh, okay. Give me one person that could get uh, fifty five. It's not about the fifty five. It's not about the person. It's about the scenario that we're in. If we like, like if if things Ooh, are just coasting yeah. along, economy up, economy down, then yeah, you're right. But if we get in a, a, a real war, if Excluding somebody we don't like talk some shit and we got to go handle it and everybody gets them flags out and all of a sudden there's country music at every Super Bowl and they're not we're not doing the Black National Anthem anymore because we've got Toby Keith's fucking hologram out there singing the, the sequel. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like well, Trump had that. He had that with COVID. That could have been like, yeah. if he would have worked that, I mean, he, I feel like COVID in some he ways was, was a gift because he could have, he could have, he could have in another universe. He could have sailed. To, I would have only. Here's what I'd have. 
I should be on mm -hmm. his fucking team. I, I, I just said, Mr. President, mm -hmm. here's the thing. Each and every vial of the vaccine, if you're going to fund this, what do they call it? What do you like the surge or something? When they put a bunch of money in to try to develop the cure. Operation I don't think that warp speed. Operation warp, warp speed. Is that what you're looking I'm at? pretty sure you told me that that warp speed wasn't directly um, responsible for the, the, the COVID vaccine. It was created. responsible for like one or two out of the three. Maybe Hutch knows. Okay. Well, uh, I don't. He should have had his face on those bottles, or at least the American flag. If he had done that, <laughs> if, if if the whole world, when they got their life saving bottle of medicine, they had to draw it out of an American flag painted bottle, I'd like that. And anybody who won't, let them die. Didn't he put his name on the on on one one of the rounds of the stimmy checks? Yes, Didn't he, he did. Yeah, yes, he, he did. At the bottom. Yep. I liked that. I, I think liked Biden that a lot. Similar. I think Biden did I something did similar recently. Biden did that for the. I bet uh, he didn't want to at first. Yeah. I bet he didn't want to at first, but some staff was like, "Sir, you, here are the numbers," uh, and they, they showed because every time I see black folks talking about Trump on like social media, they're like, "I remember that check he sent me. That's what I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I remember." Yeah. That motherfucker bought my PlayStation 5. <laughs> yeah, That's what I been, remember. Madden motherfucker. <laughs> Republicans have been making um, like progress with uh, Hispanic voters and black voters. I mean, I, I don't know if like it's pro it could be. Dude, there's such Charlie Browns with that. It's hilarious. They're like, this is the time that more than <laughs> zero black people vote Republican. <laughs> and then they're wrong. Every well, he time. already no, he already did a little bit better with black voters in 2020. And the I current polling, small, though, didn't right? he win Mexico? It's like going from like eight to 10 percent. But, you know, yeah. that's that, it matters, that, though. Yeah, you, that really you does. Need all of, yeah. Every one of them. It's it's so close. Oh, but he, 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 sorry, he gets God. a ton of Mexican support. And here's why. Um, Spanish American, whatever you want to fucking call it. immigrants, true immigrants who were now fucking voters who came from there, because those people have one thing in common: they all went through the process. That's how. That's why they're able to vote. And they hate and communists. It, and if they can vote, it's an extensive process. If they've gone th that far mm. down the road, they're not just on some work visa or some long-term They hate program. communists. They're like, voting Mex former Mexicans. They went through the steps. So when they see somebody jump into the front of the line behind them, they don't like that. So immigration is a big deal to them. Here's the other one: all of them are Catholic. All of them are Catholic, and yeah. and and they don't like abortion. Yeah, they like having eighteen fucking kids and gay marriage right? and gay they, marriage. They, they, they hate that shit. Yeah. They got all sorts of mean words for that. Mm -hmm. I think it's like I saw. Listen, a poll, I saw a poll where it was like I think it was like seventy five or eighty percent of Spanish Catholics living in the United States or Hispanic Catholics that live in the United States oppose gay marriage. Like they were the um the most opposed of any of the. Uh, Marriage approval is going to go in that direction, though. I think it's going to get more and more accepted every decade as time goes by. Yeah, and, it's like interracial like marriage. Right. But the Democrats have some other stuff wrong. And the one I'm thinking of really is that some of their passion around trans issues, particularly biological males and female sports. Like, bro, this is a bad position. Would you just drop it? Stop yeah. that. It, like, what did I, you call me? <laughs> I saw me? the. Well, this is like five years ago, but the guy that won the Texas State no, the girl that won the Texas State Wrestling Champion was clearly a guy. She was jacked. She'd kick my ass, too. And I'm like, this is just wrong. This is wrong. That Penn State guy, the swimmer, girl, fuck, I keep fucking this up. Um, she was a guy the year before. She was a Division I male swimmer. And then he, she just flipped world. over to the girl side and you know, put on a different bathing suit and fucked everybody up and won the national championships. Because, of course, she did. When Democrats support this kind of stuff it's a, not an important issue but politically it is and no one's on their side so change it up yeah, trans people guns. represent 0.5 percent of the population in adults Half and they the take second. up about 50 percent of the discourse online um yep. so I think they're allowed. I agree. They're a very loud and obnoxious group of people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you were the one to step out of line and, and really that last it. touch comes through. So, <laughs> but yeah, that some positions are just losers, but Roe v. Wade is probably an even bigger issue and it's a loser too. And this thing, I, I disagree. Think I disagree. That's where I was going with the Catholics, Mexicans. Porn they, they, they illegal like the Roe, in my Roe state. Wade thing. Pornhub's illegal in Texas. Keep doing this Republican. See how many votes you get. Ah, that's okay. That's different. They'll never figure out who to blame for that. See, little issues like that don't 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 resonate with the little voter. You're it, wrong. It, I'll tell you why. Because when you go to Pornhub, it's a video. It, there's only one page you can oh, possibly get to. Okay. And it's a woman saying, 
Yeah, well, the Republicans don't want us to like verify your ID and get some credit cards or something like your know, federal yeah. ID so that we know exactly what porn you're watching. And we're just saying not for your state. Damn. Okay, that's a different story then. Yeah, um, there's, if, there's a- if Pornhub was smart, they would. Oh, never mind. No, you're right. Yeah. There's all kinds of uh, interesting like realignments going on politically politically in the cultures mm. cuz like so even even though republicans have seen not not insignificant gains with hispanic and black voters there's been an interesting realignment of women in the suburbs towards the democratic party um and that started even before Dobbs but now it's now it's like more significant now so so even though they've talk about the Palestinian gains, issue what What's about it posi- Kyle you're Biden right now yes if if i'm Too Biden, late. I have no idea what to do. I don't. I can't lost. please everybody. It's a no-win situation. Lost. Absolutely no-win situation. What, what's, your, what's the closest to a win you can manage? Because Kyle's good he, at this. He's out there waist deep in the fucking bog right now. He already stepped in it, so to speak, but with, with, with his initial sort of inaction and then that sort of back and forth nonsense. Well, you say in action, but his administration were directly involved in negotiations for two previous ceasefires. So they've been very active with all, uh, all I see is buildings and rubble and bodies and dead babies. Uh, and so if you tell me there was a ceasefire one day, they're like, oh, was that when they found the bodies when they had the ceasefire? You know what I mean? Like, I'm not hearing it. I'm hearing dead babies, dead babies. Most fires Biden's are for making babies. TikTok videos. What well, I see we- is Biden who can't keep his dog on a leash. That's what I see. I see Biden. Okay. I see. And not only that, he's like patting him yeah, on the yeah. back a little. No, like, he's, like, not, like, like, he's, he's not America's dog, though. He's not. He's no. not. He should not. be, though. Well, he should be. they, you know, like we do give him a substantial amount of money. each. Well, we give him $3.5 billion each year, but that mm-hmm. represents about 17% of their military budget. If we stopped all weapon transfers and financial aid tomorrow, they would still be going on no they ran out of ammo for well their, then for let's anti-air. do it they would they would then they would forge you don't think that a country like china or russia is going to try to step in immediately to fill that void like for sure so like you can't like there's this there's this idea that biden can just literally force israel to do whatever he wants them to do and i don't think that's true at all i think he certainly can because i think that biden has no. uh a, he's like all right well i i can i can do this with saudi arabia or i can say this to iran we can change our stance on our defensive packs we could you don't get the new Ares missile system we're not I mean, going to bring our boats and provide you anti-air cover from from all those drones that are coming from the houthis you know how many drones we shot down with our 13 billion dollar fleet that we rolled up for him are you talking about the iron dome right now no i'm no, talking about the united ships. states sent a fucking uh, aircraft uh uh carrier fleet or over there and, and, and parked there to uh, carrier group and parked there and shot drones down for weeks and they're still yeah. shooting them down Look, well, I, I, think, I, I I think they are they should be our dog because they we give them tons of money. Look, I'm the I'm the most pro Israel one here. We get fucking it, nothing. No, that's not true. That's not I, true. They're, they're, they, we, get, we, we get hated by the world and embroiled in conflicts that we shouldn't be in. Did you say they we are, give them nothing? No, no, we, we get, get nothing. No, oh, we have okay. yeah. So no. So first we thing they tons. they share they share that they're they're an intelligence partner with us so they share their intelligence with us which is huge that's like not wait what what why is did you it, do that woody is it worth oh, like being the largest recipient i of want something ever? a little more concrete like someone i watched a youtube video that was explaining that america exports security and by that i mean like like we spend a lot on our own military and everyone in nato knows that we'll protect them if, if shit goes wrong and then in exchange we get really hard to define, hard to monetize, hard to understand goodwill. Mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of trading that gets us, how much better Apple and Cisco and GE are doing because of this security export, but it seems like not a lot, that it's like an IOU that we get in exchange. So when I hear that they're a security or an intelligence partner, that's like, just one. That's just one aspect, though. I mean, I, I plays very little way. value. Like their intelligence is not what the legends say it is. October seventh proves that. So, like, I don't know if Israel wasn't an, our intelligence, they had intelligence partner. Would they, there be any difference at all? 
they they had intelligence of uh, October seventh. They were, the problem is they were stretched too thin. They had they had diverted a lot of their troops over to the West Bank, and there was ineptitude when they were like reading the intelligence. And so it was like um, America. We had we had a heads up that uh, September eleventh was going to happen, and we had a similar kind of like lapse in intelligence where they just ignored the threat and it happened. And then some people think that Bush Bush did 9-11, but <laughs> it's not like America is helping this country or that country because we're this fucking altruistic pro-liberal democracy um, force. We we don't do these things for, out of the goodness of our hearts. We do it because it benefits the national interest. As so, much as I seek I don't it out, does. though, I can't find where we're getting a good deal or how this works out for yeah. us. We spend well, trillions. Now like Taylor. Are you yeah, well, you have, yeah, the American <laughs> well, people the do not benefit from our relationship. I have this strong Israel. sense of right and wrong that dictates my foreign policy. And that's why yeah. I'm pro-Ukraine, right? The, the Russians took over a country that didn't belong to them. They're raping the women. They're stealing the children, if that's true. Um, but they definitely don't belong in thousands. Ukraine, right? I, I just... I'm very suspicious of all the propaganda. I watch both sides and I don't know. Anyway, um, but I'm still pro-Ukraine, even though it doesn't benefit America, because I'm pro good guys, right and wrong, etc. In Israel versus Hamas, it's not as clear to me. I'd rather just let two assholes fight each other and stay away. Well, yeah, I don't think we get anything beneficial to actual Americans here, like raising families and working jobs by supporting Ukraine or Israel in these insane ways. It's just, it's not beneficial. It's not helpful to us. It makes us enemies all over the world, particularly in the instance of Israel currently. Like it's, it's not a net benefit for us. And I agree with Woody in that this ethereal promise of intelligence that we probably have a better version of already is not sufficient to be like, Oh, well then, you know, give them, give them write the write a check for the house, American taxpayer money straight over. I think you guys are underselling the importance of like sharing intelligence with with our like global. Are you doubting partners? my expertise in Israeli intelligence? <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> like, what what have nah. we really like? What have we concretely gotten from them that would make it worthy that they've been the largest recipient of foreign aid for the past eighty years? Well, look at the region of the world, and then mm -hmm. look at like who who can we part possibly? I mean, it's in America's interest to have international partnerships all over the world. To, okay. to benefit to benefit our economic structure to maintain stability to, to maintain liberal democracy in countries all over the world like it's not just because we do it because we care it's because it, it because it serves our interests um and when you look at that region like who you know like we have this tenuous we have this kind of like tense friendship with saudi arabia now maybe but mm -hmm. who else are we going to be partnering up with iraq iran like yemen like oman like um and so it, 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 like just geo geographically um, it, they're they're a very important uh, foothold for American interests in that region. I'm not saying I necessarily look. I just want to clarify. I'm just I'm telling you what I think. Like a foreign policy expert would say, I don't necessarily disagree that we're where that we're too entrenched in certain conflicts. I'm yeah. just saying that. Th yeah, I, I, I wonder if Israel will be our friend a little cheaper, right? If three, they're, Taylor said they're the largest beneficiary of our uh, foreign aid over the last so many years. I don't know who is that true? Is that By right? A lot. Yeah. Okay. Number like, two is Egypt. And the reason for that is we basically paid off Egypt to normalize relations with Israel. So it's almost tangentially related to gosh. that. Cumulatively, okay. cumulatively it's, it's been, uh, I can't say that word. It's been over mm -hmm. a little over $200 billion that we've given them over, over the golly. last so, several so decades. Like, of. Uh, are yeah. you telling me Israel wouldn't be my friend for $50 billion? Like, like, did it have to be two hundred billion? Did it have to be that outrageous? What about ten billion? What, what if it was just some smaller number? I feel like we're getting a little bit hoodwinked on this terrible deal. Yep, a lot of it. They boomers. are good businessmen. <laughs> a lot of it. A lot of it is like boomer. When you talk to boomers, the, your average boomer, they are gonna like fiercely defend Israel because they remember Israel in the context of like fleeing the Holocaust and and uh, and for a lot Worse of them. It's worse than that. Are you talking about the evangelicals? For a lot of them, it's about prophecy. For a lot of them, it's about biblical script. You yeah, know what? But the magnet on my grandma's refrigerator said it said, My God's a Jewish carpenter. All right. They fucking mean that shit. They're ready. Those old folks, you talk to a 70-year-old Southern Baptist, he's ready to go over there and dig through that rubble so we can finish somebody off. Like they love Israel. Okay, yeah. and they well, were literally them. waiting for the end of times. And 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 that's a not insignificant amount of American. <laughs> They're close. Where, where they support mm. Israel for that explicit reason. But for a lot mm. of old people, like it's like a cultural, like 
it's just, you know, they're a product of the times and Israel. Um, that was like a big fucking deal in 1948 when, when, you know, when they, when the United Nations partitioned that land, um, it was seen as like, you know, it's huge for them. When did um, they bomb our ship? Was that 64? Are you talking about the Gulf of the, Tonkin right now? No, that's the, no, that's he's the, talking about that's the Vietnam false flag. I'm talking about when the Israelis attacked that United States naval vessel and like bombed it. The and, USS like, Liberty? Yeah. Well, that, yeah. Was that, was that 64? Uh, 50s or 60s. Yeah. I don't right. remember. Whoops. 67. <laughs> 67. Yeah. It's also like an interesting where like, uh, like Dresden, for example, when we bombed Dresden, uh, we killed, I think, 50,000 people in two nights of bombing. The firebombing of Tokyo before Hiroshima, we killed 80,000 Japanese in one night of bombing. And so um, I think what's interesting now is like if we would have had cell phones back then, you know, mm. what would the what would the public's response have been? Because we were cheering that on here yeah. domestically. Dude, in uh, my lifetime, I've watched war coverage get so much more real and accurate. Now, there's always been propaganda, and there still is. More gruesome. But the first invasion of Iraq was the first one where we had, like, real-time satellites. Right? People weren't using film and mailing the film back to America to be edited and approved and put on television. Instead... It was like a real time conversation with this weird delay, you know, that between anchors at CNN and Geraldo Rivera in the sand. And since then, it's gotten way better. Now, every freaking soldier has a GoPro on his head. We're walking through the trenches showing his highlights on TikTok. Yeah. And you just, you, I'm glad you mentioned Geraldo. He's he's the one who gave away like troop positions or movements or something to fucking CNN while they were happening. He got in a lot of trouble for that. Or at least a lot of like public trouble. I don't know if I'm sure someone went and talked to him. From they there. really got fucked up in Desert Storm though, so I, mean, I don't know if it made a difference. That was a like, big that was, W. That was a big W. That was a, that was a fast team. W. Man. That, was, that was actual mission accomplished in 30 days. <laughs> that's why. That's one of the reasons George W. Bush gets gets it gets you know kind of two thumbs down for me on that regard in particular because for those of us who have ever played like you know Dark Tide Vermin Tide, once you play a map and you got it down. You can go back and knock that one out easier and easier every time. <laughs> we had just done that shit. And it, and it, and it's, it wasn't so bad. It's his dad. It's literally his dad. We say we're not a, uh, I like the American way. No monarchies or dictatorships here. So, mm -hmm. okay. So then no, that guy's just a dad vague became connection of, of nepotism and backhand deals. <laughs> so a few years later, years later, that man's father became leader of the world for eight years. But then after that, the other guy's wife tried and almost made it. And it's like, I don't know. It seems like we've got just a, a little monarchy or, or, of our own making. And, and like, I love that Kennedy, <laughs> Kennedy's name still means something. I have to hear about his aunts and uncles and cousins and nephews and shit. True. Like, like, like they've got that magic touch of like, what? You're going to take us to the moon? You're going gonna to start laying that accent it on us? Like Biden, you know, breaks <laughs> the royalty. I guess Obama broke the royalty trend, right? He wasn't attached to anyone. He just made it through good grades. Well, fuck, Clinton did too. I'm, I'm, and, I'm, and charisma. He was, you know, Obama was like the, great. the best of our term. <laughs> yeah, good His charisma doesn't work <laughs> He's on not only when he gets to the presidency through good grades. Well, yeah, he, was a, he was a Rhodes they, Scholar. He was, he was fucking smart yeah, as yeah. fuck. Oh, Bill no, Bill Prize saying, winner. Then, yeah, Bill like, Clinton yeah. was a Rhodes Scholar, and it was a big part of how he got to where he was. How many Rhodes Scholars are there a year? I'm genuinely asking. By the way, you were right earlier. Mm -hmm. We sell like 300,000 Fords to China a year. Yeah, I thought it was more than you said, but I, a lot of cars. It's more than two. You were fact checked wrong. <laughs> yeah. I just couldn't imagine that. They, I thought there'd be tariffs. One, um, I choose to believe. I noticed that number skyrocketed around Trump's presidency. I think maybe he made no, some deals. It? No, I just made oh. that up. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, but it, hold hold on to your thoughts. It has Sorry been rising. To, to interject. We got to hear from a couple of wonderful sponsors right now. This episode of PKA is brought to you by FaroDistro.com. FaroDistro.com, folks. Oh. PKA fans, have you been interested in THC, but you aren't sure where to start? Look no further than FaroDistro.com, your premium source for THCA flower, dabs, edibles, and other smoking accessories. THCA, not your cup of tea? Then check out our expansive assortment of Delta products, including edibles, vapes, and disposables. That's right, folks. Faro Distro is your go-to destination for all things THC-related. 
Get ready to elevate your experience with Faro Distro's exclusive Faro Exotic THCA Buds. These buds are so premium, they practically come with their own red carpet, crafted for all cannabis lovers. These USA indoor-grown bre- indoor grown beauties are the epitome of luxury. And for all you dabbing aficionados, get ready to savor the richness of our THCA diamond sauce. That shit's very potent. Trust me, once you try it, you'll wonder how you ever dabbed without it. These are the perfect pairing with DabX products like the DabX Go and the DabX Rocket, our premium dabbing equipment. Let's not forget our mouthwatering assortment of high-quality edibles, perfect for anyone looking to elevate their edible game. From Delta 8, 9, and even 10, we have an incredible assortment of edibles and many delicious designs. If you're looking to add a touch of wellness to your routine, explore Ferro Distro's range of CBD products and therapeutic mushrooms, because self-care never tasted so good. PKA fans, use code PKA20 for 20% off your whole order. You heard us, 20% off your entire order for being a fan of the podcast. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to ferrodistro.com to discover a world of premium THC products that cater to your every whim. Elevate your 2024 experience with Ferro Distro and make this year the best. That is ferrodistro.com, linked below, PKA20 for 20% off. That includes the edibles, the dabs, the disposables, and also... The diamond sauce and, of course, the machines themselves, the rigs themselves, the DabX Go and the DabX Rocket, you are going to wonder how you ever dabbed without them because it is so much more convenient. There's a little nice silicone cup so there's no waste. It's just easier, easier to clean. You don't have to worry about having a fucking blowtorch on your uh, on your table looking like a lunatic. You know, nobody likes that. You go to someone's house and you see blow torches there and suddenly you're like, whoa, I mm-hmm. thought we were doing weed level drugs, not some <laughs> weird level drug. With hit this, you just hit the button, heats up, easy peasy and uh, very enjoyable. If you're looking for the absolute strongest smokable and vapable they have, go for the THCA buds or the THCA sauce and, and such. Basically, the THCA option is far and away the most potent if that's your goal. If you're looking for yeah. more of a mellow high, uh, the Delta edibles are probably going to be more your speed. But as always, don't be ridiculous. Start with a low dose. If you're used to taking gas station 100 milligram edibles, uh, do not start with 100 milligrams. These these are accurately dosed, and it'll be too much for you. So check it out. Ferrodistro.com, PKA20, 20% off. This episode also brought to you by Lock and Load, the premium, premium ejaculation increasing supplement taking the world by storm. If you're tired of just a little of cum coming out of your penis when you have sex, Mm -hmm. I can guarantee that your woman or man is also sick of it. And she wants or he wants you to bust hard and heavy because that shows how much you love them. That's true. You know, that's that's the way it works. The more, you come, the more you love. Yeah. We do and so there's a whole lot of love in this bottle, folks. And you can get it with code PKA or code Jizz to get 10% off. But it doesn't stop there. I highly recommend you start here because halfway through the bottle, you're going to be seeing real results, folks. Oh. You're not going to have to get through the whole bottle. It's no. not like you have to buy two or three to get the effect. Halfway through this bottle, you're going to be busting hard. You're going to be busting like a man, perhaps for the first time in your life. Sitting. No, and I don't recommend you to. Take the nine pills a day as recommended, and yeah. you are going to come hard. So, uh, oh, also, Code PK and Code Jizz, they work on the protein powders, the energy drinks, the uh, weight loss supplements, the dream supplements, anything and everything you want. Efficaciously dosed over at GorillaMind.com. Get 10% off with Code PKA or Code Jizz. Try it today. That's it. We're good. Cool. cool. What were we talking about? Jews. <laughs> no, oh, I, I did want to say, like, seriously though what do you think um what do you think that what do you think the best case scenario for biden to handle israel oh yeah been? um like oh yeah because no yeah, matter what no, good no matter what fucking 30 to 40 percent of people are going to be heated as yeah as my, as my yeah take um i i honestly i hate to say it but he'd go back in time what if he immediately sent a force in to lock things down and keep both sides at bay Send American troops what, into Gaza? Yeah, yeah. No, that was a bad yeah. move. Americans yeah. don't have an appetite for war. We're not, and to and stop he, Israel from getting their revenge? Like, like to yeah. me, what I really want to yeah, happen, you make everybody mad that way. Israel kind of wins, but not like this, right? How many people have they killed? 30,000? Is that a good number? Roughly. That's way a low estimate, yeah. Okay. Of, yeah. I like that. They lost 1,100, right? I'm going to give them 2,500. 2,500. Right? Send a message. You mess with me, I take two for every one. And call it good. 
30 for everyone like, this feels the wrong. goal of war has never been proportionality though so like i feel like this is a really weak I argument like proportionality proportionality uh, okay, so just like you double up compound yeah. for the proportionality yeah, but like when, when america <laughs> when america entered world war ii we didn't go in there thinking like okay we're gonna kill fifty thousand germans it was like the goal was we need to stop the nazis and the japanese from taking over europe and asia uh absolutely and, and, and when it comes to yeah and when it comes to the the objective in gaza it's well, you might be right there's a problem with every um, idea but i don't know if our goal is total war right which is what you sort of suggested our goal is peace so how do we teach them a lesson and then have peace afterwards hamas are, have been wholly dedicated to the proposition of killing or expelling every Jew from the river to the sea, greater Israel, they envision ruling over greater Israel through Islamic law. Uh, they're not, they are not, um, people don't like hearing this. People want to hear like permanent ceasefire, permanent ceasefire. I don't know what that means. Um, yes, I true. No, I don't. I really don't. Like it what means is, a what ceasefire is, that doesn't end. A ceasefire is by definition, a temporary pause in fighting. And then you can springboard off of a ceasefire to negotiate a lasting peace. I don't know how you negotiate a lasting peace with a group whose explicit goal is the destruction of your country. That's where it gets kind of dodgy. And yeah. I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm comfortable with the level of force that's been used in Gaza. That's not what I mean. And especially and like blocking humanitarian aid is abhorrent, obviously. Um, I mean, yeah. Depends what, what they're trying to do. We don't know where their goals are. We don't know what their goals are. They may be trying to exterminate the people, in which case, you know, it's it's going pretty well. Um, they they clearly want to get them out of there. Aren't they about to invade a different region? Is it called Rafa or something? It's in southern Gaza, yeah. Yeah, I think they're going to push them all out. I think the way they're <laughs> bombing that place, it's not the kind of bombing you do where people move back. Yeah, right? it's like scorched like, like, earth. So who, which which companies are going to be coming in there to fix things? I know which companies. We Alberta. all do. <laughs> like it'll be israeli companies who come to build rebuild that place because that is going to be israeli territory so well, what, they're what not Net going to abandon it what netanyahu said his goal was was and it's a joke um it's just as much of a joke as like hamas's idea of like permanent peace but netanyahu has said that his goal is the destruction of hamas first and foremost which he says we're only like six weeks away uh but eventually after that he says they're going to establish basically a permanent military presence in Gaza and mm -hmm. they're going to install a puppet government, which for obvious reasons is just not, that is not going to, that's not going to work. Obviously. I think it's, a, it's um, more likely Zelensky gets some of his land back than the people in uh, Gaza do. You know what I mean? Well, like that's why it's important yeah. to have like international pressure on Netanyahu to not permit, like the only solution for like lasting peace would be a two state solution. It can't be a one state solution. That's just off the table. Like it has to be a two state. I mean, solution. we're the international pressure though. And all of our politicians are bitch made around Netanyahu. Well, there is pressure from American politicians, including Biden to pursue a two state solution. That is a, per that is quote, a permanent ceasefire would be like Palestinians have their own state and it's like now really, he knows what a permanent ceasefire is. Now he's defining it. See, there's there, like even well, like, I, it's just like what, the, the people that say like Biden should force a permanent ceasefire. I don't know what that means. Like if if Hamas are going to continue rocket fire into civilian into Israeli civilian like centers, because that's that's what they do. They fire thousands of rockets. You know, they have their Iron Dome and they have really good defenses, but they're constantly under rocket attack from Hamas or if they continue to plan October 7 attacks, how is that? That's not a permanent ceasefire. Dude, the simplest solution is we do not belong in this eon old ethnic conflict. Like what? Like there's nothing Actually, beneficial for American people, normal American people over there for us. It just so embroils I, us in nonsense and costs us money. It's Taylor it, just it's made me waste. think of something. We were, I was trying to figure out, I was even asking Kyle, hey, what is the political win on this? I think if we followed Taylor, and I guess mine, non-interventionist strategy, and you get a lot of negative press for a couple of weeks, then it would blow over like it was Afghanistan. No one's talking about Afghanistan as an electric election issue right now. Oh, was it a bad withdrawal? Yeah, it was. It was several years ago, and no one gives a fuck today. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the biggest like donors to the to people like Trump, Biden, whoever, like they have like a, a vested interest. Like Sheldon Adelson, he like funded the whole Republican Party, and he's like that's one of like Israel's like his big issue, and so they're not going to go against their big funders. 
Well, they're also like very pro Zionism too. So like, they're, yeah. you know, they, they don't really need poking and prodding. Like Biden himself is very, he's like a self-described, like proud Zionist, um, which is kind of like an outdated term, but like, yeah, I mean, I just, I feel like, I feel like there's, if you, if you do nothing, if you don't put any pressure on Netanyahu, if you don't put any pressure on Israel, then for sure, they're just going to either, they're, they're going to try to just drive them out of that room. Uh, and and so there's no... I saw, uh, I saw an Israeli rap video today. It was like a, a lady Israeli rapper. And mm -hmm. <laughs> and she's talking about like blowing up Palestinian houses. She, she's like, I'll blow up your house for free. That was one of the, that was one of the rap lyrics. I'm sure it rhymes. <laughs> in <her language. laughs> in <Israeli. laughs> she was being real mean about it. Yeah. yeah it was, it was All that propaganda crazy. is not helping them. Like them doing like fun selfies in Palestinians homes and stuff. It's mm -hmm. just, man, yeah. it's like, I think it plays back home though. It does. And, mm. and, and, and right now, like the overwhelming majority of Israelis support, the war effort in in gaza right now but as far yeah, as the rest of the world the only running. winning move is not to play in issues like this and this Dude. is there it's it's losses around the board who knows if it's even possible to not play given how embroiled our politicians are you know being being funded by people who have vested interests in different countries but like it's not it's not good for us as people us is like i think the best people. move is not to play because you're still going to lose you're going to lose sheldon adison for example yeah uh, but it is probably the best move for American people, it's the best move. For a politician trying to get elected, they're going to do the behest of whatever the pet project of their biggest donors are. That's why you need managed democracy. You vote, but then an mm -hmm. algorithm interprets your vote uh, and the outcomes that you would like. And <laughs> then it throws that away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now we're getting, and it, now and we're it does what it's told. No, no, we can Zuckerberg, go back to Kings. we trust. No, let's go back to Kings. Um, I'm okay with Kings. Which family? I, I think I, I think know. a slight majority of Americans still support you know. uh, aid to Israel right now. So it's not like so cut and dry. Obviously, there's a huge chunk, especially of like young Democratic voters that are obviously yeah. like very much against this war or about yeah. against this um, against aid. Um, so I don't know, like what, what Biden is currently doing. We're like now I guess he's like leaking to the press that he's considering conditioning aid on certain things, which would I think would be a step in the right direction. But I don't know if he can ever get back the. Yeah, they're, they're not going to change the topic. Pissed, bro. I don't know how to change the topic, how to get people talking about what you want. But if this was about Dobbs and this was about Trump's rape cases and other criminal cases, then that helps Biden. For this to be about Israel, it's not the win that he needs. It's just like the Israel thing is the biggest thing happening in the world right now. Trump and so like everything like is going to. <laughs> no, tr Trump, like he will say he does. In day then, one, he'll fix it. He has a plan. I'm not telling you, but I'll fix it in one day. Like I, I, I don't can't tell understand because uh, then you wouldn't hire me. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't think it would. It's going to hurt Biden that much in the long run if he ends up running like the whole Israel thing because it's like Trump is just as pro-Israel as oh, more, Biden, more, well, like he, probably he, more so if if possible, like, or, or at least the same amount. Like he so, it doesn't play. He personally him. beefs with um, Netanyahu. Like him and Netanyahu are no, they're like they don't, they're no longer best pals, but. Trump was asked recently, what would you do in Israel? And he his, he just simply said, well, they need to finish the job. Like he he would definitely would not be pushing for humanitarian aid. He would just tell Netanyahu, like, Gaza is yours. We're not going to even rhetorically oppose you for doing that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Got to yeah. get out of there. Yeah, I think Gotta that uh, the big problem is, like, especially up there in the Rust Belt, um, you have a lot of Arab voters and Muslim voters. Um, you know, we've got friends who are, who are up there who are, up there in Detroit, who were Muslims, who were who were immigrants, and Minnesota they, too, and yeah. and they do not. Uh, I asked my my buddy, I was like, "What does your dad think? What is what is it? What do your uncles think?" And I was like, "Oh, they don't like Biden. <laughs> 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 they hate him." And that was a good like fish. Trump anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's a lot. If, if, if there's one thing that young left leaning voters or potential voters are really good at doing, it's not distinguishing any difference between the the parties like they like republicans i think you know mm. they get energized and they have some some elections where they don't show up as much but like they understand i think like i actually kind of respect if you're a republican who doesn't like trump you know you might even think he's like somewhat of a threat to democracy but you're just not going to vote for biden you know, we're talking about people that have like specific policies in mind and they don't want, you know, what they look at when they see the Democrats, they just find it totally unacceptable. And with young people, you know, something like something like the Israel stuff happens and they just 
and there's so much fucking TikTok propaganda and fucking and so then then this narrative gets constructed where it's like that you know two sides of the same coin. Biden is basically no different from Trump, but, but when you look at the policies, they're just like you said, Taylor. Totally different policies, like completely mm. different policies. There are caverns yeah. and universes between the parties, but young people just they just get convinced, like it's all the fucking, it's all the fucking man, bro. It's all the yeah. war machine it's, and the fucking. The only thing they're seeing on their feed, and they see that people who say what they're saying are getting a lot of positive feedback on it, and so they want that too. I hope he does something neat this time. He talked about buying Greenland last time. That obviously fell mm -hmm. through. I didn't like that they mocked him for it because I would like to add Greenland to the I didn't mock to, it to the union. If we could buy uh, any country, why not Greenland? I'd like a vassal uh, of some kind. I don't want to buy anything per se. I want to take something. I'd like to take something. Dude, we already have tons of vassals. Look at Europe, dude. I think, I think he, isn't Haiti kind of free for the taking? Well, right I'd now? like it in writing. Frankly. No, I don't like want to, that's writing. a fixer upper, Woody. We don't want that. We, we do really? not want Haiti. No. How no, much it's... of Ukraine do you think uh, of like Western Ukraine? Do you think Zelensky would give us if unless if we say we'll cut off all funding? Uh, otherwise, mm, like, like how much could we? Like like that's what I want to do with the money. How about this, Taylor? Would you would you be okay with the hundreds of millions if we got if they like if we got land and 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 recompense like 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 each like at at market value like we were we were literally getting their land in western ukraine that was ours win or lose what and like it's a 51st state no we don't they'll pay taxes but we're not helping them out with infrastructure and shit this no, is going to be more I don't, of a Dominican I don't want any of, I, don't, I don't think we need any of ukraine they'll be in the miss america pageant winning i mean that's they're a shoe in right okay, those, those they're good at are that. Hot. they yeah. have a lot of hot blondes that's fair yeah there yeah. has to be a limit to your isolationism. There just has to be, right? Like, at what threshold would it require? Like, mm. how? Like a hit? Like, let's say Hitler 2.0 shows up, and it's like, if we don't do anything, Badly. we're talking global, He's, one one world order, whatever. You know, like, well, I mean, like, if we're being attacked, then yeah, we have to rebuff it. But if we are constantly intervening on the behalf of foreign nations and prioritizing their well-being seemingly over that of our own people like yeah that's wrong like we we have way too many issues on the home front to be dilly-dallying in ukraine and israel and i think it's a net negative what issues are not getting done in the states that would be getting done if we weren't sending aid to ukraine well, it's hard to say because that money for Ukraine could be spent on any other thing. We we had this discussion last time. Just Healthcare don't is a the good money example, and, and the money I have is worth more. But mm, yeah, it's but, not like they went and got a dump truck full of money and sent it over there. They just made up some money. They printed some money, right? Like, what did that cause? What comes out of the defense budget? What, well, what I'm of, saying is like, is like, yeah, we should have a drastically diminished defense budget. Well, we, we agree that. Don't there. touch my defense budget. Yeah, no, we should drastically. I know you hate that, Kyle. I know you love American Let imperialism. Let me say this. And point, yeah. Taylor. Look, when the aliens cool. come and There's, we're so okay, ready you know, that we ready? become one of those sci-fi <laughs> stories, you'll be thankful for our trillion dollar defense budget. Yeah, Taylor doesn't watch enough sci-fi stories. I mean, you, we yeah, need defense. Yeah. We need well, battles. The Russians, you know, the, Russians, the Russians got the nukes in space now. They got the space nukes. Yeah, space nukes. Yeah. I just, I like, enough is All enough of us constantly sticking our fingers in every corner of the world in a way that just drains resources from American taxpayers at, to the benefit of foreign nations or our own elected officials who are taking paybacks from those foreign officials or corporations. There. Like, it's, it's so bad for us that it, I just don't understand why... Why there has to be like, oh, well, what's not getting done here that would be achieved if we had that extra money? Well, inflation would be lower. Like we wouldn't have gone through a lot of that nonsense. We also wouldn't have uh, huge issues with our border. We could secure that. There are an, there are a litany of things. We could have better roads. We could have more robust school systems. We could you're have talking about care. You're talking about things in a vacuum, though. You still need the political will to actually pass these bills. True. And bills. So like even if even if we spent if we spend no money in Ukraine, I don't think we would have any better health care. I don't think we would have spent less money and that would be beneficial for us. Um, like hundreds of billions of dollars. Like we, like it's not just free. Well, it's not even a hundred billion. And I mean, it's, I think it's close to 90 billion right now in Ukraine, but there's more aid package that's being proposed. Yeah. And so it'll be well over like that an, soon. And so it's like, not, it's not good for us. And it's not like, Oh, this money is just going to be thrown in a fire pit. If we don't give it to a foreign country. Like, no, we, we could just yeah. not, Print like we could just Ukraine not stuff. spend it. I'm I understand all for that. Stuff. I, I, I feel like it's a great deal for us. I see Russia as a geopolitical adversary. I think that they are trying. Look, 
I also think that the whole thing's probably NATO's fault and our fault. We we, mm. we agreed with them years ago that we wouldn't put those bases and those missiles there, and we keep doing it. We keep pushing their shit. We had a meltdown with the Cuban Missile Crisis, and it was tit for tat there too, and we never talked about it. That is a side though, because we are where we are. So I, I, I'm all for the Ukraine thing. I like giving them all the fancy missiles and stuff. I don't want, I, you know, I, I'm sure there's going to be some spillage, as they say. Somebody's going to cash some checks they shouldn't. But sometimes, that's just that's how war and business and and, and shit works. There's going to be. If we spillage. do get into a war, I think that seeing our weapons used in Ukraine will inform how we can make them better. We're learning, like. I, this is so invaluable to, to to us. I feel like to our intelligence apparatus, to and, and to our military uh, apparatus, and to our military industrial complex. We're, we're we're learning in real time what it what it's like to fuel a modern twenty first century war, so that so that our production systems can can be ready if we need to fight the same war in a decade from now. Run a war it, game. If Don't this spend war, hundred billion dollars on, you can't game for 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 what the adversary is going to do. Remember how like every step of the way we were surprised by how this war turned out, how the the man pad systems, the 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 portable rocket systems were suddenly the thing, and it didn't seem like the tactics were working. They couldn't combine arms, and 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 they couldn't get uh, airports uh, uh, air super superiority. You can't game for that. This is perfect. It's the real world, and no Americans have died that we know of. Maybe, maybe, maybe like three, three probably they died. Like Ukrainians. Yeah, they were dressed like them too, and they spoke mm -hmm. Ukrainian, and and they had some cool goggles on if they died. It's hard um, to uh, it's hard to sell to the American people like how it benefits them because oftentimes if we send aid to a country like Ukraine, there's no like some fucking Amazon worker in Virginia. They don't their life is not different, you know. So it's so, yeah, so their so, life so, is worse. So now things well, are more expensive now. I just don't know. Maybe how he gets Ukrainian mail order right. Ukraine is going pretty to inflation. I don't know if that's like a big thing, but cool. like. But but if if you and I think we talked about this last time, but if you, if you let someone like Vladimir Putin. If the if the message that the world sends him in this moment, it's like if you want to take territory, you can take territory. He's not going to stop. And there's other forces at play as well. You have to worry about China's ambitions with Taiwan because they're watching what's happening in Ukraine right now. And I guarantee you, it's giving them pause. I mean, maybe it's inevitable that there's going to be conflict with Taiwan and China, but it is. yeah, maybe yeah, it'll happen but eventually. If I'm China, I'm looking at this and I'm saying like maybe I can still take it. But Jesus, it, we're going to look. First of all, it's going to be a PR disaster. Like you, you, you saw, yeah. It's going to be a PR fucking disaster. People are going to like not buy Chinese whatever product just because it says, says Chinese on it. But like the world will coalesce behind a cause. And that even if that cause is it, they don't like bullies, the, 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 the world doesn't like bullies. And, and clearly we've we're not fo as focused on it, Ukraine as we were initially. But. I mean, that October 7th thing was pretty big. And for some reason, it seemed like every news media outlet like really focused on it, like like they were told to. Or or maybe they just had, you know, well, I mean, it, fire. It, was, it was the most <laughs> it was the most significant terrorist Wait. attack in the country's history. So, I mean, it was going to make it was going to make the news for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think the conspiracy theory that the news was told to report on the October 7th is about as valid as the one that Kansas City won because they pulled well, the strings. Well, the joke is that they don't have to be told because like like all those corporations are Jewish owned. Mm, okay. Okay, Kanye. It's true. <laughs> Look, Kanye says some crazy shit, but like he also like stated some facts that should just that, that are just like there to be facts. That's a coincidence, Kyle. <laughs> now look, that's a coincidence that's now look bit, away, right? <laughs> look away. Kanye said a yard was three feet can you believe it yeah they, I mean that's about what a yard is right a little bit of a broken feet. clock effect there not, not exactly. oh what did they it's say exactly if it's black people it's a gang if it's someone else it's, it's yeah he something. said if it's he's uh, Chappelle's bit where he's like if <laughs> yeah. it's black people it's a gang if it's Italians it's a mob it's a, if it's Jews it's a coincidence and don't <laughs> pay attention to it <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I mean, that was look, look, a funny bit. I didn't believe any of that stuff until I saw them coming out of those sewer grates in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw that little fella crawling out, I, we had Harley on, um, and Harley's the biggest Jew I know, um, both in Literally. fame and, and size. 
Yeah, and and I was like, Jam. man, what is going on? Why are y'all in the sewers? <laughs> <laughs> why why are y'all like cosplaying as Ninja oh, Turtles? In your spare? Yeah, they, they wouldn't have invited Harley. He wouldn't fit. <laughs> like, it, was Master Splinter down there? Is April O'Neil coming? Like, what are you doing down there? Was it, not pretty, was it not pretty obvious that they were they were doing it so that they could do like worship during COVID stuff? That's that was I know that was right? uh that was the initial story, but then it got fact checked that those were in like initial production like seven months prior to the story. Like they weren't uh I don't know concurrent I, with COVID. Dude, just imagine walking down the streets of New York and you see an Orthodox Jew just just crawling out of it you, you just, you'd look like, at that and you'd be like am I, am I allowed to see this <laughs> i feel like I'm, I'm kind of i would warn him i'm like sir what are you thinking someone could see you it's like if you saw a, a, a dracula walking down the street yeah <laughs> you're like they're real dude a year and a half ago if someone said there are jews under my apartment you'd be like get out of here you goof. <laughs> <laughs> he's like haha it's true they were under there singing and dancing and smashing glasses at 1 a.m like they should stay they should stay away from stereotypes all the races do all the races do you know every white person's like i love hot sauce and seasoning on my food i love it cajun mm, <laughs> lots of hot sauce and seasoning for me they don't want anybody to think they're the no mayonnaise for me that stuff's gross when black people are around. <laughs> Meanwhile, when they're gone, they're scooping on that dude. <laughs> you know we love that shit. I, I there's a man, bit on, uh, on on Curb Your Enthusiasm, Larry's black friend's afraid to eat watermelon around white people. <laughs> 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 He's like, watermelon's delicious. I know it's fucking delicious. I can't eat the shit from the white people, though. They'll see. <laughs> They'll see. And he like, he like bigs him up. He's like, you can do it. You can do it. Mm. And like... So, so he gets the he gets the balls and they're sitting around him and two other black guys are sitting at Larry's dinner table just eating the shit out of some watermelon. Coincidentally, Larry meets a black girl who's like perfect for Leon and and when she walks in to be introduced, there's just three black dudes there wearing like overalls with no shirts eating the shit out of some watermelon and she just like turns around 180 degrees and leaves. It's great. <laughs> so what I'm saying is if you're Jewish, don't be crawling in the sewers, bro. <laughs> yeah. Or at least hide them sideburns. He is gigantic in real life. Have you he met is. him in real life? I've met him in real life, and Harley's yeah. a terrible guy to take pictures with. Oh, man. Yeah, he's, he's tall. Big. Uh, you're tall, too. So yeah, that's a little stolen valor. I think he's taller than me. I think he's he's a big I boy. Think, what are you, like 6'4"? 6'3". 6'3"? Yeah, Harley's like 6'5", yeah, 6'6". Six, 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 six. He's a big four. dude. And he's like wearing boots sometimes. Yeah, meeting, <laughs> uh, meeting that's Sam. Hilarious. Dude, when I met Sam Hyde, like, big old boots. And he'll like he'll straight up tell you he's like yeah I'm I'm like I'm trans six seven I'm already six five and I wear lifts and <laughs> so, he's, so he's just enormous and it's have like damn seen, this is a good move. Have you seen some of the? He's doing this like I went down to like a Sam Hyde rabbit hole like a couple weeks ago. I didn't really know much about him. I'm like man this is this is dark. But like um he's doing this like reality show thing. Have you seen any of the clips from this? Yeah, fish tank. Yeah, dude, yeah, it is so. With it. It we've had so, participants come on. It is yeah, we've had so bizarre, like so like surreal. Like, yeah. Uh -uh. It, it like it watching it, and I've said this before, like you always ask yourself, like, why do they use like commercial actors and aspiring actors on reality shows in the Jersey mm. Shore? Like these are all people who want to act. Like, and then you see Fish Tank, and it's like, oh, that's why. Because you put like genuine weirdos in there and they get fucking weird. Because they're yeah. not aspiring to be a, you know, a Tylenol spokesperson afterward, and they're being <laughs> harassed. Like I've said before, the psychic hell that would be being oh. in the fish tank house. I couldn't handle it. The constant <laughs> text speeches where yeah. they're just ripping on you. Are and any then, of like, them smart on the like any of the fish? I do you call them fish? So, yeah, the fish. Uh, some of them I think were none are like stand out really smart or anything. They probably get. You'd be weak. the smartest guy in the house, right? Do you think uh, that would 85th help you at all? Percentile. Uh, I, I think, <laughs> I mean, he did make them do uh, an IQ test and then they had to line up by their results. That's right. Yeah. Who was top IQ? Was, like 135 or something? Uh, oh, sure. Yeah. The That girl with the dark hair, she was like 135. And then the yeah. lowest was uh, one of the freeloaders, uh, Dunye. And it was like 82. Yeah. Like it was, yeah. It was real low. <laughs> so did that. that did that score vibe with like sync up with what you expected? Yeah, yeah, somewhat. Okay. I mean, the, oh, the Japanese that, guy was lower than I thought he would be, and I think like maybe language barrier might have. Have you ever been a bit of a thing? 
have you ever seen that video where they put like five or six people together and they all sort of introduce each other to themselves and have a conversation quickly about what their jobs are and their lives or whatever. And then they have one of them, this one girl, uh, arrange them all in an order of IQ. Like she has to arrange, oh. including herself. Have you seen that? No. There's a show uh, that does that. Like that, I know the one you're talking about, but I've also seen like seven more where they get different participants. She's obnoxious. She's like, mm -hmm. well, I'm like this and that, and I do this, and I, do, I got this degree and this she's job. Really so right? she's academically successful. She, she claimed to be, and I, I think yeah. she put herself at the front. And and it, th but they start working from first to last. And they're like, all right, here are the results. And like this dude that she didn't think much of, smartest guy in the fucking room, to slide him right up there to the fucking pole pole position. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah number two there that's him she was talking shit on number two who looks a little awkward with the jeans there um so who did the ranking four four i think is the one who four thought did. highly of herself four yeah did. yeah that's the the sixth guy was just the janitor. she's ballsy these also, Jubilee videos are fascinating personality wise she was the most outgoing and willing to talk to camera to the camera and stuff and everyone else was kind of shy and just a participant while she was a leadership but she didn't do well on the test not at all. I would have put Asian guy on the far left number one. I would have too. I would have too. Um, I'd this have isn't. Th is this the real one or this is this is her guess? I'd have gone right. Asian one. guy. Um, uh, no, this is the then, actual score. I'd have gone Asian guy, white guy, then black girl, um, and then um, um, probably that that weird individual that's like dressed like My Little Pony or some shit. Um, he's a real wild card. I don't know what that what's going on there. Um, and then I'd have put the two women behind. It doesn't matter what order. Yeah. <laughs> so this is <laughs> this is the real rating. Yeah, that's the true rating. Yeah, it turned the out true the, rating. Okay. Yeah. So that, I thought you yeah. said the pudgy guy was first. So I thought this was the. Yeah, the, I would have ranked four six, four, and three really high, and I would have been pretty bad at this game. So six, this is like a difficult four, game. And three. Oh yeah, no! Look, look at that. Yeah. Oh, yes, oh that, that was that was what number. Close. That's what number four said. So I so Kyle and I would have been right. Asian guy. Yeah, she for the 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 furthest. That's weird that the picture didn't support that. Oh, and she what, was wait. doing that. Yeah, I don't know what that picture was then. Yeah, fuck that picture. Anyway, yeah. like like the previous right. photo was number four's self assessment, I, I believe. Yeah, I was. For, she, yeah. I Yourself really high. Have you guys taken one of these like online IQ tests? I have. They so overrank you. Like they I've got one fifty seven and shit like that before. I'm not. <laughs> okay. I'm not Einstein. Yeah. They you, told me I, I was on the same level as Copernicus, and I was like, okay, I think you're wrong <laughs> I think you're trying to get me on an email list, sir. Like, <laughs> I think that. Well, I do. think I will subscribe to Copernicus.net. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, look, an easy way to tell if it's a real IQ test what? is: Are you at like a testing? Like, like, are it's you taking a real IQ you. test where you have to like look at <laughs> patterns and arrange things with your are, hands? Are any of these like they begin and start a timer? Like, yeah, and yeah, it depends. Yeah. Like, what test are they taking? Like, so there's a lot you, of, or there's a couple just of reputable. The Mensa t the, I'm sure there's a, a specific one if you want to be in Mensa. So I would go with that one. The one, if there's an organization for geniuses by geniuses, then I would trust their. No, Mensa system. is anyone intelligent enough to have like a Mensa score IQ is not dumb enough to fall for a subscription program to pay to be in a, a stupid club. Like that's, that's not true. People like people like being having a little acumen like, like like you've seen the backs of cars right you've seen those stickers people put All on right, there you're right i guess there's a lot of retards out there I knew they're so that, proud they I, walked I to half marathon their, or something in, in their twitter profile <laughs> they had mensa member i was like oh that's All embarrassing right. okay yeah I've so seen you that. pay I've seen to that on put that in your twitter bio that's I've nothing that. compared to my Twitter profile. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm I'm trying, still trying to get 100 percent on a U.S. geography quiz, which I did for the first time this last week. It's Hell a yeah. very big moment for me. Dude, I've, I've seen uh, that on a girl's Tinder before, like like Mensa member. The like, U.S. Like, geography I, test? <laughs> no, Mensa. No, I'm kidding. Could you guys get 100 percent on a U.S. geography test? I think. I uh, could do better I, how does it work? Like, like it's, just, it's just, a Sporkle quiz. Here, I'll put it in the chat. If I, I'll oh, say this, if I have all? to label the states with no assistance, then I get a little fucked up in the Northeast about Connecticut and Delaware. And I think Vermont, Woody told me something a while back that was supposed to be this little. Vermont has a V shaped like a V. V is up top by Maine. 
Here, here, do it. Here, do that test right so now. Vermont, New Hampshire, Vermont shaped like a V. I think. No, I'm going to embarrass myself. Of. Let's see. Oh, you just named the state straight up? Yeah, you just you hit play and then you just click on the thing when it says so it says Alaska. Continue Alaska. without supporting. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Continue without supporting. I've been trying yeah. to do this for literally five years and I finally fucking got it this last week. Math would fuck me on the IQ test as well. Nevada, Utah, Kansas, Colorado, Nebraska, South Carolina, Nebraska, Wyoming. Minnesota, I struggled Michigan, with Idaho. Iowa. No, I, I've been to Idaho, so I know that one. I've been to, I, I, so I've traveled the entire coast. Um, I, I just haven't been up north to that Rust Belt. So I don't know. I've got a grip on the Southwest and the West Coast. And like I said, it's just when I get to Vermont and um, Delaware. But now with Woody's help, that Vermont is the one shaped like a V, then that one's Delaware. And that's Connecticut. Mm -hmm. There's Vermont's Maine, the there's yeah. Rhode Island. And um, okay, you're just crushing it. I was getting like 60%. I was like, I was literally getting scoring better on European <laughs> math quizzes. Pennsylvania, New York, West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina. Yeah, I know. Oh, I may be a little. Are you taking it, Kyle? I'm taking it. Because I thought I knew him and I'm getting some wrong. Let me guess what you got wrong. Sure. You got Maryland wrong. No, I'm from Jersey. I'll know that. Damn. Okay. I'm taking it now. Louisiana? No, that one's easy because it's an L. It's the flyover states, like the Wisconsin, Iowa, Indiana area is all blur to me. Yeah, Missouri. Missouri's like right in the middle. That's how I like I remember that one. Ooh. I remember it by living here. Yeah, I think I know Missouri. Oh, are you in Missouri? Are you yeah, in Yeah, I'm in St. Louis. All right, hundred percent. Nice. There you go. Fuck. Ah. Okay. Well, fuck me, right? Um I'm I I like geography. Don't you travel a lot for your job though, or do do you not? No, no, not really. Like oh, I, no. I used to, but like not too much. Any like COVID shut that down. But yeah, that the states. I'm always being from the Midwest definitely gives you a leg up in like a states quiz because like yeah, yeah, I imagine yeah. if you're from California or the the East Coast, you're like Iowa, Nebraska, the Dakotas, Indiana. Like which ones? Whereas like I know all those down pat yeah. and then the northeast is not that complicated it's like what, what are you going to possibly mix up like N rhode island and delaware are the only ones and if you just know that delaware south of rhode island easy rhode island's the smallest one right? yeah it's the littlest one i got 90 and maryland is the one that looks the goofiest what'd you get wrong um wisconsin iowa indiana new mexico and mississippi new mexico yeah. that's just uh, switch, you there, Donna? i i think i um I thought, yeah, I switched it with Arizona. That's what happened. Yeah, so, I, I, honestly, I was I had to sit there for a second, went on that one, and be like, I fucking. I was been there, there recently, like a couple months ago. I stood in all four of those states at the same time, and I still fucked it up. Yeah, honestly, I just remembered I, it because oh, do I want to share my results. Sedona, Arizona, was like toward the end of my trip, but like New Mexico was kind of mid trip. I just I had to literally remember. Oh. Um, New Mexico is surprisingly beautiful. Um, like gore. Yeah. Oh, well, where, where, I, where I went, where I went, I don't know where you guys visited, but I went to. Some I went spot. through the ugly part with the poverty and uh, and the open spaces where you can blow shit up in, and where the survivalists live uh, out there in those <laughs> out there in the deserts where it flash floods, and you, you get you get marooned twenty miles out into Bureau of Land Management property for for half a day. It is a wasteland. It's what I Dude. imagine like a planet you wouldn't want to land. If we were flying through the galaxy and we saw a planet that just looked like New Mexico, we keep going. Okay. Dude, one I was in New Mexico, location. and like Kyle said, there were hundreds of miles of poverty with hardly a break. And what shocked me, every road seems to be practically paved with broken glass. These guys <laughs> throw bottles out of their car <laughs> like it's their job. I was like, what the fuck is this? New, Mex New Mexico median those are, income. Those is, are shattered vials. <laughs> New Mexico median household income is $51,000. I'm not I'm not here to rip on their their household income. What I'm going to tell you is the people I saw weren't just poor. They were like the in Star Wars, you know, sometimes you'll see the sand people and they're like like wah, 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 wah. And they're like living in like little like sheds. We drove past people who were living in houses made out of van tops. Now for those of you who don't know, in the 80s, conversion vans were the hip thing. You take a regular pedo van cut the top off of it literally with a saw and then replace it with this big high-rise fiberglass deal. 
that gave you more headroom. Yeah. And then you pimp the fucking thing out. This is right before SUVs happened. They used those. They'd have all these van tops, these big pieces of sheet metal with nothing to do with them. People would use them for th they were living in houses made of those when we drove past. My yeah. jaw dropped when I saw that. I was like, I didn't know we had that 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 in this country. It looked like Haiti. Dude, yeah, my, the places my, I saw that like they're, they're just corrugated roofs. I'm like, th this has all the construction prowess of a tree. My dad house. probably made that one. Hmm. My uh, my uncle's like one of those people. He lives. He like built his own home in New Mexico. It's on a plot of land where like the nearest neighbors twenty twenty minutes away. Like his home floor was like clay. <laughs> it was like clay. But he's cool. uh he's a bit like Frank Herbert. He's like a <clears throat> libertarian type. He thinks that private citizens should be able to own nuclear weapons. He's like that kind of a. A lot of those guys in New Mexico are of uh, similar leanings. The scarier gun guys I know live out there. Um, I don't mean scary like militia. Those guys live in, around West Virginia and, and Ohio, like up in there. But the more the survivalist type um, who, who are like prepared for whatever, those guys love New Mexico. I'm sure for some reason, I don't, I don't, I don't know what strategic value that area has, but they found some there. It was a huge culture shock when I went to visit them because my fa I have family out there and they, they live in this one town and the town that we visited was beautiful. There were, there were, it was lush and green and um but the town itself had i think literally um like 200 people that lived in it uh i think like the senior class that was graduating that year had i think seven people in it um That's itty bitty so it was like a huge culture shock obviously coming from suburbs of california visiting there but it was astonishingly pretty the place that i went to i liked to, the the most beautiful place in the us i've seen is sedona arizona i think um it's very beautiful there. They have that, they have red rock rock formations there. And there's a little bit little tourist town. You have to sort of drive round and round, descending into a canyon to get there, which was fun in its own right. Motorcycling there would be challenging. Um it but but fun. Um and then once you get there, it it was one of the better tourist trap towns I've ever been to. They had a real cowboy on one side of the street. I mean, like a, a man with a six shooter that, that was real because we talked to him. And like, like he was not a Halloween cowboy. He looked legit. And the other side, they had a real fucking Indian. They had a real fucking yeah. There it is. That's cool. They had, a, they had an Indian with a head with the headdress and the feathers and everything. And they would kind of mean mug each other when they 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 like caught each other's eye across the street and have a little showdown for a second, kind of play it up and then keep going. Have you ever been to Yosemite? Uh no, I I did not. I'm pretty biased. Do. I'm pretty biased, but California has a lot of really beautiful, like Big Sur is another like coastal city that's beautiful. But Yosemite is astonishing, like astonishing. What it's I did see that was pretty mind blowing. I, 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 I do you want to do your topic? I, I was going to ask if you had been to Mount St. Helens, like where the, I think there's a national thing there, a park there or something now. But have you ever seen the lava fields? Uh, no. I don't I know why they're. I had. I didn't know they existed. I knew that Mount St. Helens happened, big eruption. I thought mm -hmm. big, big boom or whatever. That's but in the Bay like, Area, right? Mount St. No, Helens. No, no, it's it was up more in dusty. I didn't realize there were lava fields. Lava fields. Mm -hmm. It looks like it, like black, rolling lava fields as far as you can see, and just out there you can go and grab lava rocks. Oh, wait, that, where was this? Um, it's up in the north uh, west. Um, okay. it, was it Washington? I think I I, I see. I drove from Seattle like down the um the coast. I may have been there. It's in Washington, yeah, near Portland. It, it looked actually. like Mars almost, right? I stole a lot of the rocks. I stole yeah. a lot of them. Not me. I was on a motorcycle. But... Yeah, I had a I had a truck. I I feel I you don't I load up a, a bike. Rocks. It's like you're hiking. You're like, I stole a lot of rocks. Really? That's terrible. But... Well, they were like lava rocks. It was cool. Like, oh, like yeah, I, no, they're cool. I guess I was just saying weight matters more in a bike. Oh yeah, they were also porous too. So so it's like yeah. that was one of the things I got at home. I like check out that rock, and people would pick it up and be super light. Somebody stole them. Somebody stole my really? goddamn lava rocks. I brought suckers. home a rock for Jackie Collin and and uh, Hope from Death Valley. Like these are Death Valley rocks, aren't they cool? No. Okay, I, I tried to. No, I like ones. that. Remember in Saving Private Ryan, Tom Hanks had a little bottle of sand from every beach, or maybe it was a uh, maybe it was one of his underlings. But he had he, had, he collected a little little bottle of earth from each oh, battlefield. Yeah, is that Vin Diesel them. that did that? Or it was one, one of the underlings? Yeah, one of the yeah. maybe. Uh, yeah. Um, I thought that was fucking neat, though. He, he all those battles. Maybe Sardinia was on there, like tons of battles. He'd been to every front. I, I went warm... to. Go ahead. 
You were talking about your favorite tourist trap town, Oatman, Arizona. Uh, Zach, there's a link if you could show some pictures. Dude, they're, like you talk about cowboys, there's donkeys just walking up and down the street. Burros? Burros. I guess, I guess so. <laughs> and uh, sure, the, the whole burro. town is designed like, yeah, that's what it looks like for real. And I just like, I guess I'll just park next to the donkeys and I, I load, park my bike and went walking around. This place is dope. What about movie set, right? <laughs> It looks like a movie set. It could be a movie set. There's a restaurant. Oh, that's in fun. There. I like this. They have dollars on the walls. I can hardly estimate how many dollars. There must have been seventy-five thousand dollars in singles, just wallpapering this restaurant. Some of them like two, three dollars deep, and they ran out of wall space. So now they're doing ceilings. They're doing like unused places you walk. It is so many one-dollar bills, and you're Dude. like. That's a comedy movie in it that writes itself, right? Like, like, robbing, like that fire. Yeah. robbing that place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be such a funny movie. <laughs> Instead of like normal burglar tools, they have those you don't staple removers. It's literally just sitting there. Sitting there. <laughs> they wildly overestimate it. It's got to be a million dollars. Like, <laughs> clearly not. You come back with 30 grand. No, I, I like uh, those tourist trap, trappy towns. Um, Myrtle Beach, Beach is pretty bad, but it, um, it, Myrtle Beach is nasty. It's a, is it's it? it's a little much. Yeah, you've never been to Myrtle Beach. I've, I've been to Myrtle Beach. It. I liked it. I thought uh, it was. Did you ever you ever been on Bike Week? No, uh, I don't think I'd like yeah. Bike Week. You've never seen so many genital piercings in your life. Oh, I wouldn't like <laughs> that. Eh, don't don't want to be forced it. to see that. <laughs> yeah, not on Main Street anyway. Do you guys get uh? Or I guess do you guys get tornadoes? Any of you? Yes. California, yeah. Probably not. You do. Like really? uh, it's like tornado season now. Like um, hopefully you couldn't hear it in the beginning of this episode. It was like whipping, and we're getting a bunch of hail and tornadoes. Oh, I think it's so probably cool. almost over now. But uh, last night I was sleeping. It was probably like two thirty three in the morning, and I'm like awoken by the tornado sirens. Like if you live in an area with tornadoes, oh, like you just hear like the whoop, like they just start going yeah. real loud, and like I could hear like. Like, you know, when the wind is going so hard, it sounds like trees are almost cracking, like just so loud right outside my my window. And I like woke up like almost in a stupor and was like, Ugh, uh, and like I know in my head, it's like I've lived in the Midwest my whole life. It's like, all right, when it's alarm, like when the alarm's going off like this and there's clearly a lot of violent wind and whatnot going down, you're supposed to like go down in your basement. And like, I was so tired though. I just had like the thought just viscerally. I was like, if I die, I die. And I just, <laughs> and I just stayed tucked in like Homer Simpson under those uh, covers, just so comfortable. And it panned out, not dead. That's how I handled fire yeah, alarms. A couple trees college. are down. Yeah, there was yeah, a bunch should. of bunch yeah. of hail. Not we, we didn't get hail like that in my neck of the woods, but we did get some hail. Before mm. I bought this house, a tornado like dish pretty much destroyed my stable like it ripped the roof off and stuff mm -hmm. and chiz and i fixed it we went out there and i don't know reframe the roof and put all the freaking plywood down and whatever yeah the tornado like during like tornado weather it's so cool when it's not stormy because like the sky's like greenish and it's just like a, an eerie kind of aura around mm -hmm. but then you know you don't, you don't actually want a tornado to touch down how big is the risk like so you live in a populated area. Does that lower the tornado risk? Does it change the way they develop? No. Uh, it, it the the people who are highest at risk are people in big flat areas, and I live in a hillier area, and so like oh. it's not actually like there's not going to be a touchdown near me. So if there was a well stocked oh, like thousand house subdivision, but it was flat, that'd be a problem. It could be. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, so that's like, that's what happened to, uh, to Joplin, Missouri, like 10 years ago when that whole town got flattened. Cause it's just a bunch of fields surrounding a totally flat town. Oh, remember, and so like wait. around where I am, it's like, it would be like trees getting knocked down. That's the problem or like big storms, but it, I hopefully in the South it's mobile homes, it, like so many people are in mobile homes that the if a tornado hits a mobile home, you die. And oh yeah. People, like, like they're made of nothing. Um, they're just sheet yeah. metal and fiberboard. Like it, they literally explode. There's no basement. There's nowhere worse to be than a mobile home if a tornado yeah. hits. They're not even sitting on the ground. They're sitting on blocks. Once you blow that vinyl siding off the bottom, it's the like you're borderline better going in your yard and laying down flat than staying in a mobile home. Yeah, I'm, I'm, are. I'm like as a Californian with no as flat as you experience. can lay at that size. 
it, tornadoes to me are horrifying. But then when I talk to people that live in other places, like they seem to be horrified of um, earthquakes. So it's kind of like yeah. reverser, or like reverse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I've, I've had, never had an earthquake experience. We had like one tiny one and people were like, oh my God. But it's funny, the LA transplants, like, because so, you'll see anytime there's a miniature earthquake, you'll see like streamers that are in LA reacting. And I saw one recently. It was like such a tiny little earthquake. It was nothing. But she got up. She's like, earthquake, earthquake, earthquake. She like ran out of the other room. <laughs> um, do, do, are you guys like irrationally afraid of earthquakes or do you just not give a fuck? I no, I desperately want to experience one. That's where I am. I, on this I've been we're on a big fault line in the middle of the country here. And so if we get one, it's going to be a rough like San and up. Yeah. But hopefully no, that won't happen. I've been in two. One was in LA when I was visiting. Hmm. Uh, I slept through both of them. I woke up and, and, and people were like, "Did you feel that last night? Everybody at the, everybody at like the place I'm going is always like, did you feel it? Oh yeah, I felt it. I think they're all lying. I think one guy made it up. And I, like the, the weatherman told a tall tale. I don't think any of them felt it because I sleep right through that shit. What the bed jostled a little? That's supposed to wake me and I'm supposed to identify it? Please. I, I, I could have woken and forgotten it. I got to experience the big one in the Bay Area in 1989. It was like a 6.7. It yeah. did a tremendous amount of damage. It was crazy too. Is that because when they pancake those people? Yeah. Uh, the yeah. bridges, right? The Bay yeah. Bridge. That was nuts. But you know what was even crazier was, you know who was playing in the fucking World Series that year? Oh. No. It was the A's versus the Giants. It was a it was the battle of I knew the it was Bay. Giants. And during a game, this giant earthquake took place. So it was just crazy timing. Damn. That what happened to the game? That. They stopped it then, and then they picked it. They up. They all react. It's great. it was a bad. The, it was bad. Wow. It was a bad earthquake. It yeah, did they're, a, like, they're like you know, yeah, the like Kyle. I slept through an earthquake that I didn't even know about. And then one time I was at work, and people are like, "Did you feel the earthquake?" And it's like. I didn't feel it. I was in a room with other people. Nobody mentioned it. Like it, it was minor. Yeah, it's nonsense. What yeah, that was, the ant- <laughs> that was crazy. It's impressive imagine- they can build buildings to resist that. Like I know every building in Japan is like yeah. so specially built because they anticipate can, they get wild earthquakes all the time. Mm, well, I think there was, the there was a yeah. Oh, dude, it was nuts. Um, there was a need. There was a. One of the worst earthquake earthquakes ever, I think, was in San Francisco at like the turn of the century. Yeah, and it like burned the entire city down. It was it was like horrifying. It wasn't that bad, but did we they were, repair like, San Francisco pretty quickly? Do you remember? I know you must have been young. I was a little boy. I was like six. So I don't yeah. know. I have no. You idea weren't up to date on the infrastructure repair. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you were playing. You might know though. Yeah, like like there was a big spot. fire on. This won't mean a lot to most of you, but I-95 is incredibly important um, highway. And I think in Philadelphia, I'm one of their major interstates. It might have been I-95 burnt down. So the bridge was just burnt. And uh, that just the whole Philadelphia area goes to a standstill. Like they don't they don't have the infrastructure to move the traffic without that road. And they fixed it in like two weeks. It was amazing. When does road repair take two weeks? I, you don't understand. It was like it was not that different than that bridge we just saw. It collapsed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the, and, the the famous image was a bit on the Bay Bridge where there was a column that fell and in in eighty nine and and a car just straight up. Let me see if I can find the footage of that. Yeah. Yeah. Did that guy wild. die? I don't know. It, it wasn't great. <laughs> yeah. He, he died. Um, right. Really? I think I could survive that. Wow. Well, not it's, that. I'm talking about that other thing he showed, where the bridge pancaked onto the the lower. But version. if you're on the top, like it does it fall quickly or? Does oh, if you're on the top, like, you're fine. Or... I'm talking about in the bottom. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. yeah all right. No, on the, the top, it's like wee. If you're yeah. on the bottom, it's like the no. Tons of concrete and rebar. Yes, you will die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, on the no bottom, chance. your your odds are unless are longer, but... they are a genetic super soldier bred by the CCP with Jackie Chan's DNA mixed with that of a nephew. They wouldn't let him be riding around willy nilly during an earthquake. Baron Trump would hold that shit up while everyone ran. They were he transporting would. him from one dark site to another for security purposes. They rotate the, him every month. Every once in a while, I like get into watching either natural disaster videos or dam failures. And they're just the most interesting video, like particular like tsunamis and dam failures. I'll find myself on that YouTube rabbit hole sometimes. And it's like conceptually, you understand like, man, that amount of water, that amount of force suddenly bursting through a dam, that's got to create a ton of damage. But like you don't fully get it until you see it. And it's like giant, like excavator sized, like in a mine, like not normal sized 18 wheeler trucks. Like they just get tossed like they're nothing. 
nothing at all. And the people, just tiny little specks. It's like it's car- that water is carrying rocks bigger than your house. Like you're, you know, yeah. you know what the ultimate is for you then. Powerful. So you, do you know about the Three Gorges Dam in China? Yes, I've 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 read about world's that largest dam. If someone were to say launch a few rockets at it and make it fail, do you know how many people are in the direct path of the largest tidal wave of all, of modern history? Yeah, four hundred million in the direct path of the tidal wave. It's yeah. a real problem for China if they got into like a global war with someone who's capable of you know blowing up a dam from the other side of the world. Was it Sri? Really? Was it Sri Lanka that had that? tsunami that killed like two hundred thousand people Do you indonesia but it was the whole like area the tsunami was so goddamn big that was 2000 2004 like 11, I I, yeah that's the year i graduated well, i remember our, our yearbooks had that shit in it it was dark <laughs> there's a there's a movie called the uh the impossible with ewan mcgregor that where they where they it was a real life family that got affected by that and it's i saw that dude, if there's yeah. another huge tidal wave we're gonna get so much great footage. of course it was they made a movie everyone has cameras now. they made It'll a be... movie about the indonesian tsunami with a white family star <laughs> yeah <laughs> dude the videos like uh some of the clips uh, it's uh from like the thai tsunami i think or maybe the, the japanese one i don't remember but like you can see people taking like vacation videos and they're still on the beach and like it's just a small amount coming in and it's like a horror movie you're watching like i you i know what's going to happen in like 2 hours and it's almost it's like it's almost too late for you're this watching person. somebody get dressed to go to the twin towers almost you're like yeah no, it's when the it's when the water no, pulls no, back is when you know yeah. you're fucked yeah and it's like oh no like it's swelling up it's about to come in hard and then, like even the water there, pullback is enough to like pull cars across the road mm-hmm. if you're not from there I, I look at it and I'm like, would I make good decisions, right? Obviously, watching the video in hindsight, I can make good decisions. But if I was there and I didn't know, am I confident I'd recognize a water pullback on some beach I don't normally go to? I would. I would. Yeah. For I these, would start running because I've seen the movies now. I've seen yeah. How quickly does it pull yeah. back? Does it pull back over the course of 40 minutes? Is no, no, no. Like, like, I don't know. Right now, the ocean gets eaten. Like you watch, You're like, whoa, what's happening? What's happening right now? Oh, that's what happens before a tsunami. The ocean just got taken away. Everyone flee. Hey, everyone flee, tsunami. And then you run as fast as you can. I need to here. see it. Because if, if it happens like you say, and in like five minutes, the ocean's pulled less. back like that. Or less. I, got it. I definitely know. But I, maybe I'm wrong. I thought it took longer. I thought it took like 40 minutes for the ocean to withdraw like that. No. It's pretty fast, it's yeah. It's pretty to fast, get, though. To get a little morbid with you. Would you rather die peacefully in your bed or would you rather die like seeing a fucking enormous comet coming to hit the oh, earth? Oh, the comet. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, okay. A thousand what? times the other one. I'm with a you. A thousand times the other one. Let me tell you why. All right. So I'm going to make up a scenario. You can co-sign it if you want. But the scenario is like, you know, the asteroid's coming and it's going to like knock humanity out. If, if you know, three months to go, I would love that. That's so much better than dying peacefully in my sleep. I get three months of like craziness doing whatever the fuck I want. I get I and I get to see the coolest fireworks show of all time. I'm not gonna be try to be one of the privileged few to starve in the bunkers and in, in, in the Greenland tunnels. Years. I'm 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 gonna get on a high mountain somewhere and I'm gonna fucking watch that shit go down. I'm gonna be drunk and high and get my dick sucked. It's gonna be great. All Just right? witnessing That's something how- like that would be incredible. So like I don't know. I this think this might I'm- work out because I'd like to be on a mountain sucking dick when it happened yeah. I, knew, <laughs> I knew that was your greatest wish there's a really good, there's a really no, good movie here, called, here we come there's a really good movie called seeking a friend for the end of the world with steve carell where uh mm. humanity knows that a comet's coming in like three weeks and it just kind of examines what different people do and it's really fucking they go to a restaurant and everybody there is just tripping on fucking molly um yeah. <laughs> uh, loud music just at fucking applebee's everyone yeah, with their credit cards that would, I mean, I would much rather die peacefully. Oh, the economy would sleep. immediately crash, and then there would be mass hysteria if, if if they found out. That's what would actually happen. There would be mass hysteria because all there would be a run on the banks because the all of a sudden there would be rapid, rapid hyperinflation. Not like oh, bread's expensive this week. Like I don't have any money anymore because money's not worth anything. Because why you know, would there be a run work? on the banks? Because wouldn't wouldn't money instantly become 
yeah, valueless. Like no, because market. right away the bank run on free. Walmart and Walgreens and because the, yeah. to try to preempt what 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 is inevitable, the governments would would try to freeze the money in the banks, and it would get out that they were going to freeze that money. So people would say they're not freezing my money. I'm going to go get it, and then there'd be a run on the banks, and they would still freeze all the money, and then the economy would crash anyway. Would the and government everyone, even be functioning at that point? Like no, you'd I, have the mil you would have military outposts. It'd be complete mass hysteria. If, if, if everyone would melt down, who is the government fighting? It'd be the it'd be just be the populace at at large. And what are they fighting for? Bread and TVs, probably. If and I'm how long honest. are those military men going to be following orders when it's nobody's like, getting paid? It's huh, that episode uh, of Rick I and Morty. Yeah, it's that Dude, episode I do of Rick think, and Morty though, when he changes a one to a zero. That's what mm -hmm. happens when you. When I the do world think ends in three weeks. I do think there'd be a ton of service members that would show up and volunteer to like keep order. No, they got families Maybe initially. They got families. But, yeah, and some of them We're don't have going. like strong family ties. Then you don't they, think that there might, would be people that would like be now's my moment, you know, I'm gonna do the right thing. Like I swear. Yeah, no, I, or or no. people who would see an opportunity to be like, Yeah, I can be a very brief window warlord. No. And you'd have like splintered no. groups of of everybody's going home to their families and then they're gonna do what they have to do to keep their families alive and well fed and safe, which means killing each other. So it's just gonna be a shit show. There's not gonna be a like like some military position where it's like, Yeah, sir, for king and for for for, for the commander in chief and our our no, red, white, and blue. It's like the whole world's going to explode in three weeks, you know? You're going to you go think, to your mom. Do you think that... Did you guys see the movie Greenland, by the way? It kind of no. like... Uh, no, but I saw the end of that movie uh, with Brad Pitt with the zombies, where they... I think yeah, they yeah. also went to Greenland. <laughs> is that Greenland, Gerard, is Greenland is that Greenland is, is Gerard Butler? Phenomenal. Yeah, it, it... No, that movie is fucking really good, because they try to make it super realistic. Like, he gets, like, a push notification on his phone. He's like, I don't know why I was picked, and then, like, uh, they gotta go, the, and they gotta... Anyways, it's a really good the movie. The last but... Hutch movie recommendation, I couldn't have disliked more. It Which one? It was such a miss for me. Which I'm gonna one? get the title close. Like, everybody, everywhere, all at once. The... Get out of here. That's a fucking... No! Academy Award so winning... Best movie of that year. Fucking oh my stupid. god, it was so everything I'm all at once. In, in between you two, I was entertained okay. the whole time, but afterward, I wasn't like blown away. I was like, oh, that kept my attention. It was like, wonderful. Was all right, I wasn't blown. But away you liked it too. Yeah, oh, not I as much as, as at the time. Hutch said it might have been the best movie he's ever experienced in his life. I still believe that. Okay. Yeah, yeah more than Lord of the Rings. Sandra the oh, way. Yeah, I, 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 I Hutch. Oh, I'm sorry, Kyle. Gay. I just Michelle Yo, on Michelle that. Yo, Michelle Yo. Thank you, Sandra. That that's the other one with the really flat face from uh, the Doctor Show. Um, I liked it a lot. It kind of lost me a little at the end because the chubby daughter character kept like transitioning from like one thing to another. I don't mm. know. That's a like, like something about her performance what sort of paled in comparison to the other actresses' performance, and, and and I just felt like she was out acted and and not right for that role or, or something. It single-handedly rebooted what's his name's career for it's sure. like such a, such a crazy story too because like he saw crazy rich asians and he called he's like you know what because he had been like directing theater mm -hmm. and he called up his agent and he was like you know what i want to like there looks like there might be some like asian representation in hollywood going on here so let me see if i can get back out there and two weeks later he got an audition for that movie got the role and then got a fucking oscar for it and now he's yeah. No. Good for him. I thought man. he was good really? in that role. I thought he. Yeah. Was. I loved him as Indiana Jones' fucking sidekick. <laughs> I like him. <laughs> but, um, I, yeah. I, I hope you don't mind asking. I was hoping to get it before the show. Have you done Molly? I have a, Lo lots. Yeah. I was hoping you'd say that. I've never done Molly, but I yeah. started looking into it, and they described it in a way that really turned me off. It was like you take the next three days' joy, and you get it in three hours. And that the next three days, it's a real down and not a good vibe. No, nah, I don't agree. I mean, like, so the thing with Molly, like a lot of amphetamine stuff is you, you know, there, when you're high, you don't want to come down. So like, if you've ever tried Coke or, you know, mm -hmm. like it, it, it's like coming down, you don't, you don't want to. So, and so, so some people, when they take Molly, they'll do this thing called like re-upping. So like some oh, people will take like, they'll take one pill or two press pills. And then two hours later, they'll, do, they'll take like a half a pill. And it's like, they treat it like a booster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it's like really diminishing returns. There's really no point in doing that. Like less is more when it comes to Molly, in my opinion. But if you take like one pill and you know, you don't like you eat right, you know, drink enough water, um, try to take care of your body, like as much as you can, you're not going to, I don't think you're going to have like a three day crash. I think that's Where wildly exaggerated. Get Molly. Okay. So oh, I got it from a guy I went to college with. You know, I where could to get text Molly. him. <laughs> <Did you laughs> I can see, hey, Did I haven't talked to you in 16 years. 
Could you mail you me some Molly? Yeah, I'll, I'll mail you some Molly. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, hey, hey. Send Kyle Myers. Box. We want to keep this on the down low. On the, send it to the P.O. box. No problem. <laughs> you, can, you can find Molly. Come on. They yeah, have, like, I have a couple of friends in like my motorcycle and paramotor world who Don't I think know how to find everything. So I, I could ask. I bet I'd find a source. It was originally developed, I believe. I could be wrong. I was originally developed for marriage counseling. So like couples that were having problems would come in and then... Have roll their face off and um it's a really kind of unique experience because you're not like the body high is not it's not you know like if you take acid if you smoke weed there's like a physical component to it mm -hmm. but with molly it's like it's literally it's literally you're just really fucking happy you know what people you that are <laughs> all jokes you're, aside you're not even kidding you and jack need to go to a taylor swift concert and take molly <laughs> if you're I'm gonna sure do it, have do a it at great a, time. Just me and fields of thirteen-year-old girls. I've, I've <laughs> only done it at concerts. You I, like I can't you like T Swift? Doing it at a, hey, like Travis will be there. Wear your Travis jersey, and and nobody will think twice. They'll they'll, they'll, they'll you'll welcome sense. you in as one of them, and then they'll see your eyes then, and they'll know. Guys, <laughs> Skrillex in two thousand nine on Molly was wild. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you tried it, Taylor? Yeah, yeah, a couple times in college, but not, okay. Like, just, can I get? Every Just a day. second opinion on the crash afterwards. Did you find it not to be as terrible as I read? No, it, I, I mean, I didn't feel great the next day, but like, it wasn't like, I think in, you know, I was like 1920. So it's been a, a good while ago now, but I remember like alcohol hangovers being worse. Like you get fucking hammered on some cheap college vodka that someone probably stole. Like, that next day is worse than when I took Molly. But I also wasn't, I never did what Hutch is describing there. Like my It'd buddy who had it would just be like, all right, everybody, here's your Molly. And then you went to the concert and it's not like we were re-upping, taking more there. It's like, that was, we yeah. smoked weed at the concert and mm -hmm. like that kind of, you know, mellowed yeah, it out a little bit. That helps. Hangover is yeah. almost like sickness. And mm -hmm. I didn't hear anything about much sickness. It was like, no, Molly no, is joy. Not, no, not like and that. And post Molly is the opposite of joy. What like depression's a different kind of loaded yeah. where sadness a, is better. Yeah, I think that's I think that's almost like memed up where people are like, Oh, you know, oh. that Molly, like it's gonna wreck you for the next day. And it's like maybe if you're taking if maybe you do a shit ton of it, the same way that like yeah, oh, doing lean. taking two having two beers versus having twenty two beers. Yeah, like it's the same substance, but one morning is going to be way worse than the other. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, EDC 2015, I did. I took an absurd amount of Molly and like that for <laughs> sure. That for sure. Like the next week I was like, my body was not OK. Um, <laughs> Your body was, was not OK. So yeah. you weren't just like. Because it fucked with my appetite and it fucked with my sleep. And then, you know, once then it, then it's like a cascade effect. So now it, there's like three different things fucking with your body yeah. it didn't stand a chance against my if appetite. i could do any illegal drug <laughs> i would the first illegal drug i would start with is that wild west opium i want to smoke it out of that chinaman pipe you know you go in those yeah. tents out behind the saloon where you kept them and then he'd hand you that long pipe and he'd have like a, a lady suck your dick that long smoky toke I, I want to toke on that thing and just get ripped i don't know where you get that old school west wild west opium but i would love some if it were legal what the um, fuck are that, you talking about you know, like, about, like, like you smoke in an opium den, just literally, like, what, like what Sherlock yeah, Holmes did. Smoking straight up opium out of one of those. But I want it to be from a Wild West, like Chinese immigrant who's like got it out behind the saloon in a tent. Like, like That's in, such uh, a bad stuff. drug to get into opium. You're Dude, really I would love that. that. And, and if, if not that, then lean. I really want to try lean. Um, yeah. But, Ooh, but I want juice world done. Is that the one well, where they mix two things? Like yeah, he had Martin? one glass and he died. Yeah. That's where <laughs> oh, you mix. Yeah, no. uh, His name is Juice World. Is that like the, yeah, and like um, Skittles or something. Yeah. I don't know. Codeine it, is. It's like yeah. cough syrup. Yeah. It's like codeine, cough syrup, and yeah. Yeah. So what you're doing is you're all the other ingredients are super, like don't matter. The 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 main ingredient is codeine, cough syrup, which in most states they add um, an additive to to make it taste like shit. But when I got it, it tasted delicious. It basically tastes like flavored syrup that you would, you know, you get those uh, in the summer, you get those ice cones and then they pump the syrup on top. Yeah. yeah, yeah That's yeah. what it tastes like. Deliciousness. Oh, Strawberry sorry. deliciousness. I would and OD on that. <laughs> I had the, my throat was bleeding. It was so bad. So like a sip of that was like manna from the gods. It was like instant opium going into my wounds. 
like in my throat and it was th- it was like thick oh. and syrupy and delicious and so i sipped on that fucking i had a pint i had a pint of that shit so you i think I'm on the sorry. street it was a couple grand i got twisted <laughs> on your story your your throat was sore beforehand it was before bad. i was very ill oh. so i was prescribed it that's my experience with the shit they oh. take that and they add it they add like sprite to like thin it out and like like make it not a syrup like, like a drink you could sip on that's not mm-hmm. so potent and i'm sure like maybe the skittles Who did this or... for you did you like internet oh no no, no. I, i've never drank lean i've been prescribed coating cough syrup and i've just sipped it straight out of the bottle driving oh, down the road, okay riding down the road i didn't drive. <laughs> are you guys um familiar with I drove. have you heard of just a minx she's a creator she's a streamer no i, I don't think so touched into current culture just here. A minx? Here, here look at this that i just put in the chat that's kind of scary Fans worried for Just Minx due to what appears to be an overdosing. This is so sad. Someone please get her help. She's sitting in her chair um, wearing like a um, a Snuggie. Um, she's got a hat on. And she's sort of, she's just like chin to chest, sort of nodded out, as they she's say. Doing the, she's doing the, the fentanyl thing. Yeah. The, the zombie uh, do, I need, do I need volume for this? No, I'm just saying like. Oh, she's chatting. She's, saying, she's talking. We were talking about drugs and I just yeah. saw that pop up. Yeah, she's Facebook. probably all right. People that's too so, judgmental. It's such Boy. a dangerous thing to get into. Like what? We don't know what she's on. She's just fucking tuckered out from a long day of streaming. I actually did that before the show. I napped in a chair. That's <laughs> just, in a chair maybe just she's nodded 50. out. Yeah, <laughs> you that, know you can I mean you can tell when you're like walking around, like it, when I go to St. Louis, like walking around the city, like you can see people and be like, Oh, that guy's on opiates. That guy's on like fentanyl. Really? Like he's doing that, that like opiate, like fucked up shuffle where like they're taking like weird, disjointed, slow little nud- nudging steps. Right. My they're, superpower they're, like, is stop at forward. identifying fetal alcohol syndrome. I can't, <laughs> I can't tell you what yeah, drugs you are. I right even, <laughs> I like opiates. I like opiates so much. I even like that they make you itchy. That like, I don't, if you've never taken opiates and you don't know. They make you itchy all over. I have and once, so you, and that's the only when, when my eardrum was bursting yeah. when I was eighteen. Uh, my mic, there was like the the woman at the urgent care looked in my ear because I'm like, man, my ear hurts, so I don't want to go to a doctor. And so I put it off for a while, and she like went in there. I was with my girlfriend at the time and my mom, and we were at CVS and like that back clinic. And she's like, let's take a look at your ear here. And she like went in to like look and like was visibly alarmed. She's like, oh you must be in a great deal of pain. And I'm like, yeah. And then she's like, all right, well, here's fucking eat, eat, eat Tylenol or whatever. And I was, that's not going to, that wasn't cutting it. And so I went home and my mom had some, like, like some Percocet from like an old, uh, Pop Percocets. I'm uh, a nervous wreck. All right. And so I took one of those and I, did, like, I felt like really relaxed, but I also got that itchy feeling. Yeah. And I was like, all right, this is the last hey. of this forever. Is morphine, like- is morphine an opiate? Yes. It's, yes. it's the, 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 one of the most purest forms of opiates. Okay. So yeah. I had surgery done and I had, they gave me that little thing where you can click it and give yourself. Yeah. And I remember my skin, like it felt like kind of burning, but yeah, itchy. It's like Dude, never, thing has it? never done anything for me. I might be immune to opiates. I'm, I'm like, is this a placebo button that they've given me? I don't get um, it at all. Have you had morphine? That's the button I'm talking about. Yeah. I, I've had um, a lot of surgeries. I do stupid things. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I definitely. I, yeah, sorry. Go I've on. never. I was just gonna say I've never taken opiates that weren't prescribed to me. But every time they, they get prescribed to me, I'm gleeful. Like Tylenol <laughs> three. There's something called Tylenol three, and yeah, they got, sure. the, I remember I got my uh, wisdom teeth uh, uh, taken out, and he's like, oh, "I'm gonna give you Tylenol three. and I'm like, "No, I told you, I want real drugs. I'm a grown man. I don't want Tylenol. He's like, "No, no, no, no. Tylenol three is half Tylenol and half opiates." And I'm like, "Oh." Why didn't you fucking just say so? <laughs> All right, let's go. You're and he gave your me doctor. Like, gave me like seven of them or something. These big fucking pills, and I, lo- I was, I was watching them like slowly diminish, thinking like, man. <laughs> i hated morphine when i had. What do surgery. I get more? I hated yeah. it. I felt like physically like Started breaking my own fingers. Like, apparently, like the itchiness and that tingling feeling doesn't happen for a lot of people. Just some yeah. people get it. And I am very thankful that was my first and only experience with that kind of drug. Pill and powder drugs skeeve me out so much. I want nothing to do with them. I'd rather not take the pill. I'd rather smoke it or I'd rather drink it. Um, But but I do want like a chick with nice nails to like scritch on me after I take them. That's the best. If 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 the Hmm. comet was coming, would you fucking just full send and just do some heroin or what? Oh yeah, I finally want Molly. I do. I I would do all. There's no tomorrow. I just take too much Molly. 
I think I would take a lot of, I think I would get on uh, all the drugs. I think meth sometimes if you're having fun, like if you're, if I was doing like, I don't know if I decided I wanted to go like do some skydiving or something, I'm going to skydive on meth. All right. Like, like if I'm going to do an adventure shit, <laughs> like, 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 you know, uh, if I've got a month to, to and I'm, I'm dying a month, maybe I knock out a little bucket list and on there, there's some sort of ad adventure sport nonsense I want to do. Or mm -hmm. maybe I just go on some quick vacation to Hawaii. And while I'm there, they're like, Oh, you can do this thing. And I'm like, there's no way I'm not jumping the ramp over that active volcano. Sure, strap me in. So, because you know yeah. we're gonna die in a week anyway. So I would want to do shit like that on meth. I'd want to be like really fucking into it. First drug for the comet coming is weed. Zero percent chance I'm smoking weed as as the comet is coming down. Not gonna be chill. It's gonna be like, no. oh, fuck, like when you bro. when you smoke weed, you want to already be in a nice space of like relaxation. You, you don't want to be. You're gonna be like, what if there's hell? Like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't really say that. This don't whole say that. Oh, yeah. why did you say that? Now it's in my head. Oh, what if there is hell? Oh <laughs> shit, we messed up, bad oh, boys. Big time. Go real south. If, Taylor, uh, what can we do? You know weed. God, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you were baptized. Tell me what to do. <laughs> I'm to try and save you at the last. You've minute. been washing the blood of the lamb, right? <laughs> Come with me. I'll get you. Were you a carpenter? <laughs> oh, well, I need an arc, Woody, fast. <laughs> yeah, life would get bananas with a, a fireproof arc. <laughs> and then, but that NASA would do their shit where they're like, a comet is whizzing by a razor's edge from our solar or from our planet. And then you like click on the article and the ninth paragraph is like a mere 2 trillion miles away, <laughs> which in the space of space is actually right next I, door. And it's like, I, shut up. Fuck you for that. Like that's that's Trillions so big. It's closer than yeah. that. It's I like they got me like in 2008 where they're like life on Mars discovered, and I'm like, oh, Every click so on it, and they're like, there one. could be. This looks like it could have been a shape made by. You're so uh, hung Tara up on that one thing. I feel like you must have gone to school because they like, got me right here. There's mm. life on Mars. Everybody know, and somebody was like, no, there's not, idiot, and like everybody laughed. You bring that up every time when you shit on NASA. You're like, they got me that one time in 2008. Never again. I'll never me. believe I was, science because I was excited to see the news, and then I felt so foolish when I opened it up and read it, and was like, oh, so they fibbed on. They fibbed to me. What's your money on for the apocalypse? Super volcano comment. What do you think? Oh, like what do you mean? Like how humanity ends? Yeah, I, I don't think we do. I think we'll be. I think I think we got this. You think we're going to be um, a multi-planetary species? Yeah, yeah. I Eventually, do. I think we can. Yeah, I, I think I think we can be in the next hundred years, hundred fifty years, or something like that at our current pace. I don't know about that. How are we going to terraform? Are you talking about terraforming Mars? No. Okay. Mean? No, I don't know. Now terraforming. So look. Yeah, that's feel, true. Mars sucks. If you look at where we were, <laughs> and how how recent the industrial revolution was, or even better, like if you look, we just figured out flight, like. 120 years ago or something like that and now we're doing crazy shit if we could stay on a similar arc like i, I feel like the technology is required to go to another star system seem so far beyond us but then like those people who, who didn't believe in flight like a, a space shuttle would be just as far beyond their comprehension as well the they, only thing that they, the only thing that kind of makes tree. sense the only thing that kind of makes sense is the um solar sails because the problem with like traveling to another system is is, is fuel. Like the nearest system, I think, is like sixty thousand light years away. So, as if we can figure well, out, you got to pick a good one, though, right? When you get there, it's got to work. What right. You, get, yeah. you ever go out to dinner and the restaurant's closed when you get there? But oh wait, we we only had exactly enough gas to get here, and there's no there's no oxygen at, at, in, anymore. Yeah, and they have to live it <laughs> out back. <laughs> yeah. Like that, now we're now we have to live at a rundown outback steakhouse that's that's been closed for six months. Yeah, I think your mother gonna, doesn't want to gonna use ways like an adult. There's an I, interesting moral thing going on here where you have these multi-generational spaceships to go to a planet that might be habitable. So it's a spaceship, you're on it, you know that you're not getting there, but your grandkids will. But you've signed up your children and your grandchildren for a mission that they didn't consent to. Like this is a life that they might not have We wanted. all do. Yeah, well, and there could be a riot. Has. Every every mm -hmm. human signs their kid their, their kid up for a for a mission that they didn't ask for and and that mission is going to vary. Look, people all okay. over the earth have it hard and are born into scary shit. It's the way of humanity. the The way the generational ship should work, in my opinion, is you've got AI running the whole thing. Everybody is in vitro. They're they're fucking embryos that are going like to be Prometheus. thought out. 
like Prometheus, exactly like Prometheus, except there's no human. You can't freeze people. Wait, you get, where's you the to, wisdom come from if they're, everyone's From the baby. AI. From the AI. The, so the, the baby just learn from the AI as they grow. Yeah, it'll t- yeah, you'll you'll have AI it's that the teaches the generation baby. of fucking weirdos. Like, oh, that's like the yeah. HBO. What was <laughs> the it? Yeah. Yeah. No, we'll yeah. give them we'll give them the full Netflix catalog. So they'll be all going to be autistic. Culture. The whole the new planet is going to be nothing but train sets, as far as the eye can see. <laughs> but, but Dude, let's not people. make fun of train sets. It's my next hobby. I think. No, maybe <laughs> I, I pray you did the train. And that way, you could like maybe get it to work if you if you knew where you were going and it was going to work. Other than that, though, like I'm not even talking about. I feel like traveling so slow is just silly. Like you've got to figure out another way to go. You got to figure out that thing where you like fold space and stick that pencil through that piece of paper. You know, you've got to figure that out. What if we can shrink people and make the earth seem bigger? (laughs) That's the premise of a, of a movie with, um, yeah, honey, I have kids. I'm familiar. No, well, that was an accident. Um, Matt Damon one, the Matt Damon one. Downsizing. Yeah. Downsizing. So if you think about it, Basically, you pay, you you pay this company and they shrink you down and put you in this tiny little paradise because it's cheap to make a tiny paradise. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, a little like pool, a tiny, tiny oh, mansions, okay. tiny sports car, tiny beachfront property, and so so uh, you know your money goes a long way if you're tiny in the tiny world. I've never seen the movie. It's I, I felt like once I knew the premise, I'd seen the movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's probably not a lot more to it. I don't know though. I haven't seen it. Yeah, and that's the but, list of movies um, I have not seen. But yeah, I, I don't think we're going to another star system until we figure out another way of going that that doesn't involve just like firing up some engines. I don't care if it's plasma or some sort of compressed gas or solar cells. If you're not going faster than the speed of light, faster a, than it, faster. then you're not. It's also, a, it. it's also a funding way problem. faster. <clears throat> it's also a funding problem because like, how are you gonna how are you gonna summon the political will to like raise funds for like a you know, like what Woody said, where you're sending like a fleet of, you know, 300 ships to like different systems or whatever that mm. may or may not get there. It's like, well, you know, we're spending trillions of dollars on this with like we're yeah. not getting anything from no it. guarantee you of a payoff even for the people on the ship. You would have had to like uh, that. That's again why, like, if the goal just simply isn't colonization because this planet's going to fail, like if you can see the writing on the wall that like, look, the, the seas have become acidic. The, the like the algae doesn't process CO2 anymore. Like we're a dead planet. Like, like we'll we'll never completely go extinct. But the idea of supporting more than a million humans not on this rock. Like, if that kind of writing's on the wall, then maybe they do that generational to another place with embryos. That and seems thing. almost sci-fi. But I know what you mean with like stuff we have right now seeming like sci-fi a hundred years ago. But like, well, as, as insurmountable as terraforming Mars is, like, it seems more insurmountable to find a maybe a marginally better Mars a billion zillion light years away well we're well, gonna I, have the telescopes are gonna get better i i think so like maybe in 100 years we're, we can have like fucking 4k images of yeah you know that system over I there think, and it's like they can, can already we, can we even see it accurately they always say like that so, light from a star is like yeah you'd be so seeing old. Like, it's like you're 10, looking thousand years ago or whatever yeah. like, oh this planet rocked an eon ago let's fingers crossed hope it's still well, that well great. that's how it works you're looking at you know the light that left that object however far away it is yeah. in light years in, so it's a risk no matter away. what you do but the with that james webb telescope they can look at planets and they and based on the light that's coming off and what color they are they can detect elements they can t- yeah. because different elements are illuminated at different um wavelengths and they can see that there's planets with co2 and oxygen and water they yeah. they, they can't tell like like what's going on and again it's, it, it has to be more than that, right? Like, that's not enough. Like, yeah. we act like Mars, if it just had air, would be okay. It. I don't think it has an iron core. I don't think it has, like, a, that magnetic field that shields it from radiation. I don't think it has, like, yeah, we could. I don't, I don't think, think we could even need. make... I don't think we could even make the moon nice. Create Like, like, like making fun of creationists is fun, but my God, this place is kind of perfect. There's a lot of shit going right for this place to work so well for us. Do you guys ever stop and think, you know... I think that there's probably life elsewhere in the universe. That's just my opinion. Do you yeah, guys agree sure. with that? Yeah. yeah okay. No. So like, imagine. I, you don't think so? People out there. No, yeah. There's people out there like us. Well, it could consider like if there is, consider how astronomically l- lucky you got to be born a human being on this planet. First of all, you could have been born a fly. You could have been born a, mm-hmm. a you know a lemur, which a that girl. would be kind of cool. Better you could have been. Fly. You could have been born like a single cell organism or something like that on any number of infinite planets or whatever, but you were born 
here at arguably the most interesting time in human history. So you where say we're on that? The cusp of, uh, you say that, but there's some otter people somewhere that live for 450,000 years. And because, <laughs> you know what I mean? And they're really orgasming. And, and beca uh, yeah. because, they live, <laughs> because they live that long, they're like, yeah, it's a long trip. But we don't get bored partying and fucking doing otter shit. Let's go. <laughs> Their spaceship is just like a brook that runs really. They're just chilling all the time. I think we might the be the only thing out there. Everything else no. in space looks terrible. I believe looks totally inhospitable vacuum of 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 nonsense. That there's nothing there thinking. because there's no sign there's anything there, right? Like it, it, the humanity is what 150 years from inventing. Is it a von Neumann machine, von Neumann machine, something close to that? Ah, the self replicating replicating probes, von Neumann device. Right, right. You, you, you build a probe that can land on some place with the materials to build the next probe. It does that. It self replicates. Now you've got two, three of them. They go to another place. They multiply all over the place. It wouldn't take too long, too many hundreds of years before these things are all over casting a huge web of communication and just in exploration yet it's not there so what we're we're alone that's it we're gonna come on you, you know the answer to that the to, to that one is easily mm. the dark forest right you love three body problem you know it's the dark forest Hi. by the way by the way like like getting past the the, the, the this topic just slightly just slightly the okay. uh, three body problem is that Chinese uh, trio of novels that that I believe wait. Don't spoil right. it because there's a because there's a Netflix thing coming. So. I won't spoil anything. Yeah. Right, I, um, I know everything though. Um, oh, okay. So I, I think they're really going to drop the ball. And let me just say this: knowing what I know about the story, I'm not going to spoil anything. I don't want to get into it. Like like I don't like the story. Is what I would say. I don't think it's a good story. Um, Ooh. And, and and I know the whole story, and and I don't like the story. And I don't want to see a show about it. And here's the other thing. I they're gonna get eaten alive if there's not like 90% Asian cast. You know what I mean? Like, like people are gonna give them so much shit for replacing all the Asian people, the chi frankly, Chinese people with white people. This is a, this is Xi Jinping's um social arm losing again. I remember someone said something about him finding out about Kung Fu Panda and what a global hit it is, and him be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's a it's two of our national things. <laughs> this would be and and the americans made it great <laughs> who dropped the fucking ball a kung fu panda and it's an american cartoon and how much money did it make what, oh, what's it's our, the, it, um what's the concept called where it's like the reason why we haven't seen the fermi paradox the reason why we haven't seen yeah. aliens is because there's just natural limitations in place is it like the great net or something like that oh. filter the filter yeah yeah, yeah. There, there, and there's there's lots of filters right <laughs> and um that, that would prevent you you know there's there's lots of filters you have to get through to become some sort of galaxy faring uh race who's traveling around I think we and know so much less than we think we do and I energy and fuel is like the big that's know, the Taylor, big thing i don't think i know much <laughs> <laughs> fair enough <laughs> well, I, mean, I mean it's just common sense some of it like you don't have to like travel the stars to understand like just how it has to go <clears throat> like they like, like if you're going to become a space do. like we don't understand like even physics on scales as big as the cosmos i think i, I think well, i don't understand physics on scales as big as the cosmos I, I think there's some people who have a pretty firm grasp on it though irregular irregularities aside although this isn't a spoiler um they talk about multiple dimensions in the third body problem and i found it interesting that they they were like sounds a lot like dark matter doesn't it and it's like oh I was like, it does sound like dark matter. Like, like maybe there's lower dimensions that are, are invisible but still have gravity would, would be the idea. Well, um, I'm interested in what Netflix does with three body problems. So I've read the books. <laughs> I won't spoil anything. But um, it's very complicated. I've said it here. Like, like whatever mental horsepower I bring to the table, I was redlined through that entire fucking book just trying to understand the concepts that they're battling and the tactics that they're employing um, to – Stave off the other guys there. I think that's vague enough. And um, uh, I'm like, you're going to make a TV show out of this? Like TV shows are the culinary equivalent of a pack of Smarties, right? They're rarely in depth and complicated and redline your mind. These are simple things to understand with a few like primer and tenet yeah. exceptions. So three body problem, like how do you turn collegiate level calculus into addition and subtraction and, and make it a netflix show well you saw the martian and, and they did a good job of, of doing 
kind of close to what you're describing, making a movie out of out of a lot of jargon and and chemistry. But but mm -hmm. to, you're still right because it's it goes beyond the physics of it. Just some of the concepts, just grasping some of the the concepts is is, is rather difficult. Um, with the it's a, it's three books, so there's a lot going on. And, and at some point, it gets so complicated and so frankly convoluted to me that I don't think it's a good property anymore. A good piece of well, like. It's just inevitable that they trim the fat. There's a lot, which is why like um, purists, when it comes to the like source material, really piss me off. Because no matter what, like Dune is the perfect example. Like there's a lot going on in the world of Dune. Mm -hmm. And he obviously had to cut like a lot. There's like Mentats are a big part of it and the Spacing Guild. And there's this like, um, there's this like trading company called Chom. And they're like a huge deal. And they're, they're just not in the movies at all. Mm -hmm. So you just... You just have to make peace with the like. You're gonna have to not necessarily like dumb there's it down, also, but you have to trim a lot when you adapt stuff. There's also a big issue with three, third body pro. Is it third body or three body? I three, think it's three body think problem. Three. Yeah, three. Um, the, a big issue is the time scale that that the story mm. takes place in. Um, I won't go talk too much about it, but it's large. It's a large time scale that they tell their story on, and yeah. and, and and that's an issue to me with with it because it's, it's I feel like. All right, give you six seasons to do this thing. Let's just say it's a hit. Jesus, what does the sixth season look like? <laughs> it's like Lord of the Rings, like um, when Gandalf goes off to study the ring. You guys are, uh, Taylor, you've read this. Taylor's story, right? We're yeah. steeped yeah. in it's Tolkien. Like, it's, it's like two it's years, right? Or it's like 20 years, isn't it? That Or is it two it's years a long or time. years? I thought it was like seven years, but it's it's a long time. Maybe seven, That's 17 seven. And in the movie, yeah. it's like a few days. And uh, I mean, doing it, doing as well. They, um, they, they. There's like doing take doing the first book takes place over the course of years, and in the movie, it's like a few months. You know. So yeah. what is the mm -hmm. thing that takes seven years in Lord of the Rings? Gandalf so has to go study and and learn more about the ring and 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 such. You know, to keep it simple. And in the books or in the movies rather it's like you can believe like he kind of made a stop by a library and was like oh yeah. gracious me and then like moved yeah. on but in the books it's like he was there for a long time like pouring over tomes trying to when discern. does this happen in particular this is, it's that this moment is early where... on this is when he leaves and he leaves the ring still in the shire so this is prior okay, to okay. any of the the track remember when they heat the ring up in the fire and then mm -hmm. it's very cool it's quite cool <laughs> and, he, and he takes it he leaves there he's like keep it secret keep it safe and then he like he bounces and goes yeah. all the way to fucking Minas Tirith, and they make it seem like Taylor says like it's the corner library where he's doing his research. Yeah. Maybe the town next door. Like a it's on like the other side yeah. of the fucking yeah. country. But Frodo it's had like, it for years and almost like wasn't even at, wasn't even actively thinking about it. He was living his life and whatnot. But narratively, yeah. you can do those big time jumps in books. Uh, like in Dune, mm -hmm. there's like a forty five hundred year time jump between book three and four and you can get away with that in, in books because there's just so much more time to flesh out all the stuff but sure. you, you run the risk of um like losing the audience like they it's like too disconnected a whole different uh, this, cast a different movie almost yeah know, same different, set yeah this show, that's why the, the shogun show I'm telling you the best thing on tv right now i'm, I'm digging it so much um oh, that last episode I, I no spoilers for woody's sake but that last episode really sold me they 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 I like to think sometimes I know what's coming. Hmm. That is not what I thought was coming. Dude, that is not I, what I thought was coming. I want you to watch. Have you seen? I thought they were going to miss the on history purpose. of Japan. I told I talked about it in a hangout, and everybody mocked me as if this like was an obscure video with a mere seventy five million views. I know Hutch saw it because he tweeted about it when it dropped. This guy had never made a YouTube video before, and suddenly he dropped like the best video on the internet, and it's the history of Japan. I have no memory of that. Was that like 15 years ago? That's, he has no memory yes. of this place. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> I have no memory of that. Um, yeah, the, the video is, is eight years ago. The video is called The History of Japan, and it's by Bill Wirtz. And I am convinced everyone who sees it's going to like it because he just goes to the history of Japan in a, um, a lighthearted kind of well-told story way. Yeah. Interesting. They're not a funny people, you know. Like, like, like I gotta say, like, like in this show, I like the Japanese characters, but man, I hate their people. They're they're just so they're just so awful. I guess the English and the Portuguese were just scumbags too. But Jesus, the Japanese just seemed. Like, I hate that honor culture thing. I hate all the bowing. I hate all the like like how proper it all is. I hate the feudal nature of the society. I guess it's the same thing 
in, in, in Europe, though. Man, it, um, it, when they, they boil that guy alive. You see him, you saw him boil the guy ooh, alive, right? Oh, damn, that was fucked up, dude. They boiled the guy alive. Yeah. That was rough. For nothing. Oh, that was wow. when they boiled... Yeah, yeah, that's the first episode. Why did it take him so long to bonk himself in the head? Because that's what he ultimately did. Like, why would you not do that right away? Like, I, uh, fuck this. I'm just... The, you know. the lead Japan guy, the Japanese guy who made it happen, had a real infatuation with the moment between life and death. Yeah. Like that little spot when the transition occurs is fascinating to him. So he boiled a man alive so that he could, like, listen. Yeah. That was awful. Gnarly. That was mm. awful. That really? was were... that. That it, it's uh you know it's still four episodes in or something, but I'm getting those Game of Thrones vibes. I got, I've already got mm. some like horrific, like like dastardly villains. And I'm sure there's gonna be more. Um, again, no spoilers, but there I saw some real gore in some of these episodes. Like, I saw bones and meat and flesh and suffering. Um, it, was it ancient Greece where they had the the torture device that was like what was it like the 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 boat the, the iron calf. Where you bronze where you, bull? That's oh. what it is. Yeah, you gotta go back like the ancient Mesopotamia or some shit for that, right? Was it? The, was old. it the Greeks? I think it was, right? So like, yeah, they put him in. A, oh, dude! And then they, the weird, the, the fucked up thing was that they they had um like they had like some kind of like the mouth had an opening so you could kind of hear them scream. Like, mm. you remember that? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And he killed it's the inventor of it. It, that's what yeah. that's what yeah that's what i remember yeah. reading about but the there's linear. a movie called the immortals where they have that there's a scene where these three like siren type women are burned alive in this thing and it fucked me up dude Ugh. like it's awful what yeah, a terrible, terrible. Way to go. you're just cooked yeah hot metal. And you're burning you're sizzling on that thing it's terrible I mean, you, would just, you would just have to knock yeah, yourself out real. right like yeah. you would just they, oh, they, wow. would, they put they, they built a bull out of bronze or something and very large big yeah. and then there's an opening where you can stuff a person into it and then seal them into the bull and the nostrils have are built in such a way that the screams come out at like a musical instrument and it sounds like the bull is braying or whatever bulls do. They do and so you would put place it over a fire and roast the person in it. And slowly the bronze heats up and kills the person inside. Um Wow. It's pretty horrific. Pretty horrific. Yeah, and there isn't a really easy exit plan. Like I know the no. guy bonked his head, but I feel like if you asked me to bonk my head on this table and knock myself out, I'm not sure I could but if you were boiling to death, I feel like you would just fucking do it. I don't know. I'm very I motivated, would. but I, can you even do my best, coach? Hit? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I get you fully motivated. Ah, my nose! This it's is so much hard. worse! Now I'm boiling <laughs> with a broken nose! A very badly broken nose! <laughs> Easily go sideways, oh, my, yeah. my skin hurts and I've got a bit of a headache. Do you guys hear I that? I knocked all of my teeth out that Did, time. That scene, <laughs> that scene, his flesh was almost like green. Did you yeah. notice that it looked it like cooking. split pea soup? It was like it was so cooking. gross, man. He was being cooked. He was being boiled. He looked like a chicken. That, that he did not. Like, it was what held him in there? I didn't. He was that. he was sort of like hogtied, arms yeah, behind his true. back, and like knees folded up, like with his ankles sort of bent toward his arms behind his back, like hogged. So, so he just barely yeah. kind of stay up because he's yeah. in a cauldron. I didn't um, think he made enough effort to escape. Yeah, I mean, well, they're just basically saying that he can't. Just yeah, that, you know, you know. Um, you guys, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure if he'd gotten out, they'd have tied him up better and thrown him back in. I gotta get going here, boys. Yeah. I think it's the longest time we've ever had a peak. I usually yeah. dip after a couple hours. It was good catching. We usually do six that hours, but we'll cut it short for you. Yeah, um, yeah. You. I, I, I was. It. I was gonna do eight hours. It's a new AOE two patch. I'm gonna go play. <laughs> All, <laughs> All right, PKA. Oh, Hutch, does anyone want to pimp before you go? Um. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're doing a lot of like political coverage now. So if you guys are interested in that, it's mm. twitch.tv forward slash Hutch. I realize your audience is more right wing, so I wouldn't hold it against you if you guys I don't visit. But, you know, it's glad to be yeah. here and shoot the shit with you guys and bounce stuff off of you. And yeah, just just look up Hutch on Twitter and Twitch and you should find me. All right. Yeah. Thank you for coming on. I always enjoy you.